in a traditional sport seeking for an Olympic recognition made its maiden appearance at the 13th African Games. Pula and referee Alberta Amponsa throws light on the technicalities of the game. When wrestling, when you're playing, your wrist needs to be straight, your shoulder needs to be straight, you shouldn't cross the center line, you shouldn't cover your knuckles and you are good to go. When you do these three things, you don't have any problem with the referee. And when they ask you to grip, you grip under 30 seconds. Before 30 seconds, you are good to go. When they say ready, go, you just play. So how fast you are is going to determine that you are going to win or lose. Since its inception, arm wrestling has always been viewed as a demonstration sport. Even at the African Games, it is but an exhibition sport. What future does the leadership of the sport, hope for it. Well, arm wrestling for me is very traditional, easy to play, very popular sport. It's a family sport. And if I see the kind of sports that play at the Olympics, I feel that um, it's a travesty of justice to arm wrestling. Arm wrestling must be at the Olympics. It's big, very traditional. And um, it is not a demonstration sport, as people say. If we say sports, Arm wrestling is a great sport. I am praying that um, as a vice president of the world, together with the world board, we will push and in the next few years, we will get arm wrestling to play at the Olympics. Pula Simeon from Nigeria gives tips on how to win a game of arm, arm wrestling. wrestling. If you have someone that is bigger than you, he can also use the body weight to his own advantage. And um, another thing is, if you are fighting with someone and you, you let the person to, you know, straight off your elbow, straight off your hands, it can easily wind you. So don't, if you are fighting, you don't need to let the person open to your palms. Your rigs is your power hand. If your rigs open, definitely you can lose your match. The sport involves a lot of mental toughness and resilience. Egypt's champion, Andrea Jiha. Explain. Uh, the important thing you have to be relaxed, more concentrated. You have to imagine your techniques that you would like to play with. Don't look at your opponent. Don't be terrible. Don't effort from the match. Keep your elbow in safe position and try to uh, learn more about arm wrestling to avoid the injury during the competition and during the uh, tech, uh, training with heavyweight. Uh, with the passion of players and officials alike maybe one day arm wrestling could be an olympic sport my name is Fahad Daim I'm a coach for Kenya team and uh, one of the players is my son who is uh, 11 years old his name is Anab Fahad Daim he has been playing for three years and this is the first time he's playing internationally in all Africa games. We hope in another two to three years he will perform better than this performance he has done here. But we are very happy he has really performed well. From his education, his religion and table tennis. Now I want him to do better to be in the top 10 or top uh, 16. We hope by another three to four years he'll perform better than this. I started training him the last three years at the age of eight now is 11 but we hope 
in another two to three years, he will perform better and be in the national rankings. Because I really love the sport the first time I ever met it. The competition here is very high, so when I go back, I'll really improve my service. Sifa has qualified from the branches from a different town from where I am. Uh, he has his own uh, coach who is his father in a different town called Kitale in Kenya. She tried very well because uh, she's very young compared to my son who is 11, she's 9, but she has tried. But she needs more training to pull up and to reach in the level. But she, we have to work hard as an association to bring them up. We've got programs in Kenya that uh, we will bring all these youngsters and nurture them and have them exposed to play internationally is where they can grow. Africa, the tennis future depends on the youngsters. The next Olympics, Africa will do better because we are working on the younger generations to come in so that they can compete with the other strong uh, nations. Playing table tennis when I was five years old. I feel good participating in the tournament. I see myself in, the to in, in one of the top three. The 13th African Games has begun in Ghana as the host nation met Congo in the opening games at the Accra Sports Stadium. Supporters shown in the stadium, clad in the colors of the Ghana flag, to cheer on the players. Aziz again, a free egg. At a post-match press conference, coach Desmond Ofer said he's optimistic the players will match up their performance in the next match. We were a bit too anxious, um, that's why we went a bit too early with the long balls um, and then second half I think with the changes we made we were dominant. I think we created enough chances more than, than the opponent and we should have been more clinical uh, with the chances that we've got or we created but uh, we had a bit of uh, tough luck today. As Ghana put up an impressive performance in the second half after a goalless first half, the results leave Ghana and Congo a point each ahead of Benin and Gambia, who will face each other in the second Group A game. Some supporters express disappointment after the game. If you don't win your first game, there's pressure on you. So as host nation, as we are now, at least we should have done something. It being Friday in Ghana, it's a good day for us. We need a win from here so that we can chill out in, on the street of Accra. But it didn't go away. As the tournament progresses, the Black Satellite will be looking to build momentum and secure positive results. Is the first medal ceremony for Accra 2023. 16-year-old Egyptian table tennis sensation Hannah Gouda bagged the first gold medal when she overthrew 2019 African Games table tennis women's single champion Dina Masharif. In this battle among the Egyptian queens, Gouda won 4-2. Adam of Young of Nigeria and Algeria's Lucy Mubarak settled for bronze. Kadri was overpowered by Egypt's Omar Asar, while Ibrahim Adiao of Senegal and Egypt's Mohamed Belal won bronze. The Egyptians were once again ready for the battle against Nigerians in the team's event finals as they won gold in both the men's and women's events. As a result, Algeria and Tunisia had to settle for bronze in the men's event as Tunisia and South Africa walked away with bronze in the women's event. One medal ceremony down, more to go. 45 minutes, 42 seconds. She was two minutes ahead at one stage. The second position was taken by Jessica Gronewa in an hour, 49 minutes and 17 seconds. And some of these uh, 20 kilometer walk, 50 kilometer walk races can be very, very taxing. As we go back to Fatumata of Senegal. She cleared 181 at the second attempt. She 
cleared it at the second attempt. Rose Yabua had already cleared it at the first attempt. So it meant that she was back on the count back system. Yet another failure from Adil at one eight one. Then Rose the boy was then coming up to the next jump. was to play at every height up to at the first attempt up to 187 that's the high jumper 318 probably or arguably the most Medal female athletes in the field events that uh, Ghana has produced. Just consistently now adding to her collection. She's now going for 184 or 1.84. Meters. And she clears it at the counter. She clears it at the counter. There was a bit more in her. Rose. Obviously with it. And Rose is, is still yet to make position the qualifying. Defending her gold medal she won four years ago with a height of 1.90 meters. I introduce to you Rose Amonimwa Yabua. That's 1.97. Rose has done 1.97. There she is. Receiving the acclamation. From the crowd. Thank you very much, Honorable Freeman Parry. And remember Honorable that Mustafa Yusuf, who also presents a bouquet to Rose. And now, high jump. Second day athletics. Event. We are going to all go up. You must turn out and exactly good and what help to do. sing the national anthem of Ghana. And remember that when you are qualified for the Olympics, you have to achieve a particular height. The period given to you is from 31st December 2022 to 30th June 2024. Very, very well. It gives them quite a bit of time because that's one month before. And so the national anthem was played.
and today national record holder well that's the sports minister for ghana the honorable mustafa you see congratulations once again rose yes, and so now we're going to the women's four by 100 meter relay this was round one e two remember it was it took place yesterday night round one e two and they go. Hey, c'est parti. Le feu. This was a very, very interesting race. Remember, this took place yesterday night. the home crowd chant that's uh, Halute Hall we've got the line 4 by 100 meters there must surely be We're just looking through the lineup. Just realized that the 20 kilometers. What a race! race the Ghana's team, Alute the Hall of Ghana really. is the lady steaming away. Question is, can they replicate it when the big girls come home in the final today? And you're probably looking for the likes of. Nigeria, who are an absolutely fabulous nation, South Africa to a certain degree, and the Ivory Coast, but the Ivory Coast didn't come with their heavyweights, so it's an open game for all. There are other events that are taking place today apart from athletics, so the feedback from basketball is continuing, boxing continues to go, so to just pick it, and then and for, and in the rugby sevens will be two gold medals available, as the taekwondo will be one available, tennis continues to go, and it's, it's quite a packed program. And so that's it the qualif qualifies for So now for the men's 4 by 100 meters relay round 1 e 2 Ethiopia, Liberia, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Zimbabwe, and Togo. Liberia showed their metal in the four, the mix four by four hundred meters. Ethiopia, for the first time, surprised. Um, they are not really noted for sprinting. Theirs has always been the endurance races. But hey, like Kenya, who suddenly have. Two new athletes who've emerged on the scene over the past four or five years, particularly Ferdinand Omanyala. And here they go. Question is, as Martina takes over for Ghana, 
and it was here that Ghana was in the lead. And the change took place. You can see Ghana clearly in the lead, but it was here that I think the Ivory Coast they dropped it. They dropped the baton. But of course, Joe Paul Amwa of Ghana pulled away. He's a 200 meters runner, so he's got a bit of speed endurance. Ghana with a time of 38.67 seconds took the first position in the heats. Remember, the finals will be today. It matters not what you do, it only matters when you qualify. What matters is what happens this evening. Ghanaian quartet extremely happy with the time that they they clocked I remember these are some of the highlights from yesterday yesterday evening's events A bit of them. Got quite a bit of them. Very soon we shall present to you the eight finalists. Force in the life. I bet you the next event will be the last race of the day. And it is going to be a very hot, killing contested race. It's supposed to be the woman's high jump in the Empathor. But uh, we are ready. Putting in place the pedals uh, for the 400 meters. So I'll probably be doing that in advance. Don't go yet. But you can't escape no, the fact that, that big race. four by the qualifiers for the four by hundred was just on the screen. And we've now come back to our live pictures here at the Legon Athletics Oval. And as I was saying earlier, for those, um, I've had a, quite a few calls from friends and um, people interested in going through the timetable. So I'll go through it for you. Um, at the moment, it's fast approaching 10.15. We expect to see the women's heptathlon high jump taking place. And then after that, that will, all the events should come to an end today in the morning. The afternoon session starts at 4.05 with the women's javelin throw final. Then at 4.10, the women's short put heptathlon. At 4.15, the men's 400 meters held of one, two, and three. At 4.40, the women's 400 final will take place. 4.50, 
the men's 400 meters final will take place. Then at 5.05, the women's 3,000 meters team chase final will take place. At 5.30, the women's 100 meters hurdle final, and all eyes will be on the superstar, Kobe Amosun of Nigeria, the world record holder. Then at 5.35, the men's triple jump final will start. At 5.50, the women's 200 meters heptathlon will take place. That will be the last event for the day. And that will be the four events that would have gone. Then at 6.05, the men's 800 meters finals will take place. And then the big one. At 6.20, the women's 4x100 meters relay will happen. At the final, and then at 6:35, the men's four by 100 meters relay final will take place. So we are waiting for the ladies in the heptathlon to come to do their high jump. Already, the judges are already at the place. I can see one or two of the athletes have also gone to the far side. As you look on your screen, it's to the right. You can see some people making doing some form of discussion. Those are the officials. And it's, it, it, it is interesting that it's clear where Africa's strengths lie. Tend to be more with the tracks rather than the field. Yes, there have been some exceptional field athletes and all-round athletes in the past from this continent, but more often than not, it's with the sprints from West Africa, the distance runners from North, uh, eastern part of the continent, and a bit of the northern part because you do have middle distance running from the Moroccans and Algerians. But the long distance, when you talk about 5,000, 10,000 marathon, uh, those ones tend to be dominated by the Kenyans, the Ethiopians, the uh, 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 Ugandans, the Tanzanians, South Sudan, Eritrea, Somalia. They're the ones who tend to dominate the long distance running. And then when it comes to many of them, field events that we head down southern Africa. And so for, for those of you who just tuned in, I'd probably just like to give you an update. And you can hear the stadium announcer giving you some history and some facts and figures. So I wait for the ladies to start. We're just waiting. The medal table is what I find so intriguing personally. seen the Ethiopians not surprisingly go to the top of the log as
And so the ladies are getting ready for their heptathlon. I can see the South African lady. Uh, you want me to come? Ah. Ah, okay. And this time around, the first jump will be, well, the order that they... The Athletes Village provides a serene environment for athletes to relax and get ready for the rigorous and mentally draining games ahead. But as the games continue, athletes undergo different types of emotions at their place of residence. For the Nigerian U20 football team who were booted out of Group B, thinking about their early exit and how to bounce back is what they do as they wait for their departure. We feel bad as a team because we lost. There was a lot of hope on us from the country, from uh, uh, everybody, the president, you know, the football federation, the ministry. But you know, it's football. Sometimes it's like that. So we are, we are not happy, honestly. While Nigeria says goodbye to Accra 2023, the Rwandan basketball team has arrived after an eight-hour trip. With hopes in their eyes, bags in hand, and lots of expectations, the Rwandan basketball team believes they will win the basketball competition. We are very excited because it was a long, long trip from our country to here. So we are very excited that we, we, we are alive and safe free. We don't have pressure because we, we prepared ourselves. So we are here to compete and to play all the games it has it's given. So we good, we good, we, ha we are here to beat them. For athletes who are still in the competition, like Algerian volleyball captain Mula Guzlin, a day in the athletes' village includes stretches, walks, and socializing with athletes from other countries. It's a rest day for us. We're trying to uh, get our energies back before the games, before the qualification for the quarterfinals. The vibes in the, in the village is so great because of the mix of nationalities, of uh, cultures and uh, languages, it's so beautiful. Actually, I've made friends from uh, Ghana, I have friends from Egypt, and uh, even though like we don't keep contact, but every time we meet, we would like uh, dance together, sing together, just, uh, you know, that's a beautiful thing to live. The Athletes Village can be a place of relaxation, a gym, and every other thing you want it to be. Athletics is a major sporting discipline at the African Games. Ghanaians look up to winning some silverware as Ghana is the defending champions for 4x100 relay and high jump. In preparation to the upcoming athletics with the new athletic tracks, Coach Salama Tumusa is optimistic Team Ghana will raise the flag of Ghana high. There is a saying, coaches have only 20% influence on athletes. The 80% depend on them, in which we are also cycling them to also accept and intrinsically motivate themselves so that whatever workout we give them, if they do it wholeheartedly, they will get the results. 2019 4 by 100 relay champion Martin Owusu Entry calls on family and Ghanaians to come support Team Ghana at the Legon Sports Complex. Yeah, I mean, it's always fun running in front of your home crowd, our families. We put in this work to make sure our families are happy. Uh, Ghanaians are happy as well, so it's, it's a big occasion for us to make sure as defending champions, we come here and um, we defend our title, so yeah. Pressure make diamonds and we want to shine, so we here for whatever, whoever comes to run it. It's our home turf, so bring it on. With a mixture of both foreign and local based athletes, Benjamin Azamati explains how he is imparting his colleagues with knowledge from the Olympics and other high profile championships. I've been in touch with most of them, Safo, Gadei, and the other ones. Uh, it's mostly about, you know, just sharing our thoughts on how certain things are being done. We just 
share share our experience together with them. And um, when we had the call up and when we saw the list, we touched base with some of them here, and then they were happy to you know welcome us and happy to you know train with us again. Team Ghana hope for athletics is very high, and do hope that they bring home some medals. My name is Joan Smith. I am uh, the Secretary General of the Namibia National Olympic Committee and I'm also working full time for World Netball as the Africa Regional Development Manager. I wish to congratulate the government of the Republic of Ghana and more so the Ministry of Sport of Ghana for the amazing facilities um, that was created you know, to pull off a very good African Games. Uh, we saw all the facilities, and these facilities is raising the profile of sport in this country to another level, so Ghana can go full out and present other international events, because Ghana has it all now, and Ghana has proved that, you know, the country can really do this. So a huge congratulations. Thank you, Ghana, for your hospitality, and thank you for giving our athletes the opportunity to bring the best of sport to West Africa. 28 seconds before the end of this. Only 28 seconds. What would Ghana do? Would they love to keep possession? Would they love to keep possession? Or would they look for the goal? Yes, they do! Now the should be it. The should be it. I feel very excited because we are determined to win this match. Because it's the third match that we are playing today. And if we don't win, we will lose all our matches. So we were determined and focused to win this match today. That's why we all go out all. We, we played our hearts out today to win this match. And move the ball around. And win some fouls. Oh no. <laughs> it looks like it's all over. It looks like it's all over. Seats at the Botema Sports Complex. We are very happy for the government of Ghana for getting us such a dome since inception of handball over 30 years ago. About three months ago, that we had this dome. So, with this, I will live with all Ghanaians. They should be patient. Two, three, four years' time, they will see Ghana excelling in handball. Ghana giving it absolutely everything. The Achimota Cricket Oval was sparked up when Nigeria recorded their first cricket win at the ongoing African Games. The Nigerians fought hard to secure the win by beating Namibia's 122 target to 126 to win on three wickets. The coach of Nigeria was happy about the win. The mentality was good. Uh, we felt positive. We had done well while we were bowling to restrict them to 122. And uh, a good batting side, 122 is a gettable score. So we were very confident that you know, we were going to achieve that. The coach was impressed by the performance of his batter, Isaac Dunla. He's a very good off spinner. Uh, picks wickets, uh, keeps this, uh, the scoring rate down, and obviously from his batting, he's got very good shots, he's got very good uh, arm speed, uh, good eye, hand coordination, he plays very good shots. In a nutshell, as an all-rounder, he's a very good cricketer who can uh, become a world beater. It was the poster boy of the game, Isaac Danlard, from Nigeria, who caught a lot of spectators' attention with his batting skills. Danlard said he started playing cricket at the age of 13 and he loves the game. Oh, I started cricket when I was in JS2. So I, I love football more than cricket as then. So when going to under 15 play, getting some, one, one of the match award, I was okay, that's when I realized, okay, I have a goal in this game. So I have to give it a try, and here I am playing for the country. Under age, 
my challenge was my coach was like used to look for me every time to train. So with with with, with my coach, that's why I'm here. Like he pushed me a lot. Sometimes he came to my house to pick me for training, and I'm very very happy for him today. Like for me to be here, this is my first time of playing in all African games, and this is one of the best performance I put to the team and I'm happy to be doing that by God's grace. I will continue doing that for the team. Nigeria are now third in Group A with two points, with Zambia occupying the first position with four points after two matches played by each team. <laughs> My name is William. My name is William Amachi, former national athlete, in the 400 and the 800, and now I'm in the States. I left here 79. So now I came back to see all these facilities. And I really commend the government, able to build this stadium, the one here and the one in Baltimore. I really commend the government doing that. And with these facilities I've seen, I think Ghana, we can host any game. We can host all the African games, even Commonwealth games, even a World Championship. For the rest of the world, they want to come to Ghana. And with all these facilities, we can host any international, international games. And uh, we hope this will go on for a long time. Because now, most of the African countries who came and ran on this field, they are very impressed. They are very impressed about the facilities we have here. So I'm pleading, I'm pleading that our more games should be hosted in Ghana. Thank you very much. Scrabble is not only a game that requires individuals to create words on the board, but also develop a strategic plan to win an opponent. And this was the exact tactical approach deployed by Uganda as they won the main team event against Team Liberia. It was really not about me beating the, the Liberia. It was about the team because the structure of this tournament is a win comes from two members of the team winning two games and then that game constitutes a point. And it came about because we, we are very confident this could happen. According to the Ugandan team, they have been preparing for such a big tournament for a very long time. We have played tournaments in Kenya in preparation. We have played uh, very serious one-on-one -on -one tournament uh, games preparing for this tournament. So we have been ready and we thought that we had a good chance to win it. They have been, have been playing in the last two months. They have played over 50 uh, games against each other in what we are calling cages, cages the, the team itself focusing on the representatives and they were able to hone their ability to strategize and also to, have, to be mentally strong to face any other good scrambler and I think that helped a lot. To them it's an honor and joy to cement the Ugandan flag in scrabble. It is a very defining moment, very exciting. At this very moment as uh, inaugural scrabble participation in the All Africa Games the decision-making drill game, however, has its own rules. There's a scrabble board you have to first play with. Uh, there's also uh, uh, the tiles and there's a clock that times you. So your player, each player has 25 minutes per, per, uh, per turn to play the game. Uh, and you, pl you pick seven tiles from the bag each time. Uh, once you play the tiles on the board, if you play three, you replenish the bag from the bag with those three tiles again. If it's not in the official scrabble dictionary, you, you pick up the words from the board and you score zero. Play ends when all the tiles have been played. Uh, whoever has the most uh, score at the end of the day uh, has won the game. This is the first time Scrabble is being played and the Ugandan team is proud to be part of history. Viva, viva Uganda! Viva, viva!
Games of sin, the participation, and the whole package. Can I be uh, uh, biased? The games really took off for me, even though we started earlier. Yeah. On Monday, once track and field started, athletics started. That, does it surprise you? Uh, I, I mean, you are well traveled around games, but does it surprise you? That gone to the Olympics, see, go to world I, championships. I, I love, you see, the thing about the African games yeah. is that, yes, the established names apart from Tobia Musun and then to a lesser degree the Liberian uh, sprinter Joseph Fambule yeah. are here. Nine times out of ten, it's Fabrice really though. Fabrice Zongo is also yeah. here. Fab thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Now that's that's the defending world champion, Absolutely. so we know that. But apart from that, it's normally the the breakthrough for the up and coming athletes yeah. to see where they are making the progress so that they can get to the world stage and worth. And that's what I look for here. And I've seen quite a bit. I'll yeah. be frank with you. The future uh, is bright for Africa? Oh, it, it is looking very, very bright. Yeah. Particularly, I'm looking at the... Uh, uh, um, oh, God. Uh, this heptatit, uh, Odile. Yeah. Odile, the, the, the Beninois. Yeah. She looks yeah. good. And she's got the height. It's very tall. So she straddles the height. Across, as if, yeah. yeah. There is yeah. that, and her, the power she has, in throwing the long jump. Can I, can I predict and say that I think, did she if, make a switch? If not 2024, she could medal 2025 World Championships. Mm. I really believe strongly. Mm. The heptathlon lady, uh, Odile. I'm trying to remember her surname. We'll deal, but she's from Benin. Yeah, Benin. She's yeah. Been, she's she was brilliant. Anyway, so we had a lot of fun yesterday. So we'll circle back on some of the things that we saw here at Athletic Oval and many other places yesterday. We've got this together because yesterday we saw in the four by a hundred women Ghana coming into the bronze places. But before they got to the bronze places, we saw how they prepared, how they came into the race, and what they had to say after the race.
because I know that we're supposed to get a medal because it's too much for us. Even though one of us is out yesterday that we ran, one of us is out, but by God's grace, we still made it. medal for the because I joined the team for six years now I didn't get a medal for Ghana and today is my first I have to be happy that my team we were able to make it this year we suck ourselves because to do athletics you have to suck yourself you can't be top all along because sometimes you'll be done you have to make sure you suck yourself and wake up again because I know that I disgrace them about my hand but they don't worry I'm I'm still I'm still whole here. Right now it's painful. Uh, you know we got a we got bronze for the women. Uh, the women, I'm really happy because uh, 20 minutes to we are about to call in. Then one of my girl pull out, so I have to use a headlock to run the third curve, which is uh, scary. But we still managed to get a bronze. I'm happy for that. I'm really happy to be a coach as, uh, as a national team. And I will plead for the nation to support the Ghanaian athletes. We have the talented, so they have to put their eye on them, and Ghana athletes will go far. I haven't got medal for Ghana, but I've been trying my best with my team, my father, one, my individual race. But this year, by God will, I was able to make it. I will say I thank Allah. Listen, Nigeria won it, but Ghana's story is about the, the problems they had in the camp. Injuries, some pulling out, you know, not, not getting together in time to, to, to gel and coming home with bronze. That is some, you can see from the expression that they are just okay with, with what they had. To be fair, to be fair to the others, I think the others also had similar uh, problems in quote here, okay? But at the end of the day, it's a bronze and um, you can't take it away from them. They did what was required, and they ran the race of their life. What intrigued me was the third, third lady. Yeah. Um, if I'm, I'm trying to remember her name. She's a hurdler. She's the one who did the hurdles for us. Yeah, absolutely. She wouldn't have been there. Yeah. But she was there. Because of the setback, then she but, has to be. Yeah. And she's played her role. So I think it's thumbs up to them. And I thought she was good. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's thumbs up to them. Harry to Hall, we all know for, mm. for mm. who she is. But I really, really sincerely believe that we may not make the Olympics, but we need to hone this team together. Yeah. We, you, we saw the Nigerian uh, lady, uh, Toby, Toby Yeah. She doubled, she won a gold, and yeah. then she ran the anchor leg, and she blew away the team. Talking, talking about Toby, though, yeah. let's stay right there, because he, she was in the 100-meter women hurdle, and she was immense. A little bit of controversy, though. I don't know what you think, Carl. There was a false start. She was a yellow listen, card. Maybe thought listen, it should have been a red card. Listen, but listen, take another away from the way she is, what, what is your thoughts about this? This is the, an the, international the feed, Zito. Yeah. But you've got to admit, no, the, they, was they chickened out. Yeah, the officials chickened out. They did. It should have been a red card. You know that. The rules are clear, black and white. But because only three major stars had become. Have we seen any official? Any official communication coming from the officials about None. why? I mean, None. Because when you take a look at the replay again, yeah. she clearly, clearly jumped the gun. Her excuse but was that the crowd and behind her was so loud that she couldn't That's the hear. reason why I, I also hail World Athletics, who in 2011 gave Usain Bolt the red card. Yeah, even, I, you, even I was heartbroken, but go, that, the rule, the rule is the rule. rule, the law is the law. So this should have applied. But mm. let's admit it, they chickened out. Mm. <laughs> All right, so then Toby Yamusan wouldn't care about who chickened out or not. She had a false start. She was given a warning with a yellow card. She stayed on it in the end. She clinched gold for Nigeria, and that was But Listen, the moment of the night was when the four by 100 meters men, very close between Ghana and Nigeria, in the end was Nigeria, who had their revenge to win gold here on Ghanaian soil. Absolutely, particularly as to what happened five years ago yeah. in Rabat. Yeah. Having said that, 
the problem with the Ghana one was... We'll, we'll, come, we'll come there. Okay. But let's, let's now look at how Nigeria got through and how Nigeria did it. And, and, and uh, listen, when, when you come to your rivals as Ghana you are, and you win, what they, what they do what they've done here, it's going to be men's pride for the Miss Nigerian team. Yeah. And the potential, is, the future is bright for them. The turnover from one to two, two to three was phenomenal. Yeah. And that's why we were in the lead at that time. Yeah. And if this changeover had been any better, yeah. Joe Paul's, um, how do you call it, his endurance speed, because yeah. he's a 200 meters runner, yeah, yeah. his endurance speed would have seen him through, because he started closing. Mm. He started closing. Mm. The Nigerian, nobody should take it away from them. They won fair and square. Yeah. They were brilliant in what they did. They changed their buttons better, particularly between three and four. Yeah. But take a look at Joe Paul. So close. close and that's why the endurance speed. If that change had been, I have no doubt. Now let's take a mind. look at that change you're talking about. Though. I, I, I imagine you're talking about the change between that got three, Joe Paul. Yes. Well, okay, let's, let's take a look at it closely there. That is, that is just where it's going to happen. Carl, talk us through it. Now, what there, is there, the problem? Yeah, you have to slow down. Ooh, Joe there. had to slow down. To make sure he got the baton not outside the extend zone yeah. and not drop it as well. Yeah, and it was just those seconds that he oh, slowed that in the end. You know the hundred meters, bro. Ooh. You know the hundred meters, Ooh. and then he started closing down on him because, like I said, he's the two hundred meters specialist. Him, if you give him five more yards, probably we said. Listen, yesterday, <laughs> if you could extend the track by Cito five more said, yards, no, it was it was Bartels who said yeah. in commentary that. That's what we always say. It's 100 meters, it's 100 meters. You can't add five more yards. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so part of, part of being a good relay team is how you change your baton. And for Nigeria, they got their baton changes very perfect. smoothly, Spot perfect. On. And, and that's the, the reason difference why between gold and silver. Yeah, absolutely. That is a perfect way to, to sum it up. That's the difference between gold and silver. Superb. So it's Team Nigeria who came home with gold in the 4x100 relay. They are the fastest um, nation in the African Games here in Accra. All right, then. We also saw in the 400 meters the women finale. It was it was a brilliant race that we all saw. Very closely contested. Very keenly contested. And in the end, it brought us, you know, as, as many would have expected in the, in the 400 meters, Mora Mary. I mean, she was the top of the period. The lady from, yeah. is the world 800 meters champion. Yeah. So she's, she's got what they call in athletics, endurance speed. Mm. When people are tiring, she's an 800 meters person. Yeah. She's not getting the strength to continue. If you realize, sprinters who, or athletes who go one step down, yeah. tend to do extremely better than expected. I'm not yeah. saying they win. And Mary Mora, come on, that's the world champion mm. in 800 meters. Mm. So I even thought, oh, she had blown it at this stage. I really thought she had. But then the endurance comes through. Yeah. There was a time it looked like she was she wasn't gonna win it. Yes. She wasn't in the picture. Then in the last stretch, the eight hundred meters endurance goes. comes through yeah. and then she began to expand, expand, expand and increase the distance. And look, it was a whitewash. Mm. That's that's the word we can mm. use. She mm. totally murdered the opposition. It was brilliant to see her compete at the African Games. One of the big stars that many, yep. many people were looking forward yep. to. And even in the crowd, when she popped out, so many people were cheering her on because seeing her compete alone was massive. That's a knowledgeable crowd here. Yeah. They know the athletics. They yeah. know their track and fields. Yeah. And so we say thumbs up to them. Absolutely. Also then, the men took to their time. Okay, let's look at how it's all wrapped up. It was uh, Esther Joseph who came into the uh, silver places and Sita Siberi coming in that bronze And the distance places. was one. Point zero four seconds. Yeah, for, one for, second. Chat. Yeah. it's a massive, it's a massive gap. one. For Siberia, though, it's a national record and yeah. something that she yeah. she really hold in high esteem for uh, Burkina Faso. Okay, so there was time for the men to also take to the track and run the four hundred meter. It was incredible. As we saw, Antonio Kezi of Nigeria, he's been incredible from his heats through to the semis and to the final. He just showed great stamina, endurance, and power. Yeah, to get yeah. through. particularly the, the power aspect of it. Yeah. Where he suddenly changed gears here and then away he went from the rest of the field. But at one stage he was really, really pumping those arms, pumping those arms. The adrenaline is flowing and then he begins to increase it. But suddenly here comes somebody who picks it up just a bit too late. Yeah. The essence of 400 meters is to run, be able to do the bend run and then the straight run and get the balance absolutely right. Which one do you think is the most difficult race on the track? The, the most difficult race on the track? It, for me, yeah. the problem has to do with any race that you have bends yeah. involved in it. So yeah. you're talking about 400 or the 200. Note this. When you are running 
the 400 and you get to the bend or the 200 the bend if your left leg touches the lane to your right yeah. the line there you're disqualified yeah yeah but if your right leg touches the one to your right you're not disqualified. Yeah, okay. reason being that when your left leg touches that inner lane he says you have run 0.00 whatever it is yeah short of the 400 or or the 200 meter mark you've not done the run but you've then not completed if the, 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 the but if your right lane your right leg touches the outer then you've done more, more, than, more than the 400. So no one, they don't worry they don't about, worry that. about that, it. That's your headache. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the Africa Games is brought down to Ghana. Some very big stars. One of them is the triple jumper. He is the world champion, the African champion. And he came into the African Games to also be a champion. It's Fabrice Zongo. We caught up with him and put this feature together about him. Enjoy it. Fabrice Huges Zongo. Does that name ring a bell? Accra 2023, I introduce you to Burkina Faso Triple Jump Royalty and Gold Medalist at the 13th African Games. I'm Hugh Fabri Zango. I'm an athlete, international athlete from Burkina Faso. I got a PhD in electrical engineering and I'm double world champion in trip jump and also Olympic bronze medalist from the last Olympic Games at Tokyo. In all his search for greatness, Fabrice, even in action, places premium priority on coaching the Baden triple jumper, Lou Yakuba. For me, it's important to come here to inspire, to inspire the, the youth, especially the youth from Burkina Faso. I start training in Burkina Faso, I know how the things are, and I just try to share with them my thoughts about uh, what they can do better to improve their performance. With this in mind, the 30-year-old hopes to become an institution that will drive as many sponsorship to create more and better opportunities for Burkina Faso athletes to thrive in the world of athletics. I create a, a company that helps my federation to, to get some sponsors, to, to have a, a new structure. This is important to, to really reach some levels. Champions are made and jumping 16.97 came easy for the man who has already done 18.07. From the first jump, I knew that it was finished, you know. I knew that jumping 16, 50, it was enough here. If there were jumpers at 17, I will be, all, I will be more prepared and I will jump more than 17. With smiles on his face and a gold medal around his neck, a dream of hearing the national anthem being sung at the 13th African Games is fulfilled. What a star, what a star he is. And he said something, he's coming down here to inspire other, other we spoke about not having, if you like, all the A-listed African athletes here. He's an A-list African athlete, and he said it's one of the motivations was to inspire up-and-coming athletes at the African Games. I was Games. stunned by his humility when I met him yeah. two years ago in Mauritius at the African Championship. Yeah, you were there, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. In the rain, he still competed. And he was a star then, remember, he had won the bronze medal at the Tokyo Olympics. He was a star, he won that one all right, and I went and asked for an interview, and was so open about yeah. it. It doesn't surprise me he granted one here. But you can even see it's in, in the modesty, in the way he is of the highest and order. And brilliant. I'm just hoping that in July and in August, he completes the set, because he's the current world champion. Yeah. If he can somehow turn up for the Olympic Games, I think he would have achieved it. Yeah. The first African to have won that, because yeah. like we said, He's world champion, yeah. he's African, African champion, champion, and now he's African Games champion. Yeah. He's got a lot. All the best to Fabrice Zongo. All of Africa will be behind him, of course, clinching gold for his country at the African Games. Okay, so then, let's move on and take a look at how the medal table is looking like. Having seen the likes of Fabrice, the likes of Toby, Nigeria, clinching 4 by 100, 400 meters. How has how that all shaped up? Whoop! Nigeria have gone up in gold in 35 of them egypt in 92 egypt in total 167 south africa coming in third place with 29 algeria in fourth place with 23 gold tunisia coming fifth with 16 ghana roses gold takes ghana to 
sixth place in 10 gold medals. Mauritius come in seventh in, with seven gold. Eritrea come in eighth with six golds. Morocco come in ninth with five golds. And Ethiopia complete the top 10 with five golds as well. All right, so that is how the medal table is looking. It looks like Egypt are pretty comfortable sitting on top of the medal table. And then they are cruising uh, as far as the total medal halls are concerned as well. All right, so then to cricket. Uh, no, let's look at, you know, volleyball because it's heating up. Mm. It's heating up in volleyball. And again, in volleyball, Ghana be Nigerian men. 3-1. That, that, that was a surprise for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Because Nigerians do play the game. I'm, I'll, I'll be as candid as I can. So when I heard that Ghana had actually won by three sets to one, I said, wow, yeah. where is this coming from? Sadly, look, at, look at the crowd that, that, that went there to Listen. And around the time, the athletic over was also busy. Absolutely. But, That's yeah. the point of driving over. Yeah. If you start delivering some level of success yeah. and you start promoting your sports, there is a public out there, mm. the Ghanaian public, that would patronize it. It's, listen, we've complained all the while that nobody's going to watch football matches. It's true because we're not achieving things. Yeah. If you start achieving things, like the way this volleyball team is doing, yeah, the yeah. handball team I saw the other day. Yeah. The, uh, come on, folks. This is going to be looking very, very good. And all right. So then that was Ghana against Nigeria. As it happened, Ghana uh, beating Nigeria by three sets to one. Congratulations to Ghana. Good luck to Nigeria. Let's take a look at the program of the day, though. How is the day lining up to be? What is coming up? Where can you be? There you have it popping up. So we've got volleyball, Nigeria versus Ghana coming. Just in case you missed what we just told you about, you can catch it at 12.30 once we leave here. Then there is volleyball, Algeria, Ghana coming up. It's very it's live at uh, 1400. Then we come back to the track and field at uh, 1500 and at, six, at 1800 uh, GMT boxing finals. Then we come back to wrap up the day for you at uh, 1930 on the show. There is basketball 3x3. Then there is football. The final for gold place for either Ghana or Nigeria. Where is it going to be? Ghana or Nigeria? Across Africa, you know where the competition is. Which Jollof is going to win? Ghana Jollof or Nigerian Jollof? We'll find out at 8 uh, 30 or 20. 30. All right, so that is what we've got coming up for today, Carl. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Just quick one, yeah. yeah. Athletics. Yeah. Athletics. Nigeria on top now. Yeah, Seven yeah. gold medals. Yeah. Ethiopia have five. Jeff Athletic. I'm not talking about the overall yeah, yeah. thing. So that shows you where their strength is. All right. Brilliant stuff then. Thank you very much for doing uh, the watching. Thank you very much for coming on, Carl. There's plenty to enjoy across the Africa game. So have fun with it and let the day's activities start.
that was a very good strike from the Ghanaians. They still lead the first set by 6 5. Good defensive play from the Nigerians. There's no way is you going to return that spot. That was with a lot of power. Good dummy. Good one from the Ghanaians. That was a very good one. With power and precision. The Ghanaians extend their lead. Was it in or out? The, the Ghanaians get a point. They've now established a two point lead in the first set. We've had some wonderful competition between these two West African rivalries. We saw that in the hockey competition between the men and the women at the Tudusa Oko hockey pitch in Accra. Yesterday, similar thing happens on the tracks where the Nigerians did a clean sweep of the four by 100 meter relay when they both won gold on the tracks. A point for Nigeria now. Reducing the deficit by 8 7. Good one from the Ghanaians. That was a good spike. Who is taking that first set? It's been a very close competition so far. Wow! Wow! What a dummy! What a dummy! That was a very beautiful play. And a very good assist as well. The spike has sent the long one in. With the Nigerians' response. With the assist. Good defense from the Nigerians. That was a very good defense from the Nigerians. Another excellent play from the Ghanaians. That was a very good attack. The Nigerians were trying to initiate the attack block, but it didn't work. That essay did not work for the Ghanaians, so Nigeria pick up a point there. It's now a point lead by the Ghanaians. A good defense. Mm -hmm. 
that was a very good at attack actually from the Ghanaians. The defensive approach did not work for the Nigerians. And Ghana extends a two point lead in the first set. So if you are watching us across the continent, this is a quarter final in the volleyball, men's volleyball. A place in the semi-final is at stake. That was a very big miss by the Nigerians. And Ghana extends their lead in the first set of the volley ball men's competition to three points. Long strike by the Ghanaians. A dummy, an assist, good attacking play from the Nigerians. They now close that gap to just two points. When they spike the ball with so much energy and precision, it is always, always difficult for an attack block. The assist, the spike, the Nigerians fail to defend. They get back their three-point lead. Beautiful. Daniel Benefo, that was a point one for the Ghanaians. But credit to Moro Adida Alassan for that assist. Nigeria couldn't block that attack from the Ghanaians. There is a timeout. Beautiful one from Daniel Benfo. The Ghanaians have a three point lead in the quarterfinals of the volleyball men's competition in the 13th African Games. Highlights of the first set so far a very good attacking play and a, and a good spike by Moses Ghana for the Nigerians. We are back. Nigeria gets to serve. The Ghanaians returning it. And another excellent one. Wow. Wow. Daniel Benefo. A very good attacking move from the Ghanaians. And they've extended their lead in the first set to 17-14. That's a three-point lead for the Ghanaians. It's been a very competitive first set in the quarterfinals of the volleyball men's tournament. That was a 
The big error from the Nigerians. Now it's a four point lead. Carl, this is one of the many rivalries we've seen in this year's African Games well, uh, between every, Ghana and Nigeria. Everything Ghana against Nigeria <laughs> has always, probably will always be until Jesus Christ comes back and takes us all home. Sincerely, the Nigerians, uh, it started with a football thing and then gradually moved into athletics, at least when I was growing up back in the 70s. And it will continue. Even the food now, <laughs> you're arguing about who Jollof is better. Brilliant, That's a good return. Brilliant save. And then get it over. Nigeria. Brilliant spike and brilliant block by the Ghanaian team. That was excellent. Benjamin Azuma. Fantastic block. 1914. Remember, we got to 25 points. So the Ghanaians are just six points away. Yeah. But, but if you go to 24-24, then it means that a gap of two points but I don't, I don't think that the Ghanaians would want to take it there absolutely not here they come good defense and again another brilliant block excellent this one is, excellent one from Hakim turning out to be extreme exactly what was that celebration resulting in in an injury I'm not too sure I think so we may we may need a medical timeout timeout I think so. We'd like to see a replay of it, see what happened there. I don't know if it was a clash of heads between Nicolas Tete, the chap in the 12th, Jesse, and then Daniel Benefo, who has been very excellent. I think he is recovered to serve now for Ghana. Yes, he who are five points away from picking the set. their best server, the Ghanaian team, actually. And so, here we go. 2014, Ghana leads Nigeria. Set one, volleyball men quarterfinals. A good return, good attacking play, and uh, what it goes to Nigeria. Nigeria pick out the point. Bakal, I've always wondered how these two countries are not neighbors, but they have so much rivalry. Goes to twenty-one sixteen. The rivalry had to do with one, the colonial court masters, uh, Engl uh, the UK English language and being at that time the two most populous countries in, in Af the west, west africa, africa sub-region so the rivalry started from the, the common language theme was there then the rivalry then the football then track and field and now everywhere even in jollof <laughs> and yesterday when their men's team pick up the hundred meter gold in the relay one of their athletes said it was a revenge for everything ghana has done especially in athletics yeah for particularly what happened in rabat in uh, 2019 20, where it was that close but you know I, i'll tell you one thing the guardians shot themselves in the foot you can't take that away the change between three and four if you watch it again you see that the anchor guy joe paul Amwa, had to virtually stop to make sure that he got the baton and it wasn't falling and also within the exchange zone but here we go it's volleyball men for the final match good attacking block Third one again 22 and the crowd will go party absolutely go party because it's the Ghanaians who are clearly in the driving seat they've established a seven point lead and three points away from picking the first set in the quarterfinals of the men's volleyball competition coming from the Bortemann sports complex in Accra. I'm sure the volleyball team is playing for revenge for what happened on the track yesterday, but we are back into the court and the Ghana gets to serve again. Abdul Hamid Ibrahim has been good with his serve so far in the first set. Wow! Excellent one from Imoro Ididi Alassan. And the Nigerians are fighting within themselves. There was no way Seyafa would have returned that. I won't be surprised if the Nigerians call for a timeout. 
Well, just to distort the rhythm of the Ghanaians yeah. who have established an eight-point lead. That would be a very good thing to do. Here we go. Abdul Hamid Ibrahim to serve again. And it does just that with a lot of power and precision. A good return. By Vicente Matias. 24-15. He must have tied the net. He actually did. And Ghana picks up the point. And are a point away from, from picking the first set. And here we go. Oh. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, ho, ho. Just when you thought, <laughs> well, 24 16. 24 16. But remember, the Nigerians are serving to stay in, the in game. this set. And that's, that's it, folks. Third set complete. 25 16. Ghana draws. First blood. It's been a very good first set for the Ghanaians. It has been a very good first set for them. I've been very impressed with Abdul Amid Ibrahim. He's been on serving duty for the Ghanaians. A lot of power and precision where he serves. And then the captain of the team, Daniel Benefo. Why are they singing the national anthem now? <laughs> They've picked the first set. Good attacking play. Incidentally, it, it, it would amaze you to know. Um, it, it, um, you're aware that the gentleman who holds the game's record in the triple jump. Okay. Professor Francis Dodu. He was an absolute world-class volleyball player and played for the national team, the Black Spikes. He was absolutely fabulous. In fact, he actually even played hockey for the national team. And, and that's the a only point. sport that he really couldn't play to an appreciable level. Was ironically, it was football. Wow. But he was a brilliant cricketer. He played for the national team. Brilliant hockey, played for the Black Sticks. Brilliant, uh, and the Black Bat for the uh, uh, whatnot. Played for the volleyball team, the Black Spikes. And... Well, triple jump, that was his forty as well. So if you've joined us, this is the volleyball's men's competition. Ghana have picked up the first set in the quarterfinals of the men's volleyball competition. Coming to you from the Bottiman Sports Complex. And the question that is being asked is, who is recording this? Who is recording himself? Well, it's a learning process. And I say, who is recording um, himself? I. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the Nigerians have it all to do. They really must get their act together. That's important. You wouldn't want them to go two sets down. So I, I really, really hope. And I'm, and I'm sure the Ghanaians themselves don't want to give up I the advantage have, of the I first set. That, but to make it competitive, I think I would wish that they could get something on the board. Then uh, we'll see one, how good the Ghanaian team is under pressure. Two, how good the Nigerian team is under pressure. Oh. Thankfully, I don't think the players would hear your voice on this. They want okay, to no, no. pick up the, they'll go a, all second, out. a second no set doubt, as well. No doubt they'll go all out. But Carl, I really, really enjoy the atmosphere at the bottom and sports complex it's always been full to capacity in any of the disciplines that have taken place are you being fair very very fair i must say for games that i've watched for that's instance this particular game that's because the games that you watch were ghana games and so you will have a crowd there no but but but, watched, but we I did we did we did uh was it a women's handball yeah between cameroon and i think ivory coast yes. We saw a, a very excellent crowd, uh, the, but but the atmosphere was quiet. It wasn't <laughs> like this one where the noise. You know what? You know what we say in Ghana. It's called Kolomashi. <laughs> ah, the vibe, the feel, the West African vibe 
that even the Nigerians are capable of doing when they are doing well. And so, second set, remember Ghana leads by one set to love or one set to nil. Second set, it is going to be Nigeria to serve. This is set two. Here we go, folks. Bruno Ibig serves a good block to deny Benjamin Azuma. Well blocked. And Nigeria draw first blood. 1 0 to Nigeria. This is the kind of start they would want to picking up the first point in the second set. Ibi serves, assist, and that is Ghana drawing level. Abdulhamid Ibrahim to serve for Ghana. He's been quite good with his serves in this particular game. Ibe retains it. That's out. To good Nigeria. run, Samuel Anthony. 2-1 to Nigeria. Samuel Anthony to serve for the Nigerians. Well, good block. Good block. But it went out. The Nigerians have the point. No, nope, Ghana has the point. It went, oh, Ghana, it went out, actually, yeah. So Ghana have the point that they are level on point. Here we go. Benjamin Azuma serves. EB. Brilliant spike. Brilliant, Brilliant spike there from the Nigerian. Fabulous. Right in the place where no Ghanaian could receive you it. You can't well return done. that. It came with so much power and precision. Whoa! 4-2. Oh. Well that done, was Nigeria. Brilliant. <laughs> well done, Nigeria. If you are joining us, there's the quarterfinals of the men's volleyball between Ghana and Nigeria. We are into the second set. Ghana already picked up the first set, but Nigeria currently leading the second set. And that's a point to Ghana now by 4 3. And it's it's a point for Nigeria. This is set two. Nigeria. Ghana volleyball. West Africa rivalry there. Good spy. There is no way you are returning that attack from the Ghanaians. Well done. So a point goes, the point goes to Ghana. The point goes to Ghana. I'd love to see the officials for. And we've now been joined by Kwame himself. Kwame Jumaj, man. It, it once said to love. That was out. So that goes in Ghana's favor. I'd like to get the official score. I'd like to see the scorecard. 
not Garrett. That was a very good one from Abdul Hamid Ibrahim. Pick up the points for the Ghanaians. But It's been a very competitive. Right, so the, that's the official. 8-7 in favor of Nigeria. Wow. Was that in? No, it was, it was out. It was out. It was out. That was a poor serve. It was out. So Nigeria go up to 9-7. Attacking. That's a good block. It, well, they give it to Nigeria. The points for Nigeria. Yep. This time the Nigerians are putting up a much, much more improved performance mm -hmm. and are making more of a fist of it. Bruno Tukuchu Ibe to serve for the Nigerians. Is that a timeout? Yep. Then the Nigerians have called for a timeout. As to whether as to whether it was the Nigerians or the Ghanaians, I'm not too sure. But they will take full advantage of this. Of course. That's what you do when somebody calls for timeout. Even though they may be trying to break your rhythm. Yeah. Which is uh, very important. Yeah. It's also important that you stay focused and the coach gives you the necessary instruction. And so the whistle goes for the timeout. Folks, we are back. It's Nigeria in the second set. Men's quarterfinals volleyball in the driving seat. Here we go. Whoa! Whoa! Very good one from the Nigerians. From the Ghanaians. From the Ghanaians, I should say. The Ghana still with the serve. Hamidu with the serve. Was it out? That's out. That's out. A point for Ghana. Another point in the basket. And you know what I find interesting? The way uh, coaches and trainers and whatnot are allowed to stand almost by the line but they know that sometimes it could distract the players i'm sure sometimes they also make sure needs to make sure that the players are getting the instructions oh the nigerians are they contesting the points i don't know gained by the ghanaians the umpire say it's a tie Nigeria it's a ghana point if it's a ghana point that's why ah, the nigerians that's why they are protesting they should maybe institute VAR, then they'll be happy about it. <laughs> but let's see. Let's see again. Let's see again. Was, it, was that in? Did they cross the line? If the line? If you touch the line, then it was in. And he's giving it to Ghana. Yeah. The yeah. Empire's world is final. It's 10 10, folks. Ghana floor the back. Pascal Uzukoi was protesting back. Ghana gets the point. It's a tie in the second set of the volleyball's quarterfinal game between Ghana and Nigeria. That's a brilliant one, surely now. Was it in? Was it's it Ghana's in? Point. It's Ghana's point. And the Nigerians are 
flabbergasted. The Nigerians are flabbergasted. Two consecutive points. I think, I don't know. I'd like to see the game from a different angle, but I think if I were in their shoes, I would also be highly and truly upset. Baka, we've been in the situation some few seconds ago where a replay showed that the ball was actually within. I won't dispute that, but the same you feel if it were you at the receiving end of this. The umpires said it. All this can be sorted out if they can introduce some form of video assistant referee. That's all. Every sport has it now. In tennis, it's called the Hawkeye. Okay? In track and field, they show it on the screen for everybody to see. In football, now we have VR. So maybe volley needs to. And even in athletics, the result to the photo finish. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and that surely should go in end. for the Nigerians. Yes, it does. It's, it brings them scores apart. 11 11. Good spike from Samuel Anthony. The Ghanaians are singing their national anthem while Prince Chukwezi is able to pick up a point from his serve. Go straight out and Ghana pick up the point. Benjamin Zuma says for the Ghanaians oh boy. straight into the net and a point for Nigeria. Very disappointing serve from Benjamin Azuma and he has come out immediately to be replaced by the number 12 so Nicolas Tete comes in for Benjamin Azuma and Nicolas Tete with the number 12 when the score is 12-12 <laughs> Pascal Goffrey serve a good end. attack that was a good good attack from Bernard Atom brilliant spike Bernard Atom I'm telling you the truth. I'm beginning to love coach the lesser sports now more. Because one thing, one sport that has intrigued me has been the badminton and then the handball. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. Hakim serves. Good attack. And they give it to Nigeria. From Imoru. 13 13. But I think he tagged the net. And then the Nigerians are leveled on point. A very competitive second set. Remember the first set, Ghana won 25-15. It's in Ghana's court. A point for Ghana. That was a good assist from the captain, Daniel Benefo. And a good strike from Paul Akan. Imura Lassan gets to serve for the Ghanaians. So he doesn't want to, want to make the same mistakes as Benjamin Azuma. Strong serve from Imuru and a good spike, but has been returned. Benefo, and that was a good one from Hakim. But the Nigerians still have it in motion. A good attack, it's going Nicolas Tete returns it. One, two, it's been a very interesting and one. Go, oh, wow, 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 Abdo. Abdul Hamid Ibrahim. That is absolutely crazy. And the crowd is going haywire. Take a look at it again. Excellent assist from Paul Akan. And Abdul Hamid. That was a very good point for the Ghanaians. The points for the gun for the Nigerians. <laughs> what a game! No wonder. Now that it's become closer, the Ghanaian fans have stopped thinking the national <laughs> It's been closer. It's been competitive. A good serve by Edmond Uda. And then, Abdul Ahmed Ibrahim. 
another points to Ghana. It's been very, he's been very, very excellent for the Ghanaians. But this particular set has been much more compelling because of the closeness. Well, you said it. This is what he wanted to see. Absolutely. <laughs> Good attack. The Nigerians pick the point. Benjamin Zuma filled with this attacking block. Victor Eze says for the Nigerians. It's being returned assist. Was that in? Nigeria pick up the point. That spike from Vitos Tulu went out and Nigeria get a point. And it's a tie in the second set. Hamid returns it. Brilliant, brilliant block by the Nigerian. Good block, good attacking block from Pascal Ozokoi. Pascal Ozokoi. Making sure that Nigeria have the lead now in the second set. Oh, poor serve. That was a very poor serve you from know, Victor AZ. You know, the way it's going, if you're not careful, you could go to 24 24, you know, and then it will mean that you will play until one team gets a two point gap. Carl, you love the drama. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> But for those who are faint-hearted, for those who are faint-hearted, don't, don't go there. If your heart has a bit of a problem, don't come much because you're going to be so tensed up. Good one. Straight in. That was a good block. A very good block for Samuel Anthony. Time out. Time out. A very, very competitive second set. And I'm sure this is what Carl wanted. It, 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 it makes it more of a spectacle. It makes it exciting. More, yeah. And then so that it, the neutrals that is those who may not understand the game will get caught up in it when you have a thrashing 25 10 25 12 it becomes too yeah, one way people don't or one-sided people don't get too excited and then lose interest in it but when it's tight and it's close even though at the end of the day if you end up with the losing side it hurts more than hell especially when it's more of a rivalry game absolutely go ask Manchester United <laughs> and Man City. Good one there. What a spike. What a spike from Hakim Mukaili. That was a very powerful one. He reduces the deficit for the Ghanaians in the second set. Abdul Lamid Ibrahim to serve for Ghana. He's been very good with his serves in this game. Another powerful one. Good return from Seyafa. It's been returned. What? Two. A assist from Benefo. And then Abdul Hamid. 19-19. Benefo with a brilliant assist. And then Hakim makes sure that Ghana are level on point. He gets to serve again. Is there a timeout? Surely that will be from the Nigerians. Well, whether Nigerians or Guardians, <laughs> it's for you to psych yourself up. But it was actually from the Nigerians because they, they knew very well that the Ghanaians are beginning to close the gap. And in fact, they've tied the point in the I second see. set. In Doha, Ifu, Imano Ude, Moses Ghana, Princess Chiku, Pascal Joffrey, Sifaya, Bruno, Tobiba, Vincent Matthias, Victor Azi, Bello, Samuel Anthony are the men.
on the court for the Nigerians. Emmanuel Johnson, Aminu Yaku, Benjamin Azuma, Bernard Aton, Abdul, Ami, Daniel Benefor, Gestin Jemfra, Victor Stulu, Paul Akan, Akim, Moro Alas, and Nicholas Tete are the men doing the business for the Ghanaians. Akim gets to serve now in the second set. Another powerful serve. It's been returned. Nigeria pick up the point. One more change again. Change so Gestin Jamfura comes out. Imoro Idi Alassan replaces him. Samuel Anthony with a serve for the Nigerians. Good defensive block. Miscommunication, but the Nigerians still have it. Benefit again. Hakim. Nigeria doing their best with those attacking blocks from the Ghanaians. Good one. Still return. Another good return from the Nigerians. And that excellent Imoro. one from Imoro Idi Alassan. Did you hear that roar? <laughs> what a game it's been in the second set. Very competitive. This is only the end of it. The way people blocked both sides and were moving all across and retrieving spikes. And still it was going on until that final block, uh, final spike that you saw by the Guardian. Paul account to serve for Ghana. He does that. The ball being returned. That touched the Guardian hand. Should be a point for Nigeria. Nigeria serve a return from the Nigerians. That's was it. that in? That's in Ghana's a, court. A point 20, for Nigeria. Twenty. Was that in? Yep. It was. That was a very good one from the Ghanaians. 22-21. But still Nigeria have a point lead in the second set. As the quarterfinals of the men's volleyball competition. Oh, wow. 22-21. Mistake on the part of the Ghana Seba. Nigeria two points away from leveling that. Uh, another change by the Nigerian. Then Sam is going the 16. So Bruno comes in for Vincent Matthias. And that's 23-22. What a game it has been in the second set. So Ghana just one point behind Nigeria. Amidu Seb. It's been returned. Was that in a point for Ghana? Out, out, so. Wow. It's back to square one. Look, I told you we're going to get this. You did. Game. You did say it. Yeah. We need to get it. We need to make it dramatic. <laughs> it makes the game much, much better. You predicted this. Do you know when crisis is coming? Am, am I there? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know one person who knows. Kwame? The Holy Spirit. <laughs> 
only the Holy Spirit knows. The fans at the Baltimore Sports Complex have contributed to a wonderful atmosphere. Yeah, when when Ghana is leading, there will be a lot of atmosphere. When Ghana is leading, it's like a graveyard. Ghana to serve. Imoro Idi A lot of concentration needed. You don't want to serve straight into your own net. He does that with a lot of power. Nigerians returns it. At good. Oh. From Nicolas Tete. Whoa. Set point. Wow. Wow. Set point. Wow. Abdul Ahmed Ibrahim. 24 23. From the impossibility to all things are possible for they that love Christ. There you have it. 23-24. Ghana leads one set to love. 25-15. Are they going to make it count? Imuro Idi with a serve. A lot of pressure on the Nigerians. Good defensive block. Brilliant serve. <laughs> so now we've got to the tiebreaker. 24-24. You cannot win by a single point. But how did you get this prediction right? You called it. There is only one way. The Nigerians let not mess about. The Ghanaians have been playing exceedingly well. But the Nigerians have had a volleyball team that has matched up with the best of the African continent over the years. Yes. So when you get them and you don't take advantage of it, you are in trouble. They'll come good someday. Vincent Matthias. We are into the tiebreaker set. Or are the Ghanaians going to extend their win? Vitor Matias with a serve. Wow! They thought they were going for the spike. Abdul Amidu. He just pushed it over. 25 24. The ball is now in the court. Okay. 25 24. And that was all. He didn't spike. He just. Placed it. Wonderful attacking Here move go. from the Here Ghanaians. We go. Here we go. Here we go. Amidu. And Amidu. The, the Nigerians return it. It's the Ghanaians who want to attack again. Is it Amidu? The same way. He takes it up. Wow. 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 25 25. Wow. Amazing. Excellent display of volleyball. From these two ivory countries, Nigeria and Ghana. And the volleyball officials are really enjoying themselves. Nigeria serves Victor with a serve. They return it. Out. A point Nigeria. for Nigeria. Nigeria now. One point to even it up to one set all. One more point for Nigeria. Just one. Can they make it count? Can they make it count? Victor serves. Amidu. Nigeria fix it. Nigeria won a set. 27-25. Now we'll see what the Ghanaians are made of. 1-1. One, one. one set all. Set three coming up. What a game. <laughs> What a game it has been. A very competitive. Set from the two teams. So it's one one. One set all. And. Um, I suspect. The second set may go the same way. The third set sorry. Let's just remain silent and catch our breath back after that phenomenal, phenomenal set between Ghana and Nigeria. Quarterfinals, men, volleyball, one set all.
All right, folks, we're back. This is set number three. So it certainly wasn't going to be a whitewash for Ghana or for Nigeria. Not at all. And it's Ghana that is going to serve set number three. Daniel Benefo to serve for the Ghanaians. That's that. Nigerians return it. That went out. It's a point for Nigeria. So first blood to them in this set. One. Hamidou couldn't return that attack from Bruno to Tokoichu. And Bruno serves for the Nigerians. Daniel Benefo with the assist. Good attack. It's been that a was a good one. Hakim picks up the points for the Ghanaians. It's one all in the third set. Wow! wow. Good one there from Imoro Idialasan. A very powerful attack from the Ghanaians. Ghana goes into the lead, so the band starts again. But <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, they've been singing all along. <laughs> Hakim gets to serve for the Ghanaians. He does that with a lot of power and pace. Oh, should be a point for the Ghanaians. In, and it's three one. And, and you know, you know, you know, uh, 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 Felix. Sincerely, fans are the most difficult to sacrifice they are so fickle minded of course My goodness. <laughs> the one breath they are praying to the next breath oh boy Hakim serves that oh, good what? return from Daniel Benefo whoa 4-1 oh. to Ghana Al Hassan are we going back to the first set sort of thing we saw. It's been a good start for the Ghanaians in the third set. Hakim serves again. But Nigeria gets to pick up the point. That was a bad serve from Have you have Hakim? You, have you been to the complex? You have. Yeah. What's your what's your view on it? Right, just hold on. We'll go through this point. Victor serves for the Nigerians. Benefo initiate the attack. A good block. That's it. 4 3. Victor serves. Was it out? Nigeria. Losing out on that point. In Ghana. Leads the third set by two points. Now you can hear the song. <laughs> Benjamin Azuma to serve for the Ghanaians. Does that with a lot of power. It's been returned. A good spike. And it's five. From Bruno Ibe. He reduces the deficit for the Nigerians. Siafi returning that powerful serve from Amidu. Bruno. And then there was no way Hakim was going to return that powerful attack from the Nigerians. <coughs> Pascal Geoffrey to serve for the Nigerians. Coach Shitu is telling them to calm down and keep their concentration level high. But they couldn't do that. And Ghana pick up the point. Benefo with the assist. Imuro with the attack. 
he deserves. Good spike. Good, good. Excellent spike from Vitor Vicent Matias. A good flight and a good spike. A lot of pace on that. Siafa returns with a serve. Daniel Benefo. Victor Aze couldn't return that. And Ghana gets to pick up the points. Ghana 7, Nigeria 5 in the third set of the men's volleyball quarterfinals coming to you from the Bortemann Sports Complex. Another powerful one from Vincent Matias to pick up the points for the Nigerians. Ghanaians won the first set. Nigeria responded by picking up the second set. And then now the Nigerians have leveled the third set at 7-0 in the third set. Vincent Matias. That's an essay. He couldn't get his save across. Bernard Atom to serve for Ghana. Bernard Atom serves. That was a powerful one. Powerful return by Samuel Anthony. Bruno with a good assist. Victor AZ serves Daniel Benefo. The Nigerians are initiating an attack. But a good attacking block from Benjamin Azuma. But it seems to have tagged the net in the process. And Nigeria is awarded a point. And they now lead the third set. They reduce, actually reduce the deficit in the third set. Victor Matias serves. Daniel Benfo. Good defense. From Pascal Joffrey. There's a player on the court. You're actually right. So sometimes I want to check there. Yeah, folks, you heard him all right. Didn't yeah. You? That was Felix. He, he's <laughs> actually right. <laughs> anyway, Matthias serves. A good one. A very good one. From. Benjamin and Zuma. Paula Khan with the assist. Paul serves. The Nigerians return it. A good defense from Hakim. Beautiful one. A beautiful one from Abdul Hamid Ibrahim. The Ghanaians have established a four point. Lead in the third set. Good defend. Paula Kam. The Nigerians initiating an attack on their own. And what a block. A good attacking block by the Ghanaians. 
Benjamin Azuma. Paul Akan waiting to deliver that serve for the Ghanaians. Paul Akan with the serve now. It's been returned. A very good attack from the Kia Seyafa. There was no way Nicolas Tete was going to save that. Coach Shitu is furious with his team for failing to block that attack from the Ghanaians. Abdul Hamid Ibrahim to serve. He's been very good with his serves, but not this time. Straight into the net and Nigeria pick up the point. He will be very disappointed because he's, he's been good with those deliveries from the serves. And Nigeria gets to serve Emmanuel Uda. Nicolas Tete returns it. And that should be a point for the Ghanaians. They are beginning to establish a healthy lead in the, set, in the third set. Don't forget, we are doing the best of five sets. Ghana picking up the first set. Nigeria responded by winning the second set. This is the third set. And the Nigerians just pick up a point. With a very good block from the Ghanaian attack by Bruno Ibe. The 13th African Games. This is the quarterfinals between Ghana and Nigeria in the men's volleyball. Pascal. Wow. 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 Lack of communication from the Nigerians. But the Ghanaians who mind if taking advantage of that. That was a very good point won by Benjamin Bernard Atom. It's been very competitive. That should be a point for Ghana. There's so much power on that. So much power. Victor Eze couldn't defend that. Eze couldn't defend that attack. And Hakim serves for Ghana. It's been returned by Victor. There's no way. It's Mensa There's so much power in that it will be difficult for you to return. I come gonna get the point. The third set. Has been very competitive, just like the second set. Paul Akan with a serve. Nigeria trying to. Wow, was that in? Was that in? Was that in the night? The Ghanaians are contesting that point. And they won it. And then they won it. They won it. Let's see the replay. Was that in? That was actually out. Was it in? I would like to see another angle. They are singing around there now. 17 <laughs> 14. The Ghanaians lead in the third set. Wow! 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 Abdul Hamid Ibrahim. He's been one of the best players for the Ghanaians. And then a Nigerian. Coach Shitu calls a timeout. 
and I'm sure the Ghanaian coach at Benyanga will also take the opportunity to engage his team. And both the Nigerian and the Ghanaian supporters are enjoying every bit of it. Typical of any African game. There's so much dancing and drumming. What a game it has been. Coach Mega, Agbenyaga engaging Nicolas Mensa and Paul Akam and Paul Seves. The Nigerian return to Victor Matias Lipset. That was a very good one. So a good one from Vincent Matias and the Nigerians return from the timeout by picking up that point. But Ghana still with the lead, a three points lead in the third set. Vincent Matias gets to serve. Will he go for power? No, he does. But that was a poor serve from Victor Matias. Nineteen fifteen, the Ghanaians with a four point lead. Good block, good block. But that went out, and the Nigerians will pick up the point. Victor Eze. Ghanaians return it now. That was a good one. Good one from the Nigerians. Hamidu with the attack. What are the Nigerians planning? Nicolas Mensah returns it. Oh. That was a very good one from the Ghanaians. Beautiful combination from Paul Akan and Abdul Ahmed Ibrahim. Nicholas Mensah started it. A dummy from Ibrahim and Benjamin Azuma made sure of the points for the Ghanaians. Paul Akan with the set. He does that across the net. The Nigerians are initiating an attack. Good block from Akam. And that was a powerful spike. But did it go in? Did it? It's a point for the Nigerians. I get. Did he go in? That was in. That was in. The Ghanaians have an injury concern. Benjamin Azuma seems to have a problem the replay again benjamin azuma still on the turf lacing his boots If you've joined us, this is the quarterfinals. I'm having the song in tune with the Ghanaian, whatever it is. Now. <laughs> Account serves. Good defense from the Ghanaians. But there was a touch of net by Benjamin Azuma. So the Nigerians get to pick up the point and Bruno Ibe gets to serve he does that Paula come that was a very good spy from Benjamin Asari Benjamin Azuma Asari Azuma has been very very good for the Ghanaians Ghana is three points away from winning the third set and that will give them 
a lead in terms of the set. But they still have three points more to pick. It is not over until it is over. Coach Agbenyaga engaging his team. And you can see Coach Shutu as well addressing his team. It's been a very competitive game. The earlier point won by the Nigerians. Toby with that powerful spike. There was no way Nicolas Mensah. There was no way he was going to return that. Hakim to serve for Ghana. Does that. Vincent Matthias is that in the Nigerians trying to initiate a move wow what a poor 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 attack Seyava with the poor attempt to spike and Ghana extends their lead I came to serve again what a Poor serve from Akeem. What a poor serve from Akeem. Nigeria reduces the self deficit. And Akeem is substituted. Good one. But he tied the net. Nigeria should pick up the point. Ghanaians are beginning to lack concentration. Samuel Anthony serves for the Nigerians. He weighs the points for them. That's the third consecutive point won by the Nigeria. The Nigerians have picked up the last three points of this set. And the Ghanaians have a three-point lead and coach at Benyega calls for timeout. The quarterfinals of the women a men's volleyball competition. This is coming to you from the Bortemann Sports Complex. The third set Ghana won the first set, Nigeria picking up the second set. We are in the third set. Victor Matias serves a good point. That was very, very powerful. And Anthony couldn't return that attack from the Ghanaians. That was very, very powerful spike. Benjamin Azuma to serve for the Ghanaians. He delivers a powerful serve. A dummy, good attack. That was a very good attack from Vincent Matthias. An excellent assist by Bruno Ibe. And Vincent Matthias gets to serve. So Pascal Rada. The Ghanaians are initiating an attack. That is a point won from the Ghanaians. That is a point won for the Ghanaians. And that means a set one. And they now lead the quarterfinals of the men's volleyball competition by two sets to one it's been a very entertaining quarterfinal competition a place in the semi-final is at stake highlights from the third set 
That was a good attack from Victor. There was no way Nicolas Menzan was going to return that. There's so much power on it. The Ghanaians call it picking up some points. Benjamin Azuma did quite well. Paul Akam as well. He's been very good with his serves and his assists. Good attack from the Nigerians. We've seen a lot of rivalry games or competitions in this third in African games between Ghana and Nigeria. We saw the Ghanaians winning both the men and the hockey competition at the Tudor Selco hockey pitch in Accra. The Nigerians responded yesterday on the tracks when they dominated the relays in the 4 by 100 meters winning gold in both the men and the women's competition ghana picking up silver in the men's four by hundred meter relay and then bronze so it's been a very very good competitive rivalry for these two countries they don't share borders but they call themselves rivals We await the start of the four set. We are back for the fourth set in the men's volleyball quarterfinals between Nigeria and Ghana. Ghana have a two a two-one lead after the third set. Nigeria to serve for the start of the fourth set. Bruno Ibe waiting for the instructions of the officials. He says for the start of the fourth set, Hamidou returns it. And Ghana pick up the point in the first. The first point in the fourth set, Hakim Bukaili. Ghana serve. Afom return set, but couldn't pick up the point. That was a very good attacking block by the Ghanaians. And the lead two points in the fourth set. Benjamin Azuma with a serve. A good spike from Samuel Anthony. And Ghana fill with the uh, block. And Samuel Anthony gets to serve. 
He does that perfectly. The Nigerians initiate an attack. And that went out. And Ghana picks up the point. It's been a very competitive game. Started with Ghana picking up the first set. Nigeria responded by picking up the second. Ghana went on to pick up the third. And we are back for the fourth set. Good spike. A very powerful one from Vincent Matias. Reducing the deficit in points for the Nigerians. A very powerful spike. There was no way, no way Pascal Joffrey was going to return that attack from Hamidou. Benjamin Azuma about to serve for Ghana. He does that with so much power. Ghanaians are initiating an attack. What a spike. Bernard Atom. So much power behind that drive. A beautiful assist from Daniel Benefo. And Bernard Atom went with so much power. And that was a poor attempt to serve from the Ghanaians. And Nigeria pick up the point. The race substitution for the Nigerians. Moses Ghana comes in for Bruno Ibe. And Vic Vincent Matias get to serve. The Ghanaians trying to return it. A dummy and a good spike by Imoro Ididia Alassan. Yes. And that, that celebration had nothing to do with volleyball. It's the Cristiano Ronaldo celebration from the Ghanaians. Hakim serves for the Ghanaians. Went for power. But it was out. And Nigeria gets the point. That was a very disappointing one from Hakim. Emmanuel Uda serves for the Nigerians. A good spike, but it's been returned. And that was a good one. A good, good, good one from Imoro Ididi Alassan. It's one three of the seven points that the Ghanaians have picked in the fourth set. Abdul Ibrahim serves, went for power. It's been returned. A good defense. Paul Akar returns it. Hamidou spikes. And then Afun fails to return it. And the Ghanaians have a four point lead in the fourth set. It's been a very competitive volleyball quarterfinal game between Ghana and Nigeria. The Ghanaians with a 2 1 set lead. Bruno assisting Vincent Matias to pick up the point for the Nigerians. Moses Ghana to serve. A replay of the earlier points picked up by the Nigerians. Nicolas Mensah finding it difficult to return that attack. Nicolas returns it. Amidou has done this several times. He's been one of the best players for the Ghanaians. Abdul Hamid Ibrahim. Bernard Tom serves. 
Matthias returns it. I come. That was a good one. A good one from the Nigerians. Nigeria trying to level it on set. A good block. But that went out. And Ghana will pick up that point. And Ghana gets to serve. Bola come to serve for Ghana. Bola come picks up the point. That was a very lucky point. And coach Agbenyega has called for a timeout. To join us, this is the quarterfinals of the men's volleyball competition coming to you from the Botteman Sports Complex. It's Ghana versus Nigeria. Paul has come to serve for Ghana. The Ghanaians have lined up to attack. The Nigerians initiated an attack on their own. A good spike. From Matthias, Benjamin Azuma failing to block that attack. Good attack and a good follow up from Hakim. You need a lot of concentration, and that is exactly what Hakim did. He wins the point and gets to serve. Victor. That's a good defense from Nicolas. And a good spike. Did that go in? And Ghana gets to pick the point. But I must say that was a very good return from Nicolas Mensa. And a powerful Spike. From Paula come. The Ghanaians have a five point lead in the fourth set. Pascal Joffrey says for the Nigerians. Hakim returns it. A powerful spike, a lack of concentration on the on behalf of the Nigerians, miscommunication. But the Ghanaians will be grateful for that point. And Benjamin Azuma gets to serve for the Ghanaians. The fans and the supporters are enjoying a very competitive game between these two rivalries. This, this has been a very competitive game. The rivalry between these two countries have been brought to the volleyball court. Good attack. What a spike from Imoro Ididi Alassan. Imoro Ididi Alassan. Ido Wafum saw it, but there was so much power from that spike by Imoro Ididi Alassan. Hakim Mukali gets to serve. That was a poor one, a poor delivery. Nigeria gets the point. 10-15. Emmanuel 
Udig serves. Paul Akam. Wow. 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 Abdul Hamid Ibrahim. A powerful spike. That was very, very powerful. And what an assist from Paul Akam. And then he goes with a sue celebration. The trademark celebration from Cristiano Ronaldo. Nigerians return by picking up the points, reducing the deficit. But the Ghanaians have a six point lead in the fourth set. Okay, <laughs> six points, isn't it? It, it, it makes um, intriguing viewing when you see that gap. You thought it was going to be very close, but it really wasn't. And that should be a point for the Ghanaians. Wow, I don't think the referee looked very well, neither did the Nigerians. I thought the Ghanaian legs touched the blue line, the center line. <laughs> Well, Coach Agbanyega telling his Ghanaian players to calm down and keep their concentration level high. A good spike from Vincent Matias. That was a very powerful one. Are you aware that the name uh, Vincent, in, in one of the Belgian languages, either Flemish or Camembert, is pronounced brilliant spike. Absolutely brilliant. Paula Kam. It's pronounced Bansa. And I said, wow, one name, Vincent. <laughs> but I'm sure the West Africans will go Vincent. No, Vincent is English. <laughs> Ghanaian is ethnic. Nigerian is everything. But why the, the Flemish people decide that it's a Bansa? Wow. It that should be a point for Nigeria. Ghana is inching itself closer and closer to the finishing line. This doesn't look like it will go the full, the full haul of the best of five. It's looking like a best of four unless there's a, an almighty collapse from Ghana. And the spike was that in? Out, is out. Nigeria closing the gap, reducing the deficit. It should be 14 18. Samuel serves. Paula come. Ow. How? He's done this several times in this game. We said wow. It, we said it in the Ghanaian way. Ow. Ow. <laughs> Sayu. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh, that was excellent. Hakim Ibrahim gets to serve. 1914. And closer. And closer. That was a good point one. Powerful spike by Vincent. There is a change for the Nigerian. Moses Ghana comes in for Ido Wafum. Nigerians are trailing the Ghanaians. Pascal Joffrey serves. Paul Account returns it. A good spike by Hakim has been returned. And that, that was, was a block. What a what a block. Brilliant. Blocking of the highest. Imoro. Imoro Ididi Alasan. 20 points. Now the countdown begins. Imoro Didi Alasan. Timeout to prevent the Guardians from moving forward. But the countdown has now begun. It's probably, I'm, I'm going to say it, I'm going to try and predict. I think it's going to be the best of three. Uh, best of uh, four. Four. Case close. There's so much pressure now on Coach Shitu. He needs to pick the fourth set to make this a very competitive one. He really needs to do so. The Ghanaians are five points away from winning the fourth set and booking the place in the semi-finals of the men's volleyball competition. Ghanaians get to serve. Concentration level needed. Nigeria picks up the point. 
2016. That was a very powerful spike from Vincent. Vincent Matias about to serve. Does that with so much power, but it's been returned. There's no way the Nigerians are returning that. Imoro Ididi has been one of the brilliant players for the Ghanaians. It's in Ghana's favor. It's 22-16 in Ghana's favor. And it's three points for game, set, and match. Let's go, folks. Let's go, folks. Here we go. Here we go. A good serve. A good return. Oh, lack of concentration. Well, Lack of concentration. Do need some of these little little things that go in your favor. Whoa! 18, 22, 18. The are beginning to make a fist stomach. What a game it has been. The Ghanaians have still have their advantage. Nicolas Mensa returns. Ha Hakim. Wow. It's coming. It's getting the closer for the Ghanaians. In 1996, the English released a song. It's coming oh. home. Football's coming home. Well, here, it's seen the difference coming to Ghana with just two more points, and then they would have blocked out Nigeria. And that's why the brass band, that's why the Ghanaian fans are now singing all manner of songs some the words can't be said. a place in the semi-finals is just two points away for the Ghanaians it's a point for the Nigerians a powerful spike by Bruno Ibe this is the fourth set in the men's volleyball competition quarter final stage coming to you from a very packed Bottoman sports complex. So it's 23 19 or 19 23 because Nigeria was seven. And was that's that out. out. One more point. And the place has gone. Absolutely haywire. The noise is incredible. It's definitely. Would that be the point needed? Would that be? And it's out. Nigerians have the point. 24 20. Now, this is it, folks. Nigeria serves. Ghana up by two sets to one. How long can Nigeria keep it at bay? Wow! No, that's Nigerians! Out. That's out! That the, is out! The Nigerians have caught, have picked up the point and Coach Agbenyaga has called for the timeout. <laughs> what a game it has been. What a what a fight. The Nigerians are fighting back to close up the point. There is is there a confusion between the black spikers? Concentration is needed at this moment. Teamwork and unity. A little bit of misunderstanding between Benjamin Azuma and the captain Daniel Benefo. The captain is telling him, calm down. We are just a point away from the semi-final. A potential murder is up for grab. Would this be it? Would this be it? 
And, and it is game. Game, game over for the Ghanaians. And match for Ghana. And now the whole place goes absolutely potty. Ghana wins by three sets to one. 21 15 uh, 25 15 21 25 21 25 and 25 21 no 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 if you forgot that nigeria also won 27 25 well <laughs> so we make it 25 15 25 20 uh, 27 25 against ghana and then this one 25 21 it's that's one that's over and done with it's been a very competitive game absolutely competitive i've been very impressed with the Ghanaians. defeated chad 3-0 in their first game beat kenya 3-0 and now and then also beat the gambia 3-0 and now they've won this quarter final match against their bitter rivals nigeria by three sets to one a place in the semi-final has been booked for the Ghanaians. Impressive game from skipper Daniel Benefo, Bernard Atom, Emmanuel Johnson, Imura Alasa, Nicolas Tete, Paul Akam, Benjamin Azuma. A gallant performance from them. And you could see the excitement on the faces of the Ghanaian supporters. And even some Nigerians are waving the Nigerian flags. I'm sure there are some Ghanaians, some, there are some Nigerians who don't mind. They are both Nigerians and dual nationalities. Oh, okay. So who, whichever way, they are still but jubilating. I, I've learned from experience that you rather tend to support the place you stay. They, they're wrong guy, yeah. Okay. So tend to do that. Because I can also see some Nigerians you know, still celebrating, but it's been a very good competition for the Ghanaians. Highlights from the fourth set. Benjamin Azuma, Hakim Ibrahim, Vincent Matias. A lot of power in this game. Two very physical teams. The attack, the block, the serves have come with a lot of power and precision. The technique, the tactics, and sometimes lack of concentration have denied both teams some points. What a game it has been. International Maritime Hospital, IMA, situated in Tema Community 3, is a 130-bed capacity hospital and your one-stop shop for all your health needs. IMA provides all medical and surgical specialities. We have a modern gastroenterology and endoscopy suite to take care of all your health needs. The International Maritime Hospital offers nephrology with renowned dialysis and boasts of one-of-a-kind radiology departments with a wide world 3 Tesla MRI scanner, the only one of its kind in Sub-Sahara Africa. IMA boasts of a flagship comprehensive stroke center. IMA is open to the general public. We have enough. A life of plenty for every child. We've had enough all along. There's enough choice for every child. Enough nutritious food produced responsibly and sustainably so children can thrive everywhere. Let's come together and stand with children to say we've had enough. Enough. What happened to snacking? Delicious is being denied. 
munching has become mindless. To that we say, not on our watch. Messy munches, play dirty. Busy fighters, take a moment and intensify it. Because when snacking is under attack, we'll be there to fight back. Snack in the name of play. Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play. You like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? and abilities. I can cook, I can play. You like no other. In the mirror, in the mirror. You like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special in the mirror. Thank you, Mom. I love my in the mirror. This advert is FDA approved. It's FDA approved. Quick fire start to the second. to the athletics and we'll be looking to win a lot more as far as the competition is concerned but well we get to bring you another game from uh, the volleyball arena this time around it will be the game between uh, Gambia and Kenya Remember, this is the best of five. So the first team to get to win the first three sets, or three sets at some point, gets to win this game. I'm sure for many out there, the interest will be to see whether Ghana can progress with respect to this. It's fair to say that the host nation has been pretty good in a number of our competitions. As we bring you some volleyball action. Remember, there are loads of sporting disciplines uh, taking place all over. From as many venues. And one of the venues is here. Ghana just getting a result against Nigeria. That was a men's quarterfinal. But this time around, we get to see action from the women. Kenya leading by three points to one. Kenya to serve. The Gambians on the receiving end. Were they going for a spike? 
just trying to flick the ball over the net. That's a good one. That's a very powerful one from the Kenyans. Absolutely no chance for the West African nation. The last time I did see them in action, they were up against Ghana. Ghana winning in three three sets, I recall. The Gambians would have to start winning if they are to progress to the next stage of the competition. Remember, this is the women's division. Earlier on, we brought you the game between Ghana and Nigeria in the men's division. And one of the things that I find very, very exciting, Felix, I don't know whether you've noticed this, are this uh, volleyball competition. Every point is celebrated like they've won the game. Of course. Is that, is that a new thing with volleyball? Well, it gives you the momentum. And, and, and points are not that easy to get. The last time I watched Nigeria in the women's division, they have a formation dance for every point they win. Well, we saw the Ghanaian team. players do something. <laughs> I wish I could we, describe we, it. We that. saw the Ghanaian team going with a Cristiano Ronaldo celebration. Okay. <laughs> I wonder what these players would do if they are playing football. <laughs> it's a good defensive block. Wow. No, that was poor. Clearly, his positioning was not great. Couldn't return. The powerful spike. Kenya leading Gambia by six points to two. First set. Kenya gets to serve. Is she going to try to just get the ball over the net or is she going to go with power? They're just getting the ball over the net. It's just about enough. Gambia looking to set this up. But the Kenyans would do it out with a spike. Was that in? It's a point for the Gambians. Was that but, in? But I think yes. for the Kenyans. A point for the Kenyans. That will make it seven points to two. I saw the Kenyans in a number of games the last few days, and you've got to say, both the men and the ladies have a great team. As to whether they can progress this far, they've got to be the teams that have been lined up against them. So Kenya to serve, 7 2. First set. Gambia looking Good to defensive. set a point up. That was it. Excellent defensive block. And that makes it 8 2. For the Kenyans, Gambia would have to find a way of going past the Kenyans. And they appear quite tall as well. They have the height. They appear quite tall as well compared to the Gambian players. And in volleyball, height is very, very important. Very, very important, you especially the players at the net. The Libro can, if you like, pretty much decent height. Was that in or out? That appears That's to have gone out. A bit too much power on that serve. So Gambia would get to serve now. They are down eight points to three. First set. Gambia gets to serve. That's a strong one. A good with ten. No. That they go out. Will be eight four now. Gambia would have been happy to pick two points on the bounce. It adds a lot to their confidence. Gambia to serve. 8-4. That's another very strong serve. Well set up. Bang! That should be a point advantage, Kenya. It will be interesting how the Empire is going to be ruling this. It was a very powerful spike. Yes, advantage, Kenya. Simuyu to serve for the Kenyans. Absolutely no doubt about that. Oh, brilliant. Flick over the net. But the Kenyans did anticipate that. And yet another powerful spike coming in from Kenya. Kenya with a very healthy lead with this one. 11 points to 5, they lead. I'm going to be running through the representatives 
of the two teams as Kenya look to serve this one. They have a six-point lead. Power. But that's too much. That's too much on that serve. That's too much on that serve from the Kenyans. Player number two for Gambia to serve Fatima to Jame. Well received by player number 16 for Gambia, the Libro for the team. Kaye Sikundu of the Kenyans benefit from a very poor serve by Gambia. They started dominating the first set. So this is the quarterfinals of the women's volleyball. Kenya and Gambia. Kenya to serve again. Too much power on that serve. Goes out. And that will be a point advantage Gambia. And this is the thing with a number of the teams that we've seen in this year's competition. Some will just go in for the very simple serve. Just get the ball over the net. Some would also go in for power. And if you're lucky to get it right, like in this case, Barasa winning the points for Kenya. That was a very powerful kill or spike from the Kenyans. And when they set the ball up like that, Felix, no chance for you. Very difficult to block or defend. The ball will come at you so hard. And already, Gambia will call for a timeout for the managers to pass an instruction or two. An opportunity to re-strategize. And one of the things, just like Carl was saying earlier on, which is great for maybe the teams competing in volleyball. Your coaches are that close to everything they say. It's not like with football you have to scream and shout and sometimes you can't even pass the communication onto the player. Or, or maybe with... substitute a player and then you know, pass by some notes. Some notes. <laughs> <laughs> and pass by some notes. But when it comes to volley, I mean, have a look at the two coaches. They are so close Very. to the player so they can always communicate a thing or two. Can it's more like they are playing the game with you. I'm telling you. They are, they are just somewhere screaming instructions in your... Oh, that was a brilliant... From the Libro. The net. From the Libro. That should go into the net. Ah, oh, that was a poor return. That was a poor return. The Gambians would have been disappointed not to have been able to deal with that. Player number one to serve for Kenya. Esther Mutinda. As a player number seven. Misoki Nekesa to serve for the Kenyans but Gambia will deal with it and they initiated Back a kill ah. easy easy does it the easy Kenyan. does it for Belinda Barasa they are so good at initiating that kill there and she's got a height to go with it as well so anytime they do initiate a kill she appears to be at the right position to just connect with that final touch did that go out? Yes, it did. So it's, it's, it's going to be a very long day for the Gambians. Well, you get a feeling that that's going to be the case. If the trend, of course, continues like this. Kenya leading by 16 to 7. First set. Another very good serve, but only just over the line. Only just. And that will be a point. Advantage Gambia. Immaculate will be very disappointed with that serve. Immaculate Nekesa, some name. Miss Miss Misoki. <laughs> That's a very, Immaculate a very Kenyan Nekesa. name. Very very Kenyan. <laughs> Immaculate Nekesa Misoki for Kenya. It's 16-8. It's an eight points game now. Nine yeah. points away from picking up the first set. Exactly. A dominant player number 13 to serve for Kenya. Display from the Kenyans. Juliana Namutira. There wasn't enough power in that kill. That should be a point for the Gambians. Yes. Right at the net to make up that point for the West African nation. So that makes it 16 points to 9. It's still first set. This is the best of five. So the first team to win the first three sets as player number 12 looks to serve for Gambia, Jojo Samba. Did that go into the net? Yes, it did. Is that a point advantage, Kenya? 
Okay, the point has been awarded uh, to, to the Gambians. Gambia. It's now 16-10. Gambia to serve. They've picked up the last two points. It should be very important for their confidence. Oh, that was in. Should be a point for Kenya. What a powerful kill there from Lois Simuyu. No chance there for the Gambians. Well set up and bang. No chance for the Gambian. Was set up so brilliantly. Did that go out? Yes, it did. And that will be another That's for point. the Kenyans. Yes. So they won back to back points and they lead 18 10. First set. Kenya to serve. Player number six, Belinda Nanjala to serve for the Kenyans. 18-10. That went straight into the net. So point advantage, Gambia. Gambia to serve, 18-11. Strong serve. But Kenyans looking to set this one up for a spike, and they do. And they do. Well done. By right, player number 18, Jemima Siangu Nelima. Gambia no. That in? No, That's a point that for went the out. Yeah, that went out. That attempted kill was too long. And that's the thing with with the par when you want to spike, you've got to make sure that that would land a bit more power and that would exceed the lines yet another point won by the Kenyans they're right at the net so that makes it 22 11 the Kenyans three points away from winning the first set Simiyu she's been very good with her serves a delivery has been good another good one but this time around I don't think she will be happy with that the Gambians have the point Kenyan, a Kenya three points away from picking up the first set. Come here to serve. Well received by the Kenyans who look to spike from distance. Cannons of the net. And the Kenyans would defend this one. Setting up last dash Kenya. They managed to just get it over the net. The Kenyans are so good with setting the ball up for the kill at the net. That's a very powerful kill. Player number 11. Aided by the net. Two points away from winning the first set. Lois Simiu winning that point there for the Kenyans. Gambia trailing so far behind now. Should be a point for Kenya. You bet they are deflated after what has just happened. So it's set points for Kenya. They win the next points and they win the first set. It was a very weak return there as we get to see those highlights. The very powerful spike just over the net by the Kenyans. Set points down. Bang! So first set over. In, in such a quick time. 25-12, Kenya winning the first set. Will they look to sweep this one? Or the Gambians will look to steal in one of these games? And then who knows? The Kenyans have been very dominant in this game. If they go by the same momentum in the second set, it's going to be a very long day for Gambia. If they would want to progress, they've got to find a way to win. But you just get a feeling, Felix, that the Kenyans are better. <laughs> well, you can see the points different in the first set. Yeah, sees everything. More than twice that of the Zambians. The Gambian coach would attempt to, if you like, pass on some little tricks. Coach Lamin has a lot of work to do. But the Kenyans will be happy to have won the first set. 
and the coaches up here relaxed there it gives you a lot of momentum yeah a replay from the first set every sport is like that i mean once you're on the ascendancy there is always a way that gets you going but advantage in volleyball is that you have time out and i was thinking that coach lamin would have used that in the first set to distort the momentum of the kenyans well, they chose to go boot for boot, and the Kenyans showing that they are in the class of their own, winning the first set by 25 to 12. The second set will start very shortly. Gambia will be looking to get back into the game, and the coaches know this. If they end up losing the second set, then it becomes a tall order. A very tall one for them. If you are watching us, this is the quarterfinals of the women's volleyball competition from the Botteman Sports Complex, the Kenyans picking up the first set by 25 points to 12. We're still awaiting the signal for the start of the second set. The coach of Zambia still passing on a word or two to his players. Maybe, just maybe, that will do the trick. Will they be able to turn on the game with a different brand of volleyball in the second set. Oh, the ladies are up. Kenya being represented by Mutsinda, Olioch, Owino, Barasa, Misoki, Atuka, Simuyu, Nabilani. Zambia. Bah, Jamin, Boyan, Syria, Bayo, Injie, Isatu, Tambedu, Sise, Bangura, Samba, and Sa. They lost the first set by 25 to 12, I think. 25 12. So, second set about to start. There's advantage Kenya at this point. They would look to finish off this game early. And not give Gambia any chance at getting back into this. We we're waiting for the call of the Empire to start the second set. Looks like all is set. Kenya did have seven players, so one has to go off. The Libro is back on. Gambia do have all six alpha players there. So they're playing the start of this game without a Libro. But that's the choice of the team. You don't necessarily have to go with a Libro all the time. The Libro, though, is a player who can go in and out of the game at any, any time. time. Kenya to serve. Wow. First point advantage, Kenya. Player number seven, Nik Nikesa Misoki, to start. Come here looking to set this up. But the Kenyans uh, deal with that. Initiating the king. That should be a point for Kenya. They are continuing from where they left off in the first set. Veronica Diambo Olioch. Very little, little touch for the Gambians on that play. Was that net call? Last touch of a Gambian player. So the points will be awarded to Kenya. Olioch to serve again. It looks like she has a magic wand. She's been very good with her deliveries. And she's been serving a lot. Olioch. The Gambians you, you wish would just set themselves up in a way. Where they would benefit from every point as much as they can. Wow. Good attacking block. Another excellent one. That should be a point for Kenya. And Kwame, there against come the height advantage. Exactly. Right to the net. 
when you've got players of a certain height other than that what then happens is that when you're in a position to spike those lots can give you a good run for your money a little over the net the libro would have a lot to say about that bang no should be a point for gambia should be a point for gambia their first point in the second set Four one second set. Gambia winning the first set by twenty five to twelve. Gambia on serve. Kenya. Oh yes. Player number two. Adiambo Oliuch with a powerful kill. Player number thirteen, Juliana Namutira, to serve on this one. Namutira. Well set up by Gambia. No. Too much power in that. You've got to pay attention to the size of the court. Or else opportunities are going to go begging. Player number 13, Juliana Namutara, to serve again. Yes. It came over the Kenyan player. So last touch would be advantage Kenya. Olioch was a Kenyan lady who had the last touch. Gambia to serve. The powerful serve from DI. Excellent block from the Gambians. That was quite phenomenal there. The Kenyan thought the point had been won, but the Gambian player had other ideas, and that's why it's three points to six second set. They need it set badly. They can't afford to be trailing. Yes. Oh. It's beginning to look like a contest now. Looks very much like that. Six four still advantage Kenya, who have already been victors in the first set. Gambia to serve. Oluch trying to get a clever one past the Gambian net. But the Gambian is defending with that brilliantly. But back to the half of the Kenyans. They will set this up. Bang! Yes! That has power. That was that very, very powerful. From Veronica. Ariambu. Oluch. But kudos to Kunde, the Libro for assisting that kill or spike by the Kenyans. The Kenyans get to serve again. They'll be looking to set us up and ding the ball over the nets, but no lack of concentration. Out. And it reverts to a four point game. Player number six. Shiza Atuka to serve for Zambia. A bit too much. A bit too much on that serve. Kenya still holding on to serve. Holy watch to serve. Bang. Gambia looking to set. That was a up. poor one. When you're down, this is the last thing you want to be doing. That was a poor one from the Gambians. Remember, we're going to be bringing you a lot of live action from the 13th African Games later today. There's still athletics to look forward to. There's still the final of the women's football to look forward to as well. And that was a good kill. But the Kenyans dealing with that. And will return the favor. They would return the favor with a powerful spike of their own. And when the kill is powerful, it is difficult for you to return it. Almost impossible. Player number six, Belinda Nanjala Barasa. Ah, oh, that's a good one. 
It was a poor anticipation for the Kenyans on that play. It was a case of, do I go in for it or do I let another player go in for it? Lack of communication. Exactly. 5-11, Gambia to serve. Second set. That's a good one. But Kenya would attempt to deal with that threat. The ball appeared to have cannon on a, Gam uh, a Kenyan player. Is that point awarded to Kenya? Yes, it yeah, looks like. Yes. So it's 11 6 down if that point has been awarded to Kenya. 12 5. Okay, so that's the official scoreline. Yeah. So we'll go with this. 12 5. Advantage Kenya. And they won the first set as well. Well set up. Bang! Was that, that should be a point, but no, that was out. No. That was out. That was out. The Kenyans are regaining their dominance in this set. It's the quarterfinals of the women's volleyball competition from the Bottoman Sports Complex in Accra. The Kenyans only trying to show the Gambians that they are probably one of the best for the medal zone. But they'll have to put in the work if they are to make it to the final of the women's volleyball championship. This is Kenya versus Gambia. An opportunity for the coaches to pass on some words and some moment of inspiration to the ladies. You may be down, but you're not up. For the Kenyan coach, I guess it will be more of just go out there and enjoy yourself and do the things that you did in the first half that made you win. You don't want to go back to Nairobi very early. Not at all. They would want to be around, I'm sure, and possibly progress all through the final. Kenya to serve. Oh. Uh, Coach Lamine of Gambia won't be very happy with that. Adiambu to serve for Kenya. Second set. Good serve. That was in. Yes. What were they thinking? That was in. So much space. There was nobody to attack the ball. For a moment, they just switched off the Ethiopian team. They are beginning to give up. The, the Kenyans have established an 11 point lead. That's that was the in. point yes. for Gambia. Right on cue. That was on cue. So the point has been awarded to Ghana. Gambia to serve. The trio 6 16. Well set up. Good block. They are initiating a kill. Expected kill. Oh. No chance. Very powerful. No chance. How do you deal with so much power in a spike like that? Even if you're a man, the ball is going to come at you so hard. It's almost impossible to get out of the way sometimes. And that's what we see with these volleyball players and other sporting disciplines as well. They are doing their best to ensure that the rules are applied. But some of the players would always have something up their sleeves. Yet another point celebrated by the Gambians. The coach of Zambia passing on an instruction or two is always very important to pass on an advice or two, especially when you're in the losing position, so that that could ginger the players on in the remaining minutes that they have to play. We would see whether that would ginger them or not, or whether 
the Kenyans would have their own thoughts about what I just said. Kenya to serve, third set. Kenya to serve. Second set. Leading by 17 to 6. They're surely going to pick up this second set. Nilema with a serve for the Kenyans. Sent in a very nice delivery. The Gambians. Now the Kenyans are trying to initiate a kill. That should be a point for the Gambians. It's a very huge point difference. But I know Belinda can afford, afford a smile while she serves. She tagged the net. The Gambians have another point. You just get a feeling, Felix, that the Kenyans are maybe the best of the two teams. And Clearly. Maybe the point maybe, on board tells 19-7. Maybe for academic purposes, this will go all three sets. But it will be a miracle. It will be a miracle of miracles if Gambia will be able to turn this around. I just don't see it. It won't happen, Kwame. I just don't see it. They've been too good. Yeah, beginning to run away with this now. And Isn't at the point, I feel the Gambians have also given up. When the margin is this big. <laughs> when the margin is this big, Felix. The coach Lamin will be very disappointed. When the margin is this big, it's almost impossible to... And it's a bit surprising that he has not initiated a timeout. Not at all. Just to get his team back on track. Trees are too cut. Seven this one for Kenya. Get a feeling that he might just win another point here. No. Was that in? Yes. It was. And it's a 15 point lead now. 22 7. Three just, points away from picking the second set. That's right. You just get a feeling that the Gambians are deflated now. Just get a feeling that the Gambians are deflated now. That's out. Too much power on that serve. When you have such a huge lead, you can sometimes afford yeah, can to, to give out. to play around. Yeah. <laughs> Be charitable enough to give out points. You can afford to give some away. Simiyu Bangura to serve. Returns the favor in, in terms of giving out points to the Kenyans. Not when you're down, Felix. Not when you're down. When you're down, you want to up your game. It's now 23 8. Kenya, two points away from winning the second set another strong one a good return by belinda you've got to give the gambi ah oh, no chance so much space absolutely no a, chance for gambia very powerful spike as well player number six for the kenyans Belinda, Nanjala, Barasa. So he's set points now. Set point for Kenya to make it two sets to love. That goes out, surely. So it's all over. Second set. Advantage, Kenya. 25 to eight. eight. So the first set was 25-12. The second set, 25-8. It's going down. <laughs> Is the third set going to be 25-2? Or 25-3? Well, we want to see a very competitive third set. And, and this is the thing for Gambia. If they have to win this game... They need to win that set. They need to win the third not just set. the third set, but their fourth set As and well. the fifth set. It's a huge mountain it's a for them. a huge ask, if you ask me. It's a huge ask 
if the Kenyans oh, some bananas will be needed they need energy energy they surely need needs to be restored they surely need their energy if they are to get one in this they surely need their energy it helps and they can afford some high fives the Kenyans we're going to see some highlights of what transpired in the second set the Kenyans winning point after point after point. Kenya lead two sets slob. We await the third set. set for the third set could possibly be the final set as well unless the Gambians do surprise all of us <laughs> well from what we've witnessed in the two previous sets and if I if things are supposed to go the way it went then surely this is going to be the last set of the game sure it's the quarterfinals of the women's volleyball competition Kenya have picked up the first two sets and now Let's the Zambians have served for the third set and interestingly Gambia win the first points of the third set the first time they've done that exactly question this is what's game. going to be the game plan <laughs> what's going to be the game plan of uh, Gambia now are they going to go in with absolutely everything Kenya have responded. Level on point now. Kenya to serve again. They've won the first two sets already. And we'll be looking to finish this off. Kenyans will be looking to finish this off and they already have a two to one lead in the third set and it's 3-1 already the points start coming in thick and fast for the Kenyans 
player number seven, Misoki, to serve again. This time around, the Gambians would have something to say about this. Bang! Did that go in? Yes, it is. That's for the Gambians. Good, good block. Fatu Sise winning the point for Gambia there. It looked like it was going to be a very powerful kill. But Fatu Sise had other ideas. Blocking it brilliantly there to give Gambia a point. 3-2. <laughs> the power in those Kenyan kills. You can, <laughs> you can return that. It's impossible to return them. Almost impossible to return them sometimes. But Cici was trying to make an effort. Juliana Namutira to serve. That should be out. That should go out. Yeah. That should be a point for Gambia. 4-2. Quite a good start yeah, to the third start. set. Yeah, that's a good start. At least they are within touching distance. It's 4-3 now. Gambia to serve. Ah. Oh. And just when you thought that they were making some inroads, they served straight into the net. There's now a two-point lead in the third set. Barasa, player number six, to serve for Kenya. That's a good one. Ah, oh, brilliant flick over the net. But the Gamb Gambian did anticipate that well. Oh, just out of the line. The Gambians saw that they had done just about enough to benefit from that point. But that going just over the line, Kenya to serve 6 3. Oh, and that's poor. That's poor from Fatimatu Sisi. She knows she could have done better. Fatimatu. 7 3 now, an advantage. Kenya, Barasa to serve again. She bounces the ball delicately and sends one into the backcourt of the Gambians. Fatima to Sisi attempting to spike the ball so strongly. Gambian players trying to encourage themselves. They know that this is going to be a very difficult one. If they have to get one pass, their opponents. Oh, that was just too strong. A serve goes out of touch. Advantage. Kenya, Kenya to serve, that was out, that looked like it was out, there's been time in the game where the Kenyans have been very good with their passing, but trying to get that kill has been very very difficult, it's a very good serve, Another good passing rage, but the Kenyans have returned that with a very good block. Gambia is a very good point. The final touch, they come over Kenyan player. And that's why Gambia benefit from the points. Gambia to serve. Very difficult to defend. And again, another very, very powerful spike. There. No chance for Fatima to see. When, when the Kenyans set up 
with those beautiful passing ranges their kill always come with a lot of power yeah pay and serve leading 10 to 5 well set up bang that is another powerful kill they spike the ball so hard Twelve five. Kenya lead the third set. There is a timeout by Coach Lamine. If you are joining us, this is the women's volleyball quarterfinals competition between Kenya and Gambia. Kenya have already picked up the two sets. This is the third set, and they have the lead. 12-5 establishing a seven-point lead. They won the first set by 25-12. Went on to pick up the second set by 25-8. And then they now lead the third set and they serve. Arranging a passing movement. A powerful kill has been re returned. That is a poor ball. A very poor one indeed. You don't do this, especially when you're down. It's now 13 5. Kenya to serve. When you're down, you need to make every single point count as the Kenyans look to serve. player number 18 to serve for Kenya who have already won the first set, two sets and will be looking to finish this off Gambia do well to get the ball back in court bang but Gambia were not successful with that block and that will be another point advantage Kenya that will be another point advantage Kenya It's 14 6. Third set. Gambia to serve. Fatima to Jame. Bang! That was in, yes. That was in. A brilliant attack from the angle there. And it looks like every time they set themselves up to spike the ball like that, they are almost always successful, these Kenyans. They know how to assist so well in setting up their opponents. They know how to assist so well in setting up their opponents. It's making it impossible for Gambia to get a looking. And that's another one into the net. And it's something the Gambians would not like at this point. At this point, what they would want is to be picking points and not dropping points. What they want at this time is to be picking points and not dropping points. It's getting a lot tougher and tougher. It's 18 6 now, and it's a 12 point game. You get a feeling that the Gambians possibly have given up on this one. Kenya have a two-set lead, but they're leaving nothing to chance. They can afford a few smiles, but they know that the game is not over, and they still have to do a professional job. 
the Kenyan coach passing on instruction or two to her girls they know that they are seven points away from glory they know that they are only seven points away from winning in straight sets play on my Triza Atuka to serve but I went straight into the net advantage the Gambia Gambia to serve oh brilliant assist there that was so quick Oh, the brilliant assist a super dig absolutely no chance for the Gambian player did that go out there's a bit too much on that serve but what a dig that was I mean we are seeing a similar story from the two previous sets it was 1980 now it was 25 12 in the first set 25-8 in the second set. Are we now about to see another 25-8? Yeah. Are we going to see the Gambian score below 10 again? For the third and the final set, that is barring any miracle. And we are looking to assist. That's a good block. Set made up. That last touch to go over the net. They managed to get it over the net. The ah. dink. Beautiful dink. Beautiful. Beautiful Don't from the Kenya. Don't you love that? <laughs> Don't you love that from Kenya? They've dominated every set in this quarterfinal game. Don't you love that? Just dinking the ball over the blockers. Another point for Kenya. Another point advantage Kenya. So it's uh, three points from victory now for the Kenyans. That should be 22 8. We'll get an official confirmation from the touchline very shortly. That last touch should go over the net. It does. Arranging for a kill. Yes. And that was the kill by Went off the line. Gambia improving. In terms of points from that second set so it's 23 8 that's the official score line so Kenya two points away from winning in straight sets it's surely a wrap for them surely wrap three straight sets and then they book a place in the semi-finals is that set point for the Kenyans it's 24 8 now is that set points it's not just set points but it's also match points it's not just set points but it's also match points bang Fatima to CC wins a point for Gambia but they know that only a miracle can save them in this the Kenyans looking to finish off the job. Could this be the point that finishes the job? No. And that's another point won by Gambia. It's 24 10. They are giving it absolutely everything. The question that will be asked is where was this level of performance? Could this be it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's all over. It's game set and match. It is game set and match. There. That was absolutely brilliant.
from player number six for Gambia. Kenya winning in three straight sets, 25-10, 25-8, and 25-12. Well done. The Kenyans winning to advance to the next stage of the competition. Kenya 3, Gambia 0. Ready to see some highlights of what transpired earlier between Kenya and Gambia. The Kenyans in the black and white outfit, the Gambians in the white, the blue. National Maritime Hospital, IMA, situated in Tema Community 3, is a 130-bed capacity hospital and a one-stop shop for all your health needs. IMA provides all medical and surgical specialities. We have a modern gastroenterology and endoscopy suite to take care of all your health needs. The International Maritime Hospital offers nephrology with renowned dialysis and boasts of one-of-a-kind radiology department with a wide board three Tesla MRI scanner, the only one of its kind in Sub-Saharan Africa. IMA boasts of a flagship comprehensive stroke center. IMA is open to the general public. We have enough. A life of plenty for every child. We've had enough all along. There's enough choice for every child. Enough nutritious food produced responsibly and sustainably so children can thrive everywhere. Let's come together and stand with children to say we've had enough. Enough. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. With a new and improved taste. It's delicious and refreshing. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. You need to try it first. This advert is FDA approved. Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play. You like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other?
well as their own unique talents and abilities. I can cook. I can play. You like no other. In the mix. In the mix. You like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special in the mix. Thank you, Mom. It's FDA approved. We bring you a lot of uh, action from the volleyball arena. This is the Egyptians playing against uh, the Nigerians. We're already in the third set. The Egyptians in the red and black. The Nigerians in their traditional green and white. Egypt's already leading by two sets to love. Third set. Egypt to serve. The Egyptians to serve Nigeria. That was out. That was a strong right hand. But too much power in that. Ball going out. And the Egyptians will benefit from this point as they get to serve. El Nadi to serve. Setting up brilliantly. But the Egyptians deal with that. Bang! Oh, what a way for the Egyptians to get the ball back into play again. And another spike. Surely that's a point advantage. The Egyptians. Well, the Egyptians going for another jump serve. Yes, they do. Oh, that's a lot of power there. Who has won this point? Is it the Egyptians or the Nigerians? The Egyptians giving it absolutely everything. They're already leading by two sets to love. And Nigeria would celebrate every point like they have done in the previous games that we've seen them at the African Games. Nigeria to serve. That's too much power. That's too much power on that serve. They've got to find a way of clawing their way back into this. Yes, that would go out. The mass up at the net. And find a way to literally confuse the Nigerian attack. Egypt to serve. 
player number 14 to serve for the North Africans. May Abdel Magid with a powerful serve. Can Nigeria deal with that? A fine assist there from player number 10. Nigeria would look to win this. Oh, yes, that was a clever one over the net. But what about that for an assist? And a brilliant block. So that point will be advantage. The Egyptians, as they look to serve again. A very strong jump serve. What would Nigeria do? Oh, yes. They are absolutely brilliant at blocking the ball. Ashraf. For the Egyptians. She's got a good height. Together with her colleagues at the net. There. Well done. Player number 22, Ashraf. In winning the point for Egypt. They're going for another strong jump serve. Nigeria will look to set this up. Final touch. Egypt point advantage, Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria needs to pick up this set. They're already down by two sets to lap. And they know it's going to be a tall order to get one past the opponents. Kelechi Genevieve serving for Nigeria. They just give away a point. And that's an experience of the Egyptian team. They set themselves up brilliantly. And if they have to flick the ball over the net, they do it with such skill and finesse and panache. Strong. Jump serve. Ah, oh, how about that for a spike? Good return by the Libro. Can Nigeria get this back into the court? Yes, sir. Uh. Ah, what a rally this is turning out to be. Yes, beautiful, beautiful, absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. This Dana winning the point for the Egyptians, but Anisha defensive block from the Nigerians was very excellent. What a finish there from Dana. Another powerful jump serve. An essay for the Egyptians. Another powerful jump serve. And that's another point. The Egyptians beginning to run away with this down. And they already have a two sets to lap lead from the first two. If they win this, it's game over. Another powerful jump serve again. Ah, that's too much pa power too much power and that goes out of touch for yet another point advantage the Egyptians and that is to be served by player number 11 again Sarah I mean Ahmed she has such a powerful jump serve the Nigerians are giving it absolutely everything but they are trailing by six points already in what could possibly be the third and the final set can they get themselves back into the game? Only time will tell. But Kwame, the Botswana Sports Complex have been a very good hunting ground for medals when it comes to the Egyptians. They've won medals in badminton in the pool. I'm of sure course. they wish every single event was <laughs> here. Because it's turning out to be a venue of luck for them. Oh, what a brilliant flick. What a brilliant flick there. Bang! Ow! Ah, oh, no. Oh, no. That's oh, too no. much to ask for. A momentary lapse of concentration costing the Nigerians a point. Is there any sport at this 13th African Games where the Egyptians have not had a say? Not at all. And it is telling on the medal table. Dominating with the number of gold. Almost 100 gold medals. Impressive. That's madness. But it's not surprising <laughs> because if you look at the all-time African 
games competition league table in terms of medals they are on top and by a distance they are such an all-round sport nation you might just think that they are great with only their football not at all I'm they are it's good just, with anything else it's not surprising for them to dominate these disciplines because most of the fo football clubs we know of on the african continent are actually sporting clubs that's right the zamaleks the el alis they are not just known for football but, but they are for so many other sporting activities as well so you could be a player of Arkley and you'd play handball or a volleyball you play basketball or you play chess or you play badminton or you play cricket or you play whatever you do judo you do karate you do you do anything at all that's that, that and that is that is what you expect you know in terms of gold in terms of silver in terms of the number of medals that they are winning at these games is telling on how much they've contributed to the development of their sports by those football clubs a temporary hold to the game there's a nigerian player down on the court appears to be suffering from an injury but looks all right player number eight and for, for some spikers. for some of the players that are you know involved themselves with the religious month of ramadan you wonder the conditions in which they are playing it yeah what we do not know is if the players have taken the decision to, to fast or otherwise and for those who are fasting it's impressive to see how they go through that that's right I mean, I recall meeting some of them, uh, some of the men who were involved in the wrestling just when the Ramadan started. And there were one or two of them who told us it is not they easy. are used to fasting and competing. And competing. I mean, they've, they've done it for years, so this is not going to be anything new. When they have to compete, they will compete. But we should also forget that the temperature in Accra for this game. It's been hot. Very, very, very hot. And all of these athletes, I'm sure, would attest to that. The Egyptians leading by 16 to 8, having already won the first two sets. Will they be able to make it 3-0 and progress to the next stage? With the way they are playing, it will be impossible to see them lose out to the Nigerians. Right after the volleyball, we've got athletics coming up as well. Nigeria will give it absolutely everything in the third and the final set. But would that be good enough? We would see. No. You cannot handle the ball more than once in a play. And that's why the point has gone against the super, uh, super spikers, maybe. Of they always Nigeria. have a super something somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> or the green spikers. The Egyptians can afford to make some substitutions. They know that they are only a few minutes away from victory setting up for a spike that was too strong very powerful and just when Felix said they were setting up for a spike exactly that happened and Nigeria still did not have an antidote Nigeria still did not have an antidote they have very powerful jump serves it's a very they are good so defense. great at the net, so good defensively. It's such an all-round team, this Egyptian side. They're so good. I mean, they so have quality in every area of the court. And one thing I admire, their communication. They seem to talk a lot. Of course, we don't speak Arabic, do we? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no idea. You could see from the gestures. Yeah. This time around, a point for Nigeria. They seem to communicate a lot. And of course, the coach is just somewhere in the corner over there. Have the Nigerians called a timeout? No. The game would go ahead as planned as they get to serve. They're already 10 points down in the third set. The Libro would look to set this up. Yes. It's point after point after point. Being worn by the Egyptians, point after point after point. It's, well set up. It's looking like three sets, three straight sets will be enough for 
you in this quarterfinal games in I'm the women's you, Felix. volleyball competition. The Egyptians would just want to finish this off. Nigeria happening to set up for a spike. And Kwame, watch the movement of the Egyptians. And that was a very good block by the Nigerians. We've got to give them credit for this one. Excellent one. They know they are down, but they are giving it their all in the third and the final set. They know they are down. Ten points down in the third and the final set. But they are giving it absolutely everything. They wouldn't want to go out without a fight. Let's see how the Egyptians will respond. Was that last touch of a Nigerian player? No. It was a spike that went out. So Nigeria to serve. 11 20, third set. Oh, that's a brilliant dink. That's a brilliant dink over the net. Those things are impossible to deal with. Just when you think the player is going to be going for the spike, then he or she dinks it just casually over the net. It's almost impossible to react to that. Almost impossible to react. Four points away from a place in the semi-finals. A strong jump serve. What will the Nigerians do? Was that a point one? Yes, For it was. Egyptians. A point one by the Nigerians. Nigerians so that will make rather. it 21-12. They need to do possibly some very powerful jump serves. And this is where the Egyptians are so good. They set themselves out so well. And they spiked the ball with venom. And they did just that. They spiked the ball with such venom. Have a look at this. Look at how calmly they do it. They don't panic, no. They make it look so easy. Easy. They make it look so easy sometimes. The Egyptians are three points away from winning this. They make it look so easy. So, so easy. It's a guaranteed three sets allowed for them. Egypt to serve. Going in for the jump serve. Bang. But the Libro to the rescue there. Looking to set this up. Good block from the Nigerians. Good block from player number seven. Probably the tallest on the side of the Nigerians. Thirteen twenty two Nigeria serve. There's a powerful jump serve. Ah. Uh, that was poor on the part of the Nigerian team. They could have dealt with that a lot better, me thinks. The Egyptians. Not too sure whether the Egyptians calling a timeout or the Nigerians calling a timeout. It's only Surely two the points Nigerian. away. Yeah, it's only two points away from winning this for the Egyptians. That would be one great comeback. Should the Nigerians win this set? It looks impossible at this point. <laughs> the Egyptians are only two points away from winning the set and the match. The and the quarterfinal game. And the quarterfinal game. The Nigerians would have to win the set and two more sets. I just don't see it. I just don't see that happening. Good spike. But the Egyptians as always will deal with it. And that is it. A set point now. A point away from the semi-finals. Mahmoud. Mahmoud. Looking to finish this off. If they win this point, it's game set and match. This could be it. This could be it. No. Well blocked by the Nigerians. And yes, it is. It is. <laughs> yes, it is. Game oh. set and match. The Egyptians winning by 25-13.
that's winning in straight sets and progressing to the next stage of the competition Felix they've been very excellent what a game it will be Kenya versus Egypt mm. both teams progressing with three sets to love it's been a very dominating performance from the Egyptians The fan love at the Bottoman Sports Complex won a lot of medals. And now they get into another medal zone. Yes. And from how good they've been in this volleyball competition, they surely will pick one of the medals. But as to which color, we'll have to wait. At this point, looks like they're definitely going to be picking in one of the medals. What exactly they're going to win, we do not know. I'm just having a look at the medal table as we get to see highlights of what has transpired so far. A disappointing look. Clearly look disappointed. But the Egyptians will be happy to do a photo. And afford a smile. And afford a smile. <laughs> it's 167 medals. Absolutely stunning. I mean, how many of them are good? 92 gold medals. <laughs> oh, wow. 41 silver medals. And 34 bronze. This is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous on the part of Egypt with the number of medals that they've won in this year's competition. I mean, I don't know the weight of the medals. They but, look big. But, but I think they might need a container to carry all of them to Cairo. I tell you. <laughs> I'm going to give you a going away with 167 medals. And let's not forget that there are still more games are to competing so there's every chance the egyptians can add up to the 167 that they've won so far as we get to see highlights of what transpired earlier on between nigeria and the egyptians the egyptians winning in three straight sets in the red and black outfit the nigerians are always in their green and white outfit but it was a total domination by the egyptian side that saw them winning in three straight sets 167 medals, like I said, for the Egyptians. 90 medals for Nigeria in second position. 35 gold medals the Nigerians have won. South Africa in third with 29 gold medals. The Algerians, 23 gold medals. Tunisia, 16 gold medals. And guess this, Ghana lies sixth with 49 gold medals, of which 41 came in arm wrestling alone. Ghana completely dominating that sport of arm wrestling. When in 49, a massive 49 Impressive. gold medals. We'll wait to see whether Ghana will be winning a lot more medals between now and the last day on Saturday. Nigeria just lost to Egypt in three sets and Ijoma happens to be the motivator of the Nigerian side. She got injured during the first set and from where I sat, I realized the team's motivation went down. Ije, how are you feeling right now? How is your knee? I, I, feel, I feel pain, but I, I couldn't give up because I know the team need me, so I had to play. But what happened? How did you get injured? I, I twisted the knee while trying to play the ball, so that was why. To your team, you fought hard, but it wasn't meant to be. The Egyptians were more stronger. Yeah. What do you say to them? Yeah, they, 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 they are better hands, so they are better than us. More experienced, more exposed, so they are better than us in all around. To the Nigerian fans who were supporting you, cheering you, a few words to them. In your language, actually. Okay. I want to say... You so many languages, not just one. I want to just use English, which is a popular language. Thank you to everyone that supported us. We are grateful for the support and we are saying thank you. On behalf of the team, we are grateful. Thank you. All right. All the best and better luck next time. So, Sarah, the Nigerian coach will be joining us soon, but Sarah happens to be a playing member of the team. Now, Sarah, 3 0 against Nigeria. Was it that easy? Uh, it was not easy in the beginning. We started uh, with a very tough points uh, in the, but we managed to win and uh, in, in the end of the game and uh, the other two sets were so easy to us and uh, we are focusing on tomorrow against Kenya to uh, in the semi-final so. now that will be some cracker would it be revenge for Egypt what 
Would it be revenge? Because, you know, you met Kenya, they beat you. Now you're here in the semifinals. Yes, they didn't beat us in the, in the group. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the African the championship. Yes, we won them uh, in the African championship two times in a row. And we uh, know how they play very well. Uh, so we are going to play um, uh, uh, on their weak points. And I, I, I wish that we are going to win. All right, Sarah, congratulations. All right, so coach of Nigeria would have a few words. I have to ask him this. Coach, Ijoma's injury, how did it affect your team? Uh, you know, he's the motivator of the team and uh, also he's the captain of the team. He's the one trying to organize the game, give them morale. Immediately he's done in that first set, you know, we're, we're, we run into a little trouble. And uh, that's what caused us. We lost, that, we lost the game from the first set. I think we were able to push, if it's on, it's on the court, and we we're able to push to have that set, it will not be like this. I believe it's a learning process. We are still learning. You're still learning. For this particular competition, would you say your girls have grown? Uh, actually, if you look at the component of my team, I have 17 years old in that team. We are the youngest team as far as the tournament is concerned. Some of them, this is their first international exposure. So I believe uh, the, what I've learned here, with the exposure we have given to, to them, we go back home now to go and see how we can build on them to make sure that we give them more international exposure so that we, before in the next uh, four years, all African game, I think they'll be able to smoke. Osman has always caught my eye. She is one skillful player. How, well, how long has she been with the team? Osman uh, is a product of under 17. Um, the last two years, it's a product of uh, under 17. And you can see the progression for her to make it to the, the senior team. You can see that there are a lot of progression and there's a lot of talent in the girl, if well executed. And I believe, uh, by God's grace, we'll be able to see how we pile out to take her to a greater height. Coach, the fans, Nigerians are all over the world. What do you say to them? I say we are sorry. It's not what we bargained for. We wanted to be on a podium finishing, but quite unfortunate, we are unable. We are very sorry. Thank you very much. Team Ghana is going to come up against Algeria very soon. The cheers. It means that Team Ghana has just stepped onto the court, and there they are probably in your shot right now. They are getting ready to take on the Algerians. We'll see at the end of the day whether it's Team Ghana progressing to the semis or the Algerians. We're wrapping it up from this game. There's one more coming up next here at the volleyball court. enough a life of plenty for every child we've had enough all along there's enough choice for every child enough nutritious food produced responsibly and sustainably so children can thrive everywhere let's come together and stand with children to say we've had enough enough Delicious is being denied. Munching has become mindless. To that we say, not on our watch. Messy munches, play dirty. Busy fighters, take a moment and intensify it. Because when snacking is under attack, we'll be there to fight back. Snack in the name of play. Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play. You like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? talents and abilities. I can cook, I can paint. You like no other. In the mirror, in the mirror. It's you like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember.
remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mom. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved. Bringing you a lot more live action this time around from the athletics over here at the University of Ghana in Lagos. There's the final of the women's long jump, and I'm going to be running through the athletes who are going to be competing in your shorts. Is uh, one of the two Nigerians who are going to be competing in that long jump final, Kosenda Re Veronique competing for Cameroon in your short noun is a rep from Ethiopia Bullock Poch Omod representing Ethiopia there's an interesting list of athletes who are going to be competing in the women's at long jump final Atimango Were Fred representing Uganda is here Esse Brume from Nigeria is here as well. Isaka Abu Kerim Faiza from Togo makes it to the final as well. Ladud Yusra from Morocco makes it to the final. Ulok Poch Omot representing Ethiopia. As we get to see another of the competitors, Usoro Ruth from Nigeria. Kuala Mafi Yasmin. Razana Mandrosu from Madagascar. They've got some very long names there. What was the length of her jump? You should be seeing that on the screen very shortly. That looks like her third jump for the night. As we get to see the representative from Burkina Faso, Sawadogo at line. Sawadogo. Strong sprint. The white flag is up. So the jump is legal. Sawadogo. Born on the 7th of November 1999. Only 25 years old. Ladies and gentlemen. Competing in her first African Games. At line Sawadogo. We're going to be seeing a lot of live action later this evening. Still to come, we are going to be seeing uh, the women's uh, 400 meters hurdles uh, heat number one, the women's 400 meters hurdles are uh, heat number two, the men's uh, 400 meters hurdles are uh, final. It reminds me so much this one of a certain Zambian called Sabo Matete all of those uh, years ago. The men's pole vault final is also coming up later today. We're also going to be having the women's uh, 200 meters semi final one and women's 200 meters semi final two. And then, of course, there's also going to be the men's semi-final one and men's semi-final two. And, of course, the men's semi-final three and the women's are 200 meters. And then we're going to be having the women's 1,500 meters round number one. The women's discus final is also coming up. We get to see the star list for the women's 400 meters hurdles. Sita Subri from Burkina Faso. We'll be leading this one. Let me run you through the athletes who are on the star list at this point. Heat number one, women's 400 meters hurdles. Sibiri Sita, representing uh, Burkina Faso. Christelle Angunu from Cameroon. In four, Samantha Joseph. 
In lane number five, Galu Tasema from Ethiopia. In lane number six, Patorini Flora Saint from uh, Congo Brazzaville. And then in lane number seven, Dagnao Tijist Ayana representing Ethiopia. The athletes all set and good to go. The athletes all set and good to go. A pretty interesting set of athletes who are going to be competing in the very first heat. Take out Christelle Angunu, who is probably the veteran in this race at 32. And there's quite a number of young athletes in there. Sibiria Sita is only 19. She just celebrated her 20th birthday, born on the 7th of March 2004. And then there's a Samantha Joseph from the Republic of South Africa, who was born in 2000 on the 22nd of April. So she's only 23. Tasema Gallo is only 19 coming into this one. Same as Dagnao, teaches Ayana, who is also 19. They're at least all set. They're at least all set. And waiting instructions from the officials. It's Sibiri in two, and Gunu in three, Joseph in four, Gallo in five, Patroni in six, and Dagnao in seven. Who makes it out of the very first 400 meters hurdles for the women in the first race on the tracks this afternoon? Will they be the Bokinabe, the Cameroonian, the South African, the Ethiopian, the Congolese, or the Ethiopian? It's the first of three heats in a woman's 400 meters hurdles. A bit of a hold up before the start of this. The South African, Joseph Rogel Samantha, already down on her seat. Clearly doesn't look like this race is going to be starting in the next few seconds. She would have been out by now. Must be something probably holding this up. But I was telling you earlier on, is a three heats. Another woman's 400 meters hurdles. As the athletes find their way to the starting blocks. And looking for the signal to start. It's going to be a long evening for the next three hours. Some of the races that we'll be looking forward to later this evening. The semi-final of the women's are 200 meters. Three semi-finals. The first two qualify automatically to the next stage of the competition. And then two of the fastest losers also make it to the final. It's going to be the same with the men as well. There'll be Ghanaian interest in there. And I'm sure the fans who would be making their way here this evening will be hoping that it will be a day for Ghana. Just like it was yesterday, Ghana only just missing out on the gold medal for the men's 4x100 and doing just about enough. And the women's 4x100 to win a bronze. It was always going to be the Nigerians who will be dominant on the tracks. And they've lived up to the billing, winning the gold medal in the men's 4x100 and the gold medal in the women's 4x100. And winning, of course, the 100 meters hurdles. Toby Amuzan leading Nigeria to glory in both races, winning the 100 meters hurdles for the women and leading the Nigerian 4x100 meter relay team to win gold. Fence has shown me in our makeshift studio here at the University of Ghana as we bring you a lot more live action from the tracks. There's got to be something major that has caused this delay. The athletes have been waiting to start for the last three, four minutes. It looks like whatever the issues are have been shorted. 
So the athletes go down on your mark, set, and off they go. There's a first of three. Heats number one, who wins 400 meters headles. Sibiri clearly struggling with us. The young Bokinabi, she's only 19 years old. This will be a massive experience for her, her first ever African Games competition. But it's Angunu from Cameroon in the lead here as they go into the final stretch. Angunu from Cameroon, the most experienced of the law, 32 years of age. She's been around the African circuit for a number of years. One more head -o. and she's true. Have a look at the time. A little over 56 seconds. We'll get a confirmation of the winning time very shortly. Angunu of Cameroon, Cristel Angunu, winning heat number one. We'll get a confirmation of how these athletes are fared very shortly. As we recap what transpired, Angunu taking the lead at the bend. And she's been leading all the way to the finish line there. South African Joseph Samantha finishing in second position. So surely those two would have qualified automatically to the next stage of the competition. And of course for all the other athletes, especially the third in the race. It will be a look at the clock that would ultimately determine whether she gets to qualify for the next stage of the competition or the otherwise. We'll have a look at the star list for heat number two as we get a confirmation of the results. So it's Linda Cristel Anguno of Cameroon in a time of 56.94, Joseph Rogel of South Africa in 58.12, and then it's Sita Sibiri, the younger Bokinabi, also qualifying there. Well done to her. Ghanaian interest in this one, Hamidou Asana in lane number three in heat number two. I'll be running through the list of athletes competing in this one very shortly. So it's Kamanjira Ashley Tinashe from Zimbabwe in lane number two. Hamidu Asana in lane number three. Kuala Fatumati in lane number four. Nura Enadi of Morocco in lane number five. And then is uh, Yoninge Carolina Jamba Zaki in lane number six. Bukli Emebet Ketel of Ethiopia in seven. And there's Nyagisira Vanis of Kenya in eight. That's right, Kwame. The heat number two of the women's 400 meter hurdles. The hurdles event has become uh, a bit of an attraction now, looking at the way they have uh, set records in recent Olympic Games in the men's with Kasten Warholm and Ryan Benjamin, the women, Sydney McLaughlin, as well as. Uh, Delilah Muhammad, who held the previous world record. Sydney McLaughlin, 50.68. That world record was set at Hayward Field in Eugene, in Oregon, for the, uh, the World Athletics Championships. The African record, on the other hand, is actually held by Moroccan Bidouani, set in 1999. It's 52.90 seconds. The African Games record is a further two seconds away from the African record, and that's held by Jaber Adam, 54.93. And that record in itself was set back in 2007. So a good 17 years ago. So it's been a, a mighty. Uh, it's been a record that has been standing for quite some time now and uh, 
for a lot of these athletes, it will not just be about winning, obviously. It's also about trying to see if they can set the record. But uh, just winning alone, uh, it's significant enough. And I can see that Zimbabwe's Ashley Tinashi Kaman Guerrera, uh, out in lane number one, is trying her luck in this as well. And she... has uh, shown herself to be multi-talented and uh, it's one of those events that it can be very tricky to negotiate because for some athletes you count the specific number of hurdles or spe specific number of steps before you take each hurdle and you miss that and you have to maintain a certain consistency and speed over each hurdle mm. the moment you start to lose that then you start to lose a bit of a grip on your speed and that's how Sydney McLaughlin trained to break that new world record or to set that new world record in Eugene she kept watching Edwin Moses videos that's right so training for a women's event watching men's videos it's uh, it's incredible. I mean, for any of you competing in events like this, uh, you, you need some skill to be getting over these, you know. And there they go. So for he two. And I mentioned the Zimbabwean Kanangirira. She's an African Games bronze medalist in this event. Kanangirira. So she is uh, in lane one. There she is in Jesse number 653. And she's already competed in the women's 100 meters hurdles as well. She did. So, but it's the Moroccan that has gone out really strong, Nura Enadi. And Nura Enadi is running really well as well. So, uh, you can't underestimate her. And she's going to win this by a mile. Nora Enadi, the Moroccan, and she's won it. 56.90 seconds is the winning time for the Moroccan. Nora Enadi, a 25 year old, is two times Francophone Games winner, and she's also African Games bronze medalist. So She made well, a so really easy. great run. The Kenyan yeah. also coming to in second. A good one for the Kenyan as well to pick uh, the uh, is a Zimbabwe actually. Come and Guerrera, I beg your pardon. To pick the second slot, 59.79 seconds. And then Hamidou Asana of Ghana finishing third, 59.98 seconds to take that third automatic qualifying slot. Remember that the first three in each heat will qualify to the final of the women's 400 meter hurdles. There are only two heats. And so now already we know who has qualified for that final. We will get that confirmation for you uh, very shortly. But uh, the 400 meter hurdles last time out was uh, there is the confirmation and are they going to and uh, you see also the full list of those who have qualified Nura and are they qualified fastest 56.88 and uh, Anguna Christel of Cameroon coming to in second Joseph Rugel of South Africa, Kenya's Nyogisera Vanis is also to Sita Sibiri of Burkina Faso is to Tejasayana of Ethiopia is to Ashley Tanashka and Guerrera is also to Amido Asana of Ghana also through as well. All well for local interest, I'm sure a lot of these fans will be happy to see a Ghanaian make it to the final. So definitely, all of them will be in the 400 meter women's final.
On your screen now is the uh, men's Hamacho final. That's Mint is not a baby of Ethiopia. That is his second attempt. His first attempt was 42.75. And he's currently ranked number seven. By that show, the lead belongs to the Egyptian. El Gamel Mustafa, no real surprise there. El Gamel Mustafa. He's the defending champion. 72.50 meters was what, what uh, he chewed the last time out to uh, to win the title. And Egypt actually had a clean sweep of first, second, and third at the last African Games in Rabat. Exactly. And uh, it's El Gamel who's here to defend his title. And he's currently in the lead after throwing 71.38 to snatch the lead. One of the most experienced in the team that has also made it to the final. He's 36 years old. He's been around for long. And here is Mohsin of Tunisia. His first throw was 67.21. He's currently in second place. The Tunisian. Anani Mohsin. It looks like an interesting list of uh, representatives in the uh, final. There are two Egyptians uh, in the uh, final. Uh, there's an Ethiopian, there's a Kenyan, there's someone from Seychelles, Mauritius, Tunisia, and South Africa. So that Anani Machine second throw was a no throw. And now coming island of south africa currently in third position 67 05 what has he done here it's a really good throw from the south african that is a huge huge throw from uh, coming island currently in third place that one counts unfortunately that one counts well that's a big letdown isn't it very that one counts unfortunately so that's also a foul throw. But he's still in second, uh, in third place. Uh, they would have six attempts in this hammer throw. And the. Uh, the women's uh, long jump is also is also ongoing concurrently on the sidelines. I'm sure the visuals will switch to that. But it's got very interesting representation from Nigeria. It's the Commonwealth Games defending champion or the Commonwealth Games champion, Essay Brume, who has taken the lead after her first attempt, 6.92 meters. It's her first jump. Uh, she's got her uh, compatriot Ruth Usoro, who won, who won the women's triple jump title, also competing in the women's long jump. So it could be shaping up to be an interesting rivalry. But here's Ahmed Tariq, the other Egyptian that you mentioned in the men's hammer throw. He's currently in fourth place, 62.74. He's got a white flag, so that would count. Let fly and then let out a big scream. What has he thrown here? It looks decent. Oh no. Well, that one counts. That's his third attempt, so he's got to be careful. I'm at Tariq. The athletes and the official conferring a bit. The Egyptian thought he had done this legally. 
the officials disagree and pointing out to him what exactly he's done wrong there. Ishmael Ahmed Tariq. He's an African under 20 champion. He's also a Youth Olympic Games bronze medalist. Ahmed Tariq, so he's a contender for a medal at least. And uh, surely he would expect that much from himself. Hamatro is a, uh, it's a big, it has a big history in uh, in Egypt because the Egyptians and that's why it's no surprise that an Egyptian holds the African record yeah and that African record belongs to the man currently in contention for another gold medal Mustafa El Gamel he's been drawing for a long time Mustafa El Gamel set that record back in 2014 in Cairo Egypt my understanding is that it's a very popular sport in those parts. And quite a number of these are big Egyptians, just like we're seeing him, take to the sport and not surprised that he's come through the ranks and he's putting on a show here in the final. He's clearly unhappy with that throw and that call by the officials, but he's got other opportunities coming up. This is only his second throw, so he should have a number of throws still to go. It's still unclear what exactly went wrong with that throw. That was his third attempt, Ishmael Ahmed Tariq, which has been flagged off. Uh, but a bit of confirmment happening. I was talking about El Gamel Mustafa. He's a two times African champion. I witnessed him win his first championship title in Asaba in 2018. Six long years ago. But Tariq is a uh, well, the officials and the athletes are still conferring. The Egyptian seems to be very sure he did the right thing and he's in a long conversation with the officials who are still trying to explain to him what exactly has gone wrong for Tariq. And it's holding up other throws as well. It is. It is. Yeah, He's so adamant he didn't go over the line. <laughs> well. Thank you very much, Joshua, for the introduction. Ishmael Ahmed Tariq has kind of giving up hasn't he protesting and now we can continue throwing right now is the heat of the uh, well the final a big padding of the men's 400 meter hurdles gora lidunkule of south africa abdul malik of algeria is in the list as well and you've got uh, Victor Bonye of Botswana in lane three. Wiseman Mukobe of Kenya in lane four. Hinti Saad of Morocco in lane five. Cameron Tisang of Botswana in lane six. Democrati El Mehdi in lane seven. And Sidibe Usman in lane eight. A long-standing record of Ali Diaba of uh, Senegal, 48-03. He's been standing since 1987. That was a mighty 37 years ago. All those years in Kenya. 37 years. And the African record is held by your favorite Samuel Zambian, <laughs> Samuel Matete. 47 Point one zero for the world record belonging to the Norwegian Kasten Vorham 45.94 that is a lofty lofty record to beat 
Vahom has coming in leaves and bounce in the last two three years absolutely and he's only getting better the flying Viking setting all kinds of records in the sport in the last few years and he's still quite young he's got a lot of years ahead of him and he's still to even do better in the coming years no doubt absolutely no doubt about that we get a confirmation of the start list of that final again Gorali Dinkule from South Africa in one Abdul Malik Lalulu of Algeria in two and Twang Victor Bonye from Botswana in three Bukobe Weissman from Kenya in four Hinti Saad of Morocco in five Tisang Kamorena in six so there are two Botswanans in the final Demokrati El Mekdi in Morocco in, from Morocco in seven and then there's Osman Sidibe from Senegal in eight so they're going on to their max now there will be a new champion of the men's 400 meter hurdles a new champion to replace abdul malik lahulu of algeria who is not in this final And they're away now, the final of the men's 400 meter hurdles. Be on the lookout for the Botswana. Komaran Tisang has gone out very strong in the first 100 meters there. Incredible headling from him in Jesse number 66. Look at that, really strong run from him. On the inside, the Moroccan Hinti Saad is also running confidently. There's an Algerian in the inside, Lehul Abdul Malik. I beg your pardon, the defending champion is in this race so there he is in the green oh what a mix up my apologies there he is certainly looking to defend his title but it's not going to be him it's going to be hinti a new champion on the 400 meter hurdles will go to morocco hinti incredible hurdling patient bided his time and when it was time to break out he did and he prostrates and thank his almighty Allah and what makes this even more impressive is that he's fasting while oh, well. running this impressive impressive victory in the men's 400 meter hurdles a new champion a really good Silver medal as well for the Botswana in lane three. That's Victor Bonye, his teammate Kamaran Tisang, who went out really strong at the beginning. Doesn't even look like he finished in the podium places, but great victory for Hinti Saad of Morocco. He takes the gold medal in the men's 400 meter champion. The defending champion, Lehulu of Algeria, does not even get a medal. That is how incredible this race was. Phenomenal hurdling. That was a brilliant finish there from Hinti Saad. I mean, with 100 meters to go, he appeared to be pretty much in fourth and position. And it's a new national record, 48-82. He knew he had to run really strong. So, two Botswana out in the podium, 50-09, just pipping Weissman Mukobe. It was that close in the finish for the bronze medal. It reminds me so much of what transpired in the men's 4x100 yesterday, where Ghana lost out by just two. 0 0.02 seconds <laughs> and this two micro seconds then this was one oh well what a way to win the bronze medal for your nation so Botswana finishing in uh, two and three with two men on the podium in the 400 meter hurdles that was an incredible race but Hinti saw a deserved victory for him the defending champion surprisingly as I said, that's not even finished in the podium. He had to take something special to win this, and he did. A new national record for Hinti Saad adding to his collection. Incredible. And he's An only African Games champion old. now.
21 years of age, Henty Saad, phenomenal, phenomenal victory for the Moroccan. Well done to him again. I mean, to see young athletes come through the ranks like this and put in performances at a very high level like this says a lot about what he might do in the years to come. Well done to the Moroccan. And he's the Moroccan national champion as well as the two times champion of the Francophone Games. And he's added an African Games title to his credentials. We still get to see some pictures are from the hammer. Means it's not a baby from uh, Ethiopia. We wait to see whether there will be a confirmation of his third attempt. Well, that's confirmed. 46.71. Not in contention for a medal at this point. Only good enough for seventh position. This is uh, Tunisia's uh, motion. Anani Moshing is currently in second place. This is his third attempt, 67.21. From his first draw, has put him second. Oh, that is a really good throw. He let her fly. Will that third attempt count? I think it will. <laughs> He's in second position from his first attempt of 67.21. 63.93 is a third attempt. Not quite as good as that first attempt. What he would want is an improvement on the first one and possibly push him in gold medal contention. At this point, he's in the silver medal position. Alan from South Africa, also on his third attempt. He's in the bronze medal position from his very first throw at 67.05. Alan Donald coming. We'll get a confirmation of his uh, throw very shortly. He does not seem pleased with his throw, but we'll wait for a confirmation. Now, that was poor. It is Egyptian Ahmed Chuchu from Ethiopia on Digi. Wits from Seychelles. Mustafa, Mesha, Anani, and coming. All making it to the final. All of them are going to be having up to six attempts to ultimately determine their positions and now we are getting into the semi-finals of the uh, women's 200 a women's 200 this is semi-final one we get a confirmation of the star list there Lugeros Johanna Nambu from Namibia, Mbula from Congo, Kamberuka from Botswana, Bas Bitae Gina Mariam from Gambia. And remember, she's already won the gold medal in the women's 100. Sabele Chwani from Botswana, so two athletes from Botswana. And those one, Jen and Mensah from Ghana, Forehand, Abinu Sawa from Nigeria, and El Hashimi Sara from Morocco. So, heat, semi-final heat one of the women's uh, 200 meters for plays in the final.
That final will be tomorrow evening, the last day of the athletics event. As uh, the heats of this event, the 200 meters was run earlier this morning. So Johanna Nambo, Gavuka of Namibia is in lane two. Nambo of Namibia is in lane one. Gavuka of Congo is in lane two. Obakang Kamburuka of Botswana is in lane three. Gina Bas, the big favorite and defending champion, is in lane four. Chiano Bakani is in lane five. She's from Botswana. Janet Mansa of Ghana is in lane six. There she is in your short. Abinusawa Forehand of uh, Nigeria is in lane seven. And Sarah El Hachimi, a 24 year old national champion, is in lane eight. Meanwhile, the medal ceremony of the men's triple jump is on. Fabrice Zango of Burkina Faso taking the gold medal. And uh, we shall now be quiet. Fabrice Zango is putting Burkina Faso high up their fence. What a talent he is in that triple jump event. He yeah, absolutely is. And Louis joining him on the podium. A very surprised podium finish for the youngster as well. Not a lot of people expected him to finish in the podium places. That's Louis to the left of your screen. Also from Burkina Faso. Obviously inspired by Fabrice. And there is a the bronze medal Gina Bass will be looking forward to possibly doing a double at those years African Games she already won the gold medal in the women's 100 and will be looking to do it again in the women's semi-final she would hope to navigate this one and possibly make it to the final and do a double for Gambia and she's a big favorite to do that. She's the defending champion. That's right. Uh, won that race, 22.58. A new national record then. And she actually beat Mari Jose Talu in that race in 2019 to claim the gold medal in the 200 meters. And uh, Talu won the 100 meters. And Gina Bass finished second. So she uh, already elevated her 100 meters of a medal into a gold medal and here she is trying to defend her 200 meter title not too sure semi final exactly. not too sure exactly why talu is not here but she would have spiced us up a bit still on honeymoon <laughs> <laughs> and off they go the semi-final one of the women's 200 meters zaganes janet mensa has gone out really strong out in lane seven but Gina Baz uh, comes through the bend on the home straight. She's in the lead, a clear lead. Gina Baz is running comfortably. And look at that. It's not even close. But Janet Menz of God has come through to secure second place. And she will be in the 200 meter final. That is the big story of this particular race. Gina Baz was always going to win. But an unlikely second place from the Ghanaian, Janet Menz, means she will be in tomorrow's final but look at gina buzz broke no sweat very calm running composed running body straight up to right and look at that experience that is grace that is lots of years of running at the top level gina buzz 100 meter champion 200 meter champion from three years ago five years ago i beg your pardon and she will be looking to claim the gold again. She is the overwhelming favorite to win the gold medal, Gina Bass. She made it look so easy. She made it look so, so easy. But just like you said, the big story in there, the Ghanaian finishing in second position and putting herself in a position where she gets to compete in the final later tomorrow. But not surprising to see the outcome of this race. 23.42 for uh, Gina Bass. And you see Janet Mensa also qualifying 23.83 in taking the two automatic qualifying slot. Chiani Bakani and her compatriot Obakeng have to wait for the 
rest of the heats, the two remaining heats to see if they qualify. But this is the lineup for heat semi final heat two. And there you see the Nigerian there, Olayin Kalajide won her heat. She also was in that Nigerian quartet that won gold in the 4x100 meter relay last night. You see in lane one there, in the bib number 458 is Haitambu Indawana of Namibia. Sierra Leone's Georgina Cisse is in lane two. Lane three is Olayinka Olajide of Nigeria. Lane four is Patrick Linda Molon of Gabon. Claudine Ingerosua of Madagascar is in lane five. Jason Nyamuhunge of Uganda is in lane six. She won her heat as well. Goret Semedo of Satomi and Principe is occupying in lane seven. And out on the offside lane is Kenya's Esther Mbagari. It's not very often you see a sprinter from Sao Tome and Principe. We've seen a couple of them in this game, so a really good representation. Pretty much a holiday destination, I guess, <laughs> for many people. It's a beautiful country, very beautiful country. So Ranchu the starting list again in the one in one. Sisa in two. Ulajide Ulain Kat Nigerian in three. Pierre Linda Mula in four. Njaraswa in five. Nyamuhange in six. Samedo in seventh. And Mbagari Esther from Kenya in eight. Olajide Olayinka of Nigeria is one of the favorites. And she is she's come of age in the last uh, few months. She's only 21 years of age, Olayinka Olajide. Quite a, quite a number of young athletes in this one as well. And the one from Namibia is only 21. CC is still 19. Pierre Linda is only 22. And then Bagheri Esther is still only 23. They're getting onto their max. Ola Inka, of course, is the bronze medalist from the 100 meters. And they are away for semi final two of the women's 200 meters. Uh, look out for Nigeria's Olainka Olajide, bronze medalist in the 100 meters. There she is, coming through the bend in the lead. She is the favorite to win this heat, and she's not messing around. She's got a bronze medal from the 100 meters. She definitely will look to get another medal in the 200. But also coming in strongly is Linda Morlan of Gabon who seem to have, or appears to have finished uh, in the second place. And that is actually Claudine in Jerosua of Madagascar. She's taking that automatic, that second automatic qualifying slot, finishing in second place. But look at Ola Yinka, graceful running, confident running, the 21 year old. This is her first major championship. And she claimed the bronze medal in the 100 and running like that who is to say that she cannot claim another medal in the 200 why not she got out of the blocks real quick 
as you stroll the through that lineup. And when you have the opportunity of already winning a medal, it gets your confidence to another level if you get to compete in others as well. And she was a part uh, of uh, the 4x100 Nigerian Relay team as well. Yeah, so she's got a gold medal and a bronze medal individually to her name already. An individual bronze and a relay gold. She could possibly go home with another medal from the women's 200. She certainly won heat two of the semi-finals. 23-51. And 23.97, including in Jerusalem, Molan 24.03, finishing in third, is slower than Chwani Bakani 24.01, who finished third. So as he stands, Chwani Bakani is in a really good position to qualify for the final, unless, unless that once that finish third and fourth in the final heat are faster than her it would boil down to the time it would just boil down to the time and i'm sure there's going to be some nervy weight for the athletes out outside the top two this should be over and done with in the next one minute and these athletes would know whether they have done enough to qualify for the final or otherwise they would wait with bated breath this will be another really good heat. It's got very interesting prospects in there. Another Nigerian, Chisom Onyebuchi, a uh, certain 17 year old, is in there. So is Natasha Ngoi Akamabi, the Congolese three time champion. Uh, she's made the final of this event on the African Games as many as four times. Ngoi Akamabi of Congo. She also won her heat earlier this morning. There she is walking to the blocks. She's 30 years of age, so she's vastly experienced. There she is in your short. Ngoi Akamabi. Natasha. A Swaziland's Bongiwe. Mahalela. Sakile is also in there. Asimenya Simwaka of Malawi is also in these hits. Uh, South Africa is Shebangu Benele Whitney. Uh, Whitney Shebangu Benele. There she is on the outside lane. She also ran on the outside lane in a Well, the thing is, these ladies would have seen what would have happened in the first two uh, semi-finals. And would know that they really have to up their game if they are to make it to the final of the women's 200 meters tomorrow. So they are on their max now. He three of the women's... 200 meters. Malasera in one. Sumwanka in two. Onyabuchi in three. Sakile in four. Akamabi in five. Shirley. And they are away in six. Moit is in lane seven. And Whitney Benelli is in lane eight. But look at Akamabi. She has gone out really strong on the bend there. Akamabi, the 30 year old Congolese. She's on the home straight in the lead at the moment. But can she hold on? She looks like she will. Ngoi Akamabi will win hit three. She was not messing around. And there she is. The South African seemed to have just crashed into her a little bit, but uh, she wasn't having it. And she just collapsed onto the Titan track here, being helped out. Being held up by uh, another runner. But I'm um, not sure what happened at the end there for. Uh, Ngoi Akamabi, but she didn't seem happy that uh, I think it was uh, Shelly Nekubi who might have clashed with her a little bit and uh, she just kind of shoved her or pushed her away. But Akamabi has gone out really strong, and by the time she came through the bench, she was in the lead on the home straight, and there was no catching her. But look at that run from Sakile. 
She put together a really good run. Nakubi Shelly, I beg your pardon, the South African in bib number 543. A really impressive come from behind run from her. To come to in second. Okay, so this is what happened at the end. I don't think that was intentional there. Not at all. Not at all. From she wasn't Shelley. even looking. No, not at all. There. So the push was, uh, well, rather unnecessary. But the good thing is, both of them are true. Akamabi alongside Nikibui Shirley. Akamabi doesn't seem to be okay. But uh, also, Malela Bongiwe Sakile, 23.95, is also true. There are the confirmation of the qualifiers. And like I said, Bakani Chuan Sebelio of Botswana also true to the final as the fastest loser. The rest of them all miss out. Tomorrow evening, we'll witness the men's 200 meter final as well as the women's 200 meter finals. And now we will have the semi finals. Well, the men and women's 200 meter final will be tomorrow night on the last day of the athletics. But now, though, we have the small matter of the men's final to be determined. There will be three semi final races to determine that. With the two. The top two finishers in each race automatically qualifying, giving you six athletes. And then the two fastest losers from the three races will join them for a final of eight strong men. And I do know that there's going to be Wanda, former athlete of Ghana, who will be very, very interested in that 200 meters uh, semi-final and possibly final. Imano Tufo, he was here on opening the winning silver in 95 in Harare, competing against Sunday Bada of Nigeria. He would want to see his protégés do well in that race. Also happening uh, now in our short is the women's long jump of the Karim Isaka of Togo. It's a legal jump. Is it a legal jump for her, Isaka? Uh, that was, I beg your pardon, Mohammed Same Ezra of Egypt. 6.52 was that jump. She's currently ranked set. And now will be time for the Moroccan. La Dude Yusra. She's currently ranked number five. Or in position number five. On the side of her is the Nigerian. They say Brume, but he has Yusra. Yusra gets a decent jump in. She doesn't seem too happy about the jump. Two caught from uh, just the tip of the bell. And uh, so she's currently in the fifth position outside of the metal zones. So she would need a big jump. The leader, 6.92, is from S.A. Brume of Nigeria. And that was her very first jump. She's had another jump since then, 6.84. But we're heading back onto the track for the semi final one of the men's 200 meters. Jason Hammond, Noah Jarrell in there as well and then you've got you've got two athletes from Botswana in this as well and that is Mendoza Jason as well as uh, Kevin Goderoni then the Ghanaian Solomon Hammond is in lane two Jason Mendoza is in the uh, Lane one. Lane three is Gary Noah Jurel of Mauritius. In lane four is Claude Emmanuel of, of Cameroon. One is Heat and also running the individual 100 meters. Ekenem Consider of Nigeria was part of the relay gold medal team from yesterday. Gilbert Heinrichor is the bronze medal from the 100 meters from Namibia. 
Kevin Gadroni from Botswana and Adama Jame of Gambia out in the outside lane. So the big favorite in this is Gilbert Heineke of Namibia. Noah Jarrell of Mauritius also tends to run really well. But uh, Claude Emmanuel of Cameroon will also try to make the final after he failed to make the final of the men's 100 meters. Fen, I, I wonder how many athletes Botswana have brought to Ghana. Quite a contingent. It must be a very, very big contingent. They feel their athletes in a lot of races, haven't they? Especially for the track and field. That's Solomon Harmon. He ran Ghana's third leg in the silver medal winning relay event from yesterday. That is uh, Gary Noor Jarrell just gone by and it oh. does appear there's a lot of conversations around whether Solomon could have done a lot better last night <laughs> in that third leg <laughs> you bet you bet you bet I've seen loads of com uh, conversations on social media that third leg for many cost us a gold medal in the final but he would learn yeah So, a bit of a hold up uh, before this. Uh, Each one of the men's 200 meter relays run. And the athletes, I have seen quite a number of the athletes complain about the length of some of the hold up. Some of them. The women's 100 meter hurdles, for example, I've seen uh, Naomi Akakpo of Togo complaining that they spent one hour just waiting in the call room alone. And uh, that kind of is energy sapping. It takes a lot of energy off of the athletes and, uh, and a bit of steam off of them as well. So uh, certainly I'm not sure they love this because they just want to come out here, get the race over with and go home see if they've qualified or not once they get here they don't want to be here waiting for too long absolutely and it does appear there's a regular feature the waiting time i'm sure the athletes would have to look at that again it's mostly on the officials rather than the athletes to be fair sure So they're on their max. Now, I can consider it's the one in the do run. And off they go. This will be a really tight race because only the top two will qualify. The Nigerian Ekanem consider has gone out strongly, so has the Cameroonian Claude Emmanuel. As they negotiate and come to the home straight, it's Claude Emmanuel peeling away, but he can't quite get the lead in. It's Claude Emmanuel finally followed by Ekanem consider. That's the top two. The Cameroonian will be in the 200 meter final. And so will the Nigerian. At some point, it looks like Ekanem Consider was fizzling out. But Claude Emmanuel, with a very unorthodox style of running, his legs swelling all over the place. But look at that powerful finish from Ekanem Consider. And he knew he had to because it was not. A foregone conclusion, even with 10 meters to go. But impressive run from uh, Claude Emmanuel to take the victory, the Cameroonian, and he will be in that final tomorrow. These athletes give it everything until the finish line. Just like you said, it was uh, that close, even with 10 meters to go. They had to go for it. Claude Emmanuel, well done, making it to the final of the competition. Claude Emmanuel of Cameroon. Winning that.
with 20.82 seconds. Ekanim consider 20.92. Arthur Majomea finished third, 21.02. Gilbert Hainuka, who won bronze in the 100 meters, will not be in the final. And that's a strange one. That's a strange one. It's a big disappointment. So that's the confirmation. Claude Emmanuel, great race from him. Ekanem Consider of Nigeria also making it through to the final. Adam and Jamel will have to wait 2102 to see if he makes it to the final. Hainuka only good enough for fourth place. He will be disappointed with us. And it's a great win for Claude Emmanuel. To be fair to him, this is his expert event because in the 100 meters, he didn't make it past the semi final, didn't make it to the final. But Hainuka got a bronze medal in the 100 meters and somehow will not be making the 200 meter final. Here is Ezra with her fifth attempt. She's currently in sixth place. Her longest jump, 6.52. This is another legal jump. But is it good enough to get her into any medal contention? Doesn't appear to be. She's still in sixth position. Good thing for her, though, is that she still has a final opportunity with her last jump. And who knows? These sporting disciplines can be a bit funny. She could have a massive final last jump and then all of a sudden she's in contention for a medal. Absolutely. But here's uh, the Moroccan. Yusra. La dude Yusra. She needs a big jump. Currently in fifth. The jump is good. It's a decent jump, it's a legal jump. But how good is it? This was a really good jump from the Moroccan. That dude used right. Currently in fifth place with her best jump of 6.53. We wait to see. Is 6.00 from Yusra. So that is not better than a 6.53. And uh, so she remains in well, 6.25 is the confirmation, but it's not. Well, he's moved there into fifth place, but still not good enough to get into the medal places. But this is Ruth Usoro. Ruth Usoro is the gold medalist in the triple jump. She She's trying her hands <laughs> in the long jump. Yes, Ruth Usoro currently out of the medal places. She is fourth. Ruth Usoro. And uh, Ruti Soro doesn't quite get a great jump in like she would have expected. And you can see she's not happy with that jump. She's trying to get the jump double, Ruti Soro, and she has to beat her teammate. The Commonwealth Games champion, Ese Brume, who is currently in the lead. As we head back to the track for heat two of the women's two uh, the men's 200 meter heats, the semi-finals. Rutusoro is an NCAA champion, so. She also competed in the long jump in the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, where she finished set. 
and uh, she, she also doubled in the jump in that Commonwealth Games in both the triple jump and the uh, the long jump she didn't get a medal in either of them the NCA a good place to get a lot of experience if you compete regularly for your college yeah but she's an NP NCA double NCAA champion from 2021 in the triple jump but we're back on the track for semi-final two of the men's 200 meters and semi-final two Ghanaian interesting there as well with Joseph Bamoa together with Ibrahim Fusseini in lane three and in lane six Joseph, Joseph Paul Amor ran the ankle left for Ghana in the relay yesterday to get a silver medal. Dominic Lasconi from DR Congo is in lane two. And uh, Fode Sissoko of Mali is in lane one. Wearing the blue bib is Last Corny. It's also Stan Noel of Malawi, as well as Elvis Gasset of Namibia. Marcos Casan Santos run of Angola ran the national record. He was in the same heat as Joseph Paul Amor to finish second. And off they go. They lead the top two, will make it to the final. So there's no messing around here. Joseph Paul Amor has gone out really strong. He's in the lead already as they come to the bend. So he's his countryman, Ibrahim Fusseini. The two Ghanaians in comfortable lead. Joseph Paul Amor is jogging to the finish line. He will win this comfortably. And his teammate, Ibrahim Fusseini, will take the second place. The two Ghanaians will make the final tomorrow night. And they will hug each other. It was an excellently executed race from the two of them, running with two at least sandwich in them, but somehow they found each other in one, two. Big smile for Joseph Paul Amor. It was an excellently executed race. They didn't appear to have exerted too much energy, but that was a really good race from the Ghanaian. He is one of the favorites to win 20.93 seconds. Look at that. At this point, he knew the race was won. And so did Ibrahim Husseini. He also knew he got second place wrapped up. So it was just a drop to the end. And uh, a really good finish from the two of them. So the two Ghanaians will make the final. Ibrahim Husseini finishing 21.03 seconds to qualify automatically. Elvis Gasset of Namibia finished there 21.16. But he will have to wait to find out if his time is fast enough to make the final. And you had a feeling that uh, the two Ghanaians could see their positions, if you like, uh, from uh, the big uh, uh, video screen there. Strolling down towards there, knowing very well that the job was done. The most important thing would be to get a medal of any color when they make it to the final. The final, they have made it. Congratulations to them. We'll be looking forward to the final later on Friday. So we're confirmating of the times that these athletes made. Joseph Paul Amar qualifying with a time of 20.93. Ibrahim Fusseini making it in a time of 21.03. We get a confirmation of the start list of the third semi-final. Star list for the third semi final. Hesbon Odio Ocheng from Kenya in one. Dodin Shari Marius in two. Matsuwenja Subisiso Bruno of Switzerland in three. Ngaguele in Berlina Rafael from Cameroon in four. Samo Chege Waweru from Kenya in five. Akintola Alaba Ulukunle from Nigeria in six. Gi Manganga Gora from Gambia, from Gabon, sorry, in seven. And Kakene. 
Sitali from Zambia in eight. It is also time for the medal presentation for the men's 400 meters. Inti Saad of Morocco running away with the gold medal. Kamorena Tisang winning the bronze medal. The men's 400 meters headles. And he celebrates this one. He looks so happy. Victor Bonnier and Twang from Botswana. Yeah, just concluded that race a few minutes ago. So Botswana with two men on the podium, but neither of them getting the gold medal. That has gone to Hinti Saad, who blazed through in a national record to claim the Hinti Saad, impressive run from him to claim that title. National record 48.82 was the winning time to claim the uh, gold medal. Really, really impressive run from the Moroccan. Thank you, Madam Selby. We'll get to hear the Moroccan now, national anthem very shortly. For the national anthem of Morocco. Congratulations to Hinti Saad of Morocco. The gold medal in the men's 400 meter hurdles. Incredibly executed race, flawlessly executed. He was superlative in the hurdling. Wonderful gold medal for him. Hinti Saad run a new national record in the process. But look at Botswana with two men on the podium. Phenomenal achievement from the Botswana as well. Japan, Vice President, Ghana Athletics. And now we and, uh, we seem really, really the happy with their medal. In the May 200 meters event, semi final three. In lane one, we have. We're heading back Apple onto the track Apple then. Lane three, we have Sibu Siso Bruno de Leswatini. Lane four, Ngagele Berlina. And off they go. The 
200 meters final heat and uh, look at that that is you see in there the Kenyan and the Nigerian coming in strongly the Nigerian is Alaba Alokwile he's running strongly but so is uh, Subisiso Bruno Subisiso Bruno with a late charge but it's the Nigerian Alaba Olokunle Akintola who has taken the win and will be in tomorrow's final he's cooking he said he is cooking but great run from Subisiso Bruno as they came through the bed from Iswatini he looked like he was in the lead but a wonderful come from behind from Alaba Olukunle Akintola to claim the victory he might just have run out of steam there Bruno Subisiso at this point it looked like he was in the lead but a great come from behind victory for Akinzola and Subisiso might not even have gotten third because that second has gone to the Kenyan hasn't it Hensborn Obo has somehow managed to upstage him I think it's the Kenyan Samuel Waweru instead in the inside lane who has come through to claim second and uh, Subisiso Bruno will have to settle for third and he would be very disappointed with the way the race had panned out because it looked like he was running really well until the last 10 meters look at that kid he's having a great time is he not telling you he's celebrating qualification to the final probably thinking well on does that performance maybe i could go to the final and do something and look at those eight that will be in tomorrow's final Claude Manuel, Consider, Amua, Olikule, Jame, Waweru, Fuseini, Bruno. That will be some final to look forward to tomorrow night. The men's 200 meter final. I love it when athletes uh, do a bit of a show off. It, it's, great, it's great for the sport. You know, with these show men and women. Yeah, we've, you we've had both. quite a number. We've had a, quite, quite a number over the years. Boris Green, first to come to mind. Used to show a lot on the track, I recall. Of course, everyone remembers a setting Usain Bolt. Yeah, well. There would be uh, some final tomorrow. So it's all set then for the final of the women, oh, sorry, the final of the men's 200 meters. That will happen tomorrow. The eight men that will contest for the title, Claude Emmanuel, Ekanim Konseda, Joseph Amor, Olo Kunle, Alaba Akintola, Adama Jame, Samo Waweru, Ibrahim Fuseini, as well as uh, Subisiso Bruno of Swaziland. Or Iswatini. It's a packed lineup this particular one tomorrow night. I cannot wait. Two Ghanaians, two Nigerians as well. Uh, that should be some final to look forward to tomorrow. Indeed. Indeed. Many people tipping Joseph Palamo to get a gold medal, but to his countryman, Ibrahim Fuseni himself, is not to be underrated. Not at all. The 22-year-old, actually 21, he will turn 22 in November, Ibrahim Fuseni. Also goes to school in the USA. He is a... That's the start list of the men's a pole vault final. Not too many in our parts. Just four of them. What it means is that only one person wouldn't get a medal. <laughs> That's interesting. That would be painful. Probably we'll get to have our own version of a Mundo du Plantis. Mesdames et messieurs, nous vous introduisons les athlètes. So this is Diallo. Alice, pour cette course de 1500 
Mohamed Dam. So the men's pole vault final currently ongoing in your shot there. Put in just a bit of efforts. Put in just a bit of efforts and you could get a medal. There's just four athletes competing in that final of the men's pole vault. Hendrik Johannes van Vick from South Africa. Megdi Jacques from Algeria. Diallo Abubakar from Mali. And Merasa Abera Alimu from Ethiopia. Pretty, one, pretty much an open one. Scale the heights. And you'll be happy to go away with the medal. Diallo Bubakar from Mali to get this going. Dames et messieurs, cérémonie de remise des médailles. Diallo with his final attempt. Oh no. Trying to scale a height of 4.90. But not successful with that. No. The technique was not the greatest. The technique, no, the greatest there. A sport pretty much dominated by two legends. One an oldie, one a youngie. Sergei Bobka dominated the sport for many, many, many years. And a young Swede, Armand Duplantis, taking the sport to another level. Yeah, Mundo de Plantis is not human. <laughs> it's, uh, it's unbelievable the lengths this kid has gone to. And uh, he just competes against himself every single championship. Everybody just drops by the wayside and he just keeps jumping. I wonder what it feels like competing against an athlete like that. You're only good enough for second place. <laughs> 6.23 meters. That's crazy. <laughs> it's ridiculous. The African record belongs to Brit of South Africa, set in 1995, and even that's been hard to break. He also holds the African Games record, and the African record is 6.03. The Games record is 5.40. And uh, the last Games, the pole vote, the men's pole vote event was won by Hisham Khalil Chirabi of Algeria. And uh, he is not at his championships. However, the Amarwan Medi, also of Algeria, who won the bronze medal from five years ago is currently in this lobby 
Burada. So anyway, let's see the jump of the Senegalese. Malian Bubaka Diallo oh, yes. and he's cleared it 4.90 impressive and his third attempt of asking third time of asking Diallo the Malian champion has sailed over this bar and he clenches his fist because he knows that was close. And the adrenaline must have been pumping real hard. Remember, the only four athletes competing uh, in the men's pole vote, which means that only one of these four will not get a medal. You don't want to be that person. How painful that will be. How painful that will be for the athlete who is going to be missing out. So Abubakar Diallo has cleared 4.90. And... Uh, The Algerian Amarwana Mehdi will attempt 4.90 meters, of course. I, I just wonder how many attempts he's made at this height. Looks very highly concentrated for this one. He would know that any good enough performance could at least win him at least a minimum of a bronze. Mekdi Jax Amarwana from Algeria. It does appear the height has been scaled up just a little bit. If all of these athletes have done 4.90, it might just be scaled up. Probably 4.95. Mekdi of Algeria are poised for action. It is great to still see the fans coming in. It's been a wonderful atmosphere the last three days at the Legon Stadium. Looks like Medi has been given the all clear to attempt this height. Can he do this? Mekdi at a height of five. Oh yes! Impressive clearance at 5.0 from Medi. He made it look so easy. He does look easy. And Mehdi has not even, this is his first attempt at jumping. He skipped all the previous heights and he's gone straight at 5.0 and it made it look so easy. So easy, Mehdi. Okay, so we have the start list of the women's uh, 1,500 meters. So that's the 1500 meter heat. And that will be contested by uh, Lilian Odira of Kenya, Ariela Harimana of Burundi, Mishisha Harut of Ethiopia, Ronke Akambi of Nigeria, Mary Ekuru of Kenya, Kagbo Jane of Sierra Leone, and Bessie Bikile 
of Ethiopia and Uganda's Knight Achiru. That shout in the stadium, I'm sure, emanating from the pole vault uh, competition. That's turning out to be some sight for those inside the stadium. Uh, uh, much less. Uh, excited crowd compared to what we've witnessed from the first three days i'm sure pretty much everyone is waiting for the final day on friday especially that men's 200 meter final absolutely with many of Ghanaians wanting to come see their countrymen lift medals here and there tonight's session will conclude with a four by 400 meter relay heat women and men and that's an event where nigeria botswana as well as kenya will renew rivalries one of those races where i think botswana might just uh, edge it well we all thought that was going to happen in the mix didn't we until nigeria exactly. picked them on the line <laughs> so I am holding every prediction to my chest right now because the Nigerians have shown they've got great heart, but they're underway. The heat one of the 1,500 meter women. Pretty much a Kenyan, Ethiopian, or Eritrean territory with those events. Odira Lillian representing Kenya. Leading them out on the front, of course, is uh, Jean Kagbo of Sierra Leone. Uh, obviously, not going to be one of the favorites, but she's taking an early initiative, but uh, she's quickly relinquished it to Ariella Harimana of Burundi. So, there's seven of them out there. It's always a good time to remind you of who the big favorite is in this race and uh, be on the lookout for Lilian Odira of Kenya she's an 800 meter specialist and she's uh, going for the 1500 she made the final of the African Games uh, in the past so she would fancy her chances and look at the thing with the Kenyans and the Ethiopians is that they, they run these races in a very, very tactical manner. Absolutely. The Nigerian has taken the lead right about now, Ronke Akambi. How much longer can she continue to be in the lead? Uh, look at the two Ethiopians. Herut Meshasha as well as uh, Bekila Mbesu. Two more laps to go. Doing the last lap in a time of 1 minute 11.60 seconds. Uh, and Nigerian is still keeping strength out in the front. Akambi. She might just be beginning to tire out here as you see. The Kenyan coming across to take back. That's a Kiru Mary or Mary Ekuru. But she's not relinquishing the lead, is she? Not at all. Not at all. Ronke Akambi from Nigeria still leading this one. But watch out for what would happen in the final lap. Once the Ethiopians and the Kenyans surge ahead like they have right now you bet you are going all out for it yeah it's all setting up very nicely indeed Hirut Beshasha is a well indoor bronze medalist 
is an African Games champion, so the Ethiopian, big favorite as well, Hirut Mishasha. And there she is, out on the front, Hirut Mishasha, quickly pursued by her compatriot as well, the Ethiopians, Ambesu. And uh, as we approach the last lap and the finish line, it is uh, Meshasha, the indoor bronze medalist. But watch out for the Kenyan coming out strongly because uh, Akuru Mary, Mary Akuru, will come through for the second. The race will be won by Harut Meshasha and her compatriot coming through in third as well, Bekile Ambezu. But what a great run in the end for Mary Akiru to take the second place just behind the Ethiopian and uh, Mary Akiru, very highly rated 24 year old athlete from uh, Kenya. She's not got a lot in her name, the 23 year old, but uh, she'll be happy that she made the final and will be looking forward to possibly getting a medal, but a great, great run from Hayarut Mishasha. 4.14.41 to qualify. Akira Mary in second. 4.15.02 is also true. So our uh, Bikile Ambesu, as well as Naita Asiru of Uganda, and Ronke Akambi of Nigeria, 4.27.63. She has also punched her ticket to tomorrow's final. Remember that the first four in each heat will qualify. There are only two hits plus two fastest losers. Ronke Akambi of Nigeria starting very, very strongly. But you just knew that these Ethiopians and Kenyans very, very tactical at all of these uh, events from 800 to 10,000 are very, very tactical about it. You start the first two laps and before you know it, they go past you. Absolutely. And uh, I believe this is the medal ceremony for the women's long jump final. The two Nigerians on the podium. The undisputed winner, of course, is S.A. Brume in the middle there but the bronze medal for Ochonogo Pristina so another two medals for Nigeria impressive indeed Pristina Ochonogo 6.67 meter jump and the silver medal went to Marthe Koala of Burkina Faso 6.81 meters that is now Three medals for Burkina Faso in the jump in both the men and women. They also picked a triple jump gold and bronze for the men. And they've picked a silver medal in the women's long jump as well here. Looks like Zango has taken the interest in the jumps in Burkina Faso to another level. from Nigeria. The Commonwealth Games champion, S.A. Brume, is also African Games champion, S.A. Brume, 6.92 meters, came from her very first jump, and she did not need a longer jump to claim this particular title. She's won it comfortably, and of course, she has now successfully defended the title that she also won in Rabat in 2019. 6.69 meters on that occasion. And this time as well, 6.92 to claim the gold medal. And we get to see how the three ladies did it. 
with the long jump just about an hour ago and that's the Bokinabi Kuala Mafi with a jump that one had the silver medal 6.81 she gave it absolutely everything this was a jump that won her that silver medal with a jump of 6.81 And this is Essie Brumer, and they jumped that one head of gold in 6.92. It was a very fast jump as well. Impressive victory. African Games champion, two time African Games champion now, Essie Brumer, and a Commonwealth Games champion. Great to see another Nigerian doing this well in the ladies' long jump. You'd have to go all the way back to 1996 in Atalanta in the United States where a young Chioma Ajunwa won the gold medal in that sport. Very good. So congratulations to them. So another two medals for Nigeria. This is uh, another West African domination. As we get ready for the second heat of the women's 1500 and interestingly Halima Nakai, the former world 800 meter champion and also at these very games, silver medal in the 800 meters, has opted to go for the 1500 meters. The Ugandan, there you see, there she is in the yellow jersey. So this will be really interesting to see how she comes to this particular race. She's world champion in the 800 meters. And there they go from 2019, Halima Nakai. She was pipped to the uh, 800 meter gold medal by the Ethiopian, the Guma. But she's looking for redemption in 1500. It's not the race she's very much used to. So it'll be interesting to see how well she does. There's also Ethiopia's Howie Abara. She's in this uh, race as well. Angola's Joanna Nguve. Odette Sawakua of Benin is also in there. Lydia Lagat of Kenya. Y Uganda's Nakai Halima, the aforementioned. Eritrea has Rosa Sali in there. And there's boy Femi Belvia. Also in there as well. That's how we are bearer out in the lead there. She's the only Ethiopian running in this race and she's not taking any chances, no teammate to depend on. So she's taking matters very much into her own hands. She needs to. And uh, she's not going to wait for anyone to come and rescue her. Abera Howie. And have all of those communications as to what to do on every single lap. Yeah, Lydia Lagat is also running alone, the Kenyan. So she herself will also need to take matters into her own hands. So remember though that the first four will all automatically qualify to yeah. the final and then there will be another fast loser joining them. Already one fastest loser has qualified. Lydia Lagat Geruto, 21 years of age. Howie Abera is a, uh, a world cross country silver medalist, so she is a bit of an expert in the road running. Yeah, 
in the truck as well. She ran last year, 4.06.15 uh, clocking at the Moor International Sports Centre in Kasarani, Nairobi last year. So, but here they go up in the ante. Halima Nakai is keeping up very much so what Howie Abera Lydia Lagarde is also in the mix. This is getting exciting as they approach the That's Howie Abera still in the lead. But Lydia Lagarde is coming to Lagarde is gone past Halima Nakai who's keeping up with them. This is going to be really fast as they approach the last 200 meters or so coming on to the home straight it is Howie Abera the world cross country silver medal is running really well but uh, Lydia Lagarde is trying to get on the inside but Abera is not gonna let her pass Abera peels away and wins he two of the 1500 meters Lydia Lagarde settles for a second Halima Nakai comes through in third. It's an impressive third for her. She's through to tomorrow's final as well. So that's... Uh, this, was a, this was a very, very tight finish indeed. They kind of just up the ante, peeled away from the rest of the, the squad. You can tell the difference between these middle distance experts and Halima Nakai who is naturally an 800 meter runner is trying her hands on uh, the 1500 but Eritrea's Rosa Sali also did really well for 2015 she's also true to tomorrow's final Howie Abera will be happy to have made it to the final look at those strides in that final 100 meters. Clearly running a very smart race. It was always going to be between her and Lydia Lagat from Kenya. The two making it to the final next year. And that's a list of the athletes who have made it to the final later those a week. Boshesha, Mary, Ambeshu, Knight, Howie Abera, Quite a number of them, up to 12 of these athletes making it to the final. We're still getting to see pictures of uh, the men's uh, hammer. Alan coming of South Africa, still in third place with a throw of 67.57. We get to see the Tunisian Anani Moussen in second position in 67.71. And who's won gold in the hammer? We should see a confirmation of that as well very shortly. It looks like the Egyptian El Gamel Mustafa has won this with a throw of 73.65. Well done, El Gamel Mustafa. And that's another gold medal for Egypt, making it 93 gold medals for Egypt at the 13th African Games. Absolutely ridiculous. Well, no surprises there. Successfully defended his title. The two-time African champion. He was and is the undisputed king of the hammer throw on the continent. He has the African record as well. And uh, surely Mustafa El Gamel claiming another gold medal for himself and for his country. It's stunning the number of gold medals they've won in Accra. Yeah, they have three times <laughs> as many gold medals as the team in second place, which is Nigeria, in terms of gold medals. But we will head back onto the track for the heat of the men's 1500 meters. And there will be two heats in this. Heat one is made up of 11. Well, this is heat one. It's made up of 11 athletes. 
we go to the list now. Jim Du, Jim Du of Burundi, RDC Chala of Ethiopia, Brian Koming of Kenya, Salim Abu Manyanja of Uganda, Riyad Shinini of Tunisia, Belashu Asefa of Ethiopia. So Asefa is in there, Mohamed El Juni is also in there as well as Calvin Chiku, Zimbabwe, Eighth Mani, Mahmoud, Mauritania, Abraham Thorne, South Sudan, Kali Sise, Sierra Leone. Mohamed Al Juni, of course, is of Libya. The first four in each heat will qualify to the final and the next four fastest will join them in the final. There's a bit of a warm up. We get a confirmation of the, the athletes who are going to be doing heats number one, and the men's are 1500. Jean Didi Butoy from Burundi, and then Shala Wengene Adisu, Brian Komen from Kenya, Salim Abu Manyanya from Uganda, Riyad Chinini from Tunisia, Belachao Zanebe Asefa from Ethiopia, Alala Mohamed El Juni from Libya. Kelvin Chiku from Zimbabwe, Mahmoud and Matni from uh, Mauritania, Abraham Thorne from South Sudan, and it's Kali Sise from Sierra Leone. On your max. And off they go. Brian Coleman. Already looking to have a hard start in this one. Well, Jean Didi of Burundi appears to be in the lead right about now. One hundred meters short of a four-lap race. And there's only the first lap. So after this, they've got three more laps to complete this. The first four qualify automatically. And then it will boil down to the times. The fans encouraging these athletes to give up their very best. Jean Jadieu of Burundi in the lead at this point. But Abraham Thorne of South Sudan trying to get himself in the lead. You bet this is going to be one of those tactical races. Watch out for Adisu again, inshallah. And Bela Chuzan are safer. By the time we do navigate. 1,100. So it's one lap at a time. Jean Jedi Butoy of Burundi leading the park at the spot. But it does appear he's falling a little behind. But Abraham Thorne of South Sudan. Looking to take the lead. Just a little over 800 meters done. And the two Ethiopians, Bela Charles and Ebe Asefa, and Adisu Wengene Chala, and the lead at this point. A 
And we should get a signal from the bell at this point. So that's the final lap. Yeah, it's going to get chaotic very, very shortly. And that is, is uh, Adisu Chala in the lead at the moment with his teammate. And the teammate you see there is uh, Bella Chua But it is Brian Coming of Kenya who is taking the initiative. And he says, I'm going. Come on. And uh, that's what it's going to be. He has laid down the gauntlet. Will the Ethiopians step up to the plate? It's only the heat. It's not a final, but they will not let it happen. Now look at Chala. Chala is coming after him. Chala wants to win this. Oh, Chala wants to win it, but oh my, Brian Coming is almost toying with him. And he ensures that he kept that lead to win each one of the men's 1500 meters. The final is going to be absolutely bonkers. Well, I'm not Look at sure. that. What is he doing? <laughs> Brian Coming. Look, and he's thinking, okay, looks like I've done enough to qualify. And he's looking at him. He said, what are you doing? Come on. Come on. You want to beat me? Come Go on. on. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't care. It's the heat. Come on, man. It's not a final. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Coming. So he finished second. 347.58. The first position at DC Chala, 347.45 to automatically qualify. Zenebe Belashu Asefa is also through, and so is Riyad Chanini of uh, Tunisia. He's also qualified to the final. The defending champion in this event is another Kenyan, George. Manangoy, 338.27 from Rabat. Two Kenyans actually finished on the podium in Rabat five years ago. So that's the confirmation. 347.45 for Chala. Brian Coming, 347.58. Belichu Asefa also qualifying. Kelvin Chiku did not start. This is the E2, Ami Sambo of Nigeria, Waberi, Germa, Kepsang, Giriam, Abdel Latif, Diara, Yobel Zurit, Musa Gala, Ronald, and Ahmed. All starting in this E2. The first four automatically qualify, plus the four fastest losers. They would warm up a bit before the start of the race. Yeah, at least being cold to get into position. For the start of heat number two for the men's 1500. Doesn't look like there's much of Ghanaian interest in the middle and the middle uh, distance uh, events. Not at all. They did have one in the uh, main ten thousand. William Amponsa, who ran the new national record in the process to finish fit, uh, but uh, uh, it's uh, the long, the middle, or the middle and long distance events are not particularly the uh, forte of the West Africans. They so favour a bit more of the sprint, the East African specialty. This event, Kenya, Nairobi, Eritrea, Uganda, Ethiopia, Eritrea. Obviously, the high altitude in those parts yeah. makes it and, a lot uh, easier for them. The North Africans too, have especially Moroccans and Tunisians, and Algerians. I beg your pardon. Egyptians don't bother. No, about this all. event at all. They are more field events. That's right. The so. Ethiopians are uh, pretty much the dominant uh, elite in there. But the Moroccans, like you did say, together with the Algerians as well, have some history 
for these kind of uh, events. Hisham El Garouj dominated the men's 1500 for many years. And the likes of Nuruddin Mosali from Algeria. Yeah, he's actually uh, Hisham El Garouj. He's uh, the current uh, world record holder. He said that 326. Many years ago. Yeah, it's, it was in the in Rome in 1998 at the Stadio Olimpico 26 years ago <laughs> and that also obviously happens to be the African record one phenomenal runner but the African Games record was set at, at a few further years back in 1978 in old years by a setting by of Tanzania Meanwhile, the men's pole vote, that's uh, Algeria's Amar Rouhani Mehdi. It appears he's clearing incredible heights there. Have a look. Oh, that was an impressive jump for Rouhani Mehdi. I think he was uh, attempting 4.90. Will be interesting to see how many jumps he's made, how many heights he's cleared. Sorry. Yeah, that was 5.30. Oh, wow. I just got the confirmation now that he just cleared. So, 5.20. And 5.30, he's cleared both of them. He wanted to know what he had cleared. He cleared 5.00. And then opted not to go for 5.1, then went for 5.20 and cleared it on the second attempt, and then went after 5.30 and cleared it on the second attempt as well. So as it stands, Ruana Medi is in the lead in the men's pole vote. Some confidence performance there. Followed by Bubaka Diallo of Mali in the silver medal position, and Ethiopia's Abera Alemu. Having cleared 4.0 is in the bronze medal position. The South African Valko van Vick has failed out. So, as it stands, it's Juan Medi for the gold. Bubakar Diallo has also cleared out. So, it's just Juan Medi who is going all by himself despite winning the gold medal already. Confirmed silver for. Hubakar Diallo of Mali in the men's pole vote and a confirmed bronze medal for Abera Alemu of Ethiopia. And uh, Alemu's mark is 4.0. Hubakar Diallo's mark is 5.0. But Ruan Medi is kept going and he is currently at 5.30. It reminds me so much of what happened in the ladies' uh, high jump it was when Rosa Mwenyua Yaboa had. The gold and the wraps at 1.90, but still kept going and going and going. Yeah, it's exactly what we've come to know of a certain Mundo de Plantis, basically. So, this is basically the story of the pole vote. Only one person left to compete against themselves. But uh, let's get back onto the track for the heat two of the men's. Uh, 1500 meters, which is currently running now in the lead. There now is Abel Kipsang. Abel Kipsang is running out on the front, but he's being overtaken by uh, Terry Trey's uh, Ubel Zerit is out on the lead now. But also look at South Sudan's uh, Abraham Guem. And that's the bell. This is the final lap. 
This is going to get frantic very, very shortly. One lap to go. Eritrea is uh, it's all about your bear. now. Zeret is out in the lead. He's running very well. Zeret. But look at the Ethiopian coming through to the front is Erimaz Germa. Erimaz Germa is taking back the lead. Very much pursued there by the Kenyan. Abel Kipsang. It's going to be Erimaz Germa to lead this to the front. But uh, look at Kipsang coming through from the back. Kipsang. Oh, but it's Germa who is sprinting to the end. Followed, of course, by Zerit and Kipsan comes through in third. All three will qualify, including whoever came fourth. And we will confirm the fourth place for you very shortly. 3.40.97 is the winning time in this heat two by Emias Gema of Ethiopia. Yobo Zerit of Eritrea, 3.41.10. And Kenya's Abel Kipsang in third as well. So is uh, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Kenya, and Uganda qualifying in the first four places. Uh, Gamma. It was a comfortable win for him, very confident run. Well, at this point, it's all about qualification, isn't it? It is. Just do enough to qualify for the final and give it everything in that final. So... We should get a confirmation of who has finished where. And who is qualified to the final? Uh, the game's record in the men's pole vote is 5.40 by Brits, set in 1999. And at the moment, I can tell you that Ruan Medi is attempting 5.41, trying to break that record. He's already secured the gold medal, the Algerian. You heard the announcer say there that he's going to attempt That's the right. game's record by South Africans or South Africa's Brits, which is set back in 1999. And that was on home soil as well. It was in Joburg. Meg be going for it. And it's important that he gets the short. He gets the short for history. Ruan Medi for history. He's got three attempts to break the game's record, which stands at 5.40. And he is attempting now 5.41. He will have three attempts to do it he's already secured the gold medal he's gonna try to get the game's record here's Rod maybe oh, uh, no. well he doesn't jump all eyes on him now you think the pressure might be getting to him a little maybe, bit maybe just maybe maybe just maybe but he's got three attempts at this and that's only the first attempt so he's got two more can he do it in those two attempts. Well, Ruana Medi of Algeria has a shot with history now, and he is going for it. That record has stood for a mighty long time. 25 years. That's a really long time. Since 1999 in Johannesburg. 
So we get to see the list of athletes who have qualified for the men's 1500 meters final. Which will take place tomorrow. Brian Coming and uh, Belash USA for, as well as Riyad Shnini all making it to, to tomorrow's final. Mekdi, what do he want to do it this evening? He's already won the gold medal, but he's uh, attempting the African record. He's got two more attempts. Who knows? He might just clear that this evening and set that record in Accra. We've already seen a number of uh, records on the track as well as even on the field in these uh, in these championships. Lots of records in the swimming as well at these games. Her name is Alice Anum. She beat the whole world. 100 meters, 200 meters, African Games, Commonwealth Games, gold medalist. Alice Anum, original baby jet. So here's uh, Ronana. Because maybe. Discovered by President Kwame Nkrumah. And President Kwame Nkrumah adopted him and took him home. And what did this guy do? He came back in 1962. Back to try again. He came back Second attempt at 5.41. He's 86 years old, very strong. The very strong Mike Ahe. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the heroes and sheroes of yesteryear 60s and 70s let's give them a big round of applause without them they would not gonna not be here thank you very much thank you very much mr rex Bobby, a member of the local organizing committee of the so i think uh renana may be going for history 5.41 to try and break the game's record set in 1999. Here's Mehdi for history. Can he do Banana it? Banana Mehdi! Oh no! Uh, that was close. He's got one more attempt to do it. He would go again. He's got one more attempt to do it. Banana Medi. Oh, that was close indeed, wasn't it? Very close. There'll be one final attempt at 5.41. He's already won the gold medal, just in case you're not tuning in. He's only going for the record, set all the way back in Joburg in 1999, 25 a long years ago. Only four athletes competed in the final of the men's at pole vote. The silver medal already sorted out. The bronze medal already sorted out. Rubakar Diallo of Mali winning the civil, uh, silver medal. Merasa Abera Alemo of Ethiopia with the bronze. Amal Ruana Mekdi has already won the gold. But only trying to break a 25-year-old record. Now the women's discuss show as well is ongoing. This is uh, the final.
This is just the start of the women's discus throw final. And that is Etopia's uh, Teklu Merawat Tsehe. And this is Kenya's Rosaline Nyanchama. The defending champion is Chioma, uh, the 2019 champion is Chioma Onyekwere of Nigeria. She set a games record 59.91 meters to win the gold medal in Rabat. Oh, uh, that was poor from the Kenyan. She knows uh, she could have done better. A lot better. Chioma, the defending champion, the games record holder, is in this list. She's competing tonight. She's already tried two attempts, and both of them have come back no throws. And now on the track will be the women's 10,000 meter final. There was no heat for this, so it's a straight to a final. 25 laps. These ladies have to navigate before winning anything. There are three Ethiopians in that final. And those three Ethiopians that you mentioned are Tika Namari, Aberu Ayana, and Kafale Blue. There's Burundi's Niyomahoro Mishling, who did not start. So instead of six athletes, we're now going to have just five athletes contesting for the final. Initially, there were supposed to be eight athletes to start overall. Tanzania's Hamida Nosoro did not start. Burundi's Mishling Niyomahoro did not start. And Francine Niyom Kunzi of Burundi also did not start, leaving three Ethiopians, one Kenyan, and one Sierra Leonean. Theresa Kagbo is the Sierra Leonean in the white out in the inner lane. So, certainly, this is going to be Ethiopia versus Kenya. And this is a strange one. I don't recall ever watching a 10,000 meter final with only five athletes. Three Ethiopians in that final. They're probably going to try and edge out the Kenyan. The Kenyan is uh, Jeanette Shepingetich. They get on their marks. Each of them will start their own clocks and off they go. It's a slow start. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be here a long time. It's 25 laps across the track. 25 laps across the track and they are likely to do this in about 30 minutes absolutely because the for the next 30 minutes we're going to be seeing these are uh, five ladies attempt to make a name for themselves because the record for the 10,000 meters. The game's record belongs to Aprot of Kenya. 31 minutes, 24 seconds. But 31.24.18. The African record is 29 minutes, 01.03 seconds. And that is from Lexus and Bet Gide of Ethiopia. Uh, she also has the world record in this particular event. And Ethiopians, so the Ethiopians will be looking to uh, keep that record here and uh, make sure that they make their country women proud. A very slow first lap way over a minute well 
What do you expect, Kwame? It's going to be like this for a while. That's <laughs> what it is. Probably the first 20 laps are pretty much like this. And then maybe, just maybe in the last five, they up the ante. So. Get to see the pictures. Of the discus? It is a South African Erasmus, actually. It's a phenomenal atmosphere inside the stadium. The crowd, nothing compared to what we've seen from the previous three days, but certainly still a very, very good atmosphere. Well, it's great to see the fans making their way to the Lego and the sports stadium in their numbers. It's been a wonderful atmosphere the last few days, especially when there are quite a number of Ghanaians on the bill. We've had a few today. But I'm sure a number of them will be looking forward to the final in the men's 200 later tomorrow. As we still get to see pictures of the ladies' 10,000. And the women's discuss as well. There's a long list of competitors in this final for the women's discuss. There are three South Africans in this one. Ishkish Senegal. Amechi Obiakiri from Nigeria. Mamo from Ethiopia. Erasmus Ashley from South Africa. Nasira Kone from Mali. Chioma Onyekere from Nigeria. Yolandi Standa also from South Africa. Ashley Ithioma Anumba from Nigeria. Moni Nora from Cameroon. Moko Kasala from DR Congo. Emile Dea from Mali. Chayahai Teklu from Ethiopia. Emile Dea from Mali. And then. Senegal SK from South Africa completing the list. Remember, it's a women's discuss through final. You've got to put in the performance to win the middle. As we get to see a replay of this effort. We'll get a confirmation of this throw. There are two Nigerians in this. Ashley Fioma and Numba. And Chioma Onyekwere. Chioma Onyekere is the defending champion in this event, having won in Rabat in 2019. She will be looking to retain that gold medal and add up to the gold medals Nigeria has already won at this year's competition. Chioma Onyekere. 
There are three South Africans in the final. Yolandi Stander. Ward attempt. Another throw. Shomo Yekari with a game's record of 59.91, set in Rabat five years ago. But the African held, uh, record also being held by her, incidentally. She did set that record on the 15th of April in 2023 in Ramona, in Oklahoma, in the United States. And of course, the world record was set all of those years ago in 1988 when the East Germans dominate, dominated practically everything. They set records that will probably live over a century. One of those records being the record set by Marita Koch in the 400 meters, 47.60. I have no idea when that record would ever be broken. But for now though, we're going to be concentrating on the ladies in the discuss final. We get to see another Nigerian. Ashley Ithioma Anumba. That was a decent one. She doesn't seem too pleased with that throw but of course it's a final and it would have a minimum of six attempts at this and the interesting thing about some of these are field events you could have just one good throw just one good one and that could be more than enough to win you a medal of any color just one good one you could have five bad ones and one good one could just get a job done for you. Nora Atim Moni from Cameroon takes her turn. Nora Atim Moni from Cameroon. That looks like a good one. Money trying her third attempt. We should get a confirmation. She was able to do 53.03 and she's currently in third position with her first attempt and she's improved that. Nora Timoni, she's now in second position, the Cameroonian with 55.94. But for now, we get to see Moko Kayelena from DR Congo. Her first attempt was 51.51. She improved that to 51.65. We should get a confirmation of her third attempt very shortly. She's currently in Seth position. Nigerian Amechi. Obiagiri currently leading the park with a throw of 
Okoka Yelena's uh, third attempt only recorded 55, 52.5 2. She's still in sixth position. Nigeria, Cameroon, and Nigeria. In the middle positions, halfway through the event. Up to 15 athletes making it to the final of the women's long jump. Sorry, women's discus. The Ethiopian. Chehai Teklu. In 11th position at this point. Her first throw was a 41.13. Her second was 43.83. And no wonder she's down the lock. This is her third attempt. Can she do better? She did 41.13 and 43.87 in her second attempt. How far can she go with her third attempt? Looks like there's a little hold up. But the women's 10,000 meters is still ongoing. I'm sure we'll be catching a glimpse of them at some point. There's only five athletes in that final. Three Ethiopians and a Kenyan in there as well we get to see the representative from ethiopia in the final chehai teklu with a third attempt her first attempt was 41.13 her second attempt was 43.87 attempting her third at this point Can she get a good one? You hear those screams. We'll wait for official confirmation as to whether that's going to count or otherwise. We should have a confirmation of that throw very shortly. But up next is a Kenyan. Rosling in Nyachama. Her first throw was 48.98. Her second attempt did not count and she's attempting a third throw. Rose Nyanchama from Kenya. She's in ninth position at this point way out of the medals at this point that's a jump from 48.98 to 50.90 and that is a national record for the kenyan 50.90 well done 
Rusling Nyachama. That's a national record there. The six times national champion of Kenya, two times in top eight at all African games. No wonder she's the dominant athlete in the sport in her home country. Six times she's won the national championship. I'm sure she's been doing it at the Kasarani. Absolutely. Sonia Chama, a great record for him personally, uh, for her personally. After being national champion six times in the past, uh, she's also finishing the top eight two times in the African Games and once in the African Championships. She's not any younger. She's 33 years of age. The Kenyan who just set the national record in the women's discus show. In that record, it's a record improving throw. She held the previous national record as well. So, you know, she's been in and about there a long time, Rosalind Chama. But uh, we're back on the track where the women's 10,000 meters final is ongoing. There's three Ethiopians against one Kenyan out in the front. But certainly, so this is basically gold, silver and bronze. So only one of these three will not get a medal. And if that turns out to be the Kenyan, Genev Chapingitich, that would be painful because surely the Ethiopians can do another one, two, three here. They already did one, two, three. And the 5,000 meters. And uh, they still have 11 more laps to go. 11 more laps to go. So that's. 14 laps done, so the majority of this race has been run. It's uh, There's a woman's 10,000 meters final. Currently in the lead is uh, Wede Kifali. The Ethiopians are basically it's what they've been doing with the whole race is exchanging positions and running tactically. Chapin Getich has ensured that she stayed in and about so that when any kind of crazy kick happens and look at that, so they're switching the lead again. The different pacemakers exactly uh, in each of the races is what it is. And uh, so Wede Kefali just surrendered the lead there to her teammate. Uh, to, these are highlights of the men's bowl vote. Diallo got the bronze medal. You got a crowd going from the onset. So great. It's a fantastic. The men's pole vote final is a, I beg your pardon, Bubakar Diallo, he got the silver medal. It's a fantastic silver medal for him, 5.00. Rani Medi got the gold and there was a wonderful gold medal at 5.30. Attempted the African Games record 
at 5.41, but didn't quite make it. It's Abera Alemu of Ethiopia who's got the bronze, and I'm sure the medal ceremony of this event will be happening really, really shortly. So congratulations, that's the men's pole vault champion from uh, Algeria. Amar Ruana Mehdi, 5.30, flying and leaping above everybody else, almost going into the dark clouds of Accra. And that makes it gold medal number 24 for the Algerians. Back on track, they are lapping the Sierra Leonean athlete. Theresa Kagbo, but credit to her for even attempting this in the first place. Not an easy race. So that's the national anthem. Not national anthem, I beg your pardon. So Diallo getting his medal. The medal ceremony for the men's pole vote is what's uh, happening on the field of, at the moment. And there's all smiles for the Malian. Look at that, Bubakar Diallo. Great, great, great medal. He'll be very, very happy to go home to Bamako or Kais or Mopti. Absolutely. Or any of those beautiful cities with that medal. Look at that gold medal is. <laughs> Amar Ruanana Medi, 5.3. Zero for the gold medal for Algeria. A wonderful gold medal for Algeria. Bravo, Mehdi. Bravo, Boubaka. And bravo, Merasa. Now, mesdames and messieurs, veuillons nous lever. We get to hear the national anthems very shortly. Uh, the national anthem of Algeria. Big congratulations to Mehdi, the winner of the men's pole vote gold medal at these African Games. As the track event continues with the women's 10,000 meters. Shopping gets it, just reclaiming the lead there, the Kenyan. There's six more laps still to go. As we get to see some pictures from the women's discuss through final. Which is also still ongoing in earnest, the women's discuss show final.
del The lead, of course, uh, is currently held by Nigerian Amechi Obwagiri after three attempts, throwing 58.21 meters. In second place is Morinora Atim of Cameroon, 55.94. And another, Ni another Nigerian, Anumba Ashley Fioma, 54.88 in third position after three throws the defending champion Chioma Onyekweri is currently in fourth position so it's not looking good for the defending champion but of course with three more throws remaining who's to say who's to he cannot rule her out just yet Defending champion, games record holder, African record holder, Chioma Onyekweri is still in contention. At the moment is the South African, Senegal Ishke, and back on the track is the Kenyan who has taken the lead. Janet Chepingetic, and one Ethiopian as dropped by the wayside and it's just left with two Ethiopians right now I think it's a uh, Abero Ayana so at this point it's gold for Kenya at this point <laughs> it's gold for Kenya silver so it's and Melissa Abero Ayana who has dropped out so yes Kwame you are absolutely right this right now is gold, silver, bronze. What is to be determined is how they will finish. <laughs> Who guess what? Exactly. Uh, but it's guaranteed now for these three. Finish the race and get a medal. Just finish. Finish, finish. the race and get a medal. But uh, as far as they are concerned, I'm not sure it's just about finishing anymore. No. Because that is a continental rivalry that you're looking at. Exactly. Exactly. So at this point, you're beginning to think, with just about four more laps to go, what do I do? What do I do? Do I go for the kick? Or just Certainly. hold on? Or just hold on? Certainly with uh, four laps to go. It's a little too early. So that's uh, in the lead at the moment is uh, Kefale Belu. Kefale Belu, where they is more used to road running. She's a she finished in the top eight at the World Cross Country Championships, and uh, she's ranked 63 in the women's 10,000 meters. So she's not a top, top, top. 10,000 meter runner not at all but she is in here and she is angling for a medal they're lapping the Sierra Leonean twice but like I said big credit for her for even trying attempting to go around the track 25 times that is incredibly brave from Teresa Gakpo absolutely incredible I mean, knowing very well that she was going to be up against the Ethiopians uh, and the Kenyan in the race. It was always going to be a big ask. She's going to be loved again, but I guess the experience would mean a lot to her. And well, 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 look at that. You can tell that they're up in the ante now, and they surely look at Jeanette Chapin get it. She's running with great determination. And she herself is typically a cross-country runner. Janet Shepingetich. Not too many laps to go. 
31 minutes they have been on the track yeah so and certainly now that is way past the uh, any record whatsoever but they still got about and here they're measuring each other up right now it's uh, this is gonna get very frantic very very shortly and that's the Chepingetich is looking at the finish line up there but it's uh, Kefele Belu Wede who is pursuing her with great determination and now surely Tika Namari has been left behind it's going to be a two horse race and that's the bell it's going to be between Jeanette Chapingetich and of course Kefale Bellu. it's Kenya against Ethiopia as we've seen in every long distance race over the last 50 years it's always Kenya against Ethiopia well the African Games record belongs to the Kenyans the world record belongs to the Ethiopians and that's what it is but look at that it is uh, Bellu Bellu coming strongly Bellu has overtaken Chapin Getich as they approach the uh, the home straight but Chapin Getich is not relinquishing the lead just yet Chapin Getich is taking over the lead Bellu is struggling she's running with every sinew of energy in her but it's what not going to be her? enough it's not going to be enough it is Chapin Getich Jenna Chapin Getich runs away with it crosses the line and is gold for Kenya Ethiopia will have to settle for the silver medal and the bronze Jenna Chapin gets it she ran out there all by herself alone the only Kenyan on this track there were as many as three Ethiopians and she has beaten them all ridiculous wonderful from Janet Chapping Yetich, the pride of Kenya. And you will know celebrations will be ringing deep into the night from Nairobi to Mombasa. She has done it with three Ethiopians breathing down her neck. Janet Chapping Yetich has shaken up all the pressure and she has won gold for Kenya. Wonderful victory. And yet again, the green, red, and black of the East African country will be flown here in Accra, down in West Africa, with the humidity over 70% and temperatures soaring at 32 degrees. Nothing compared to anything that's in Nairobi at the moment. Chapin gets to just come here and she has dominated the field Kwame ridiculous victory ridiculous absolutely ridiculous and no one that she gets the loudest share of the night what what a final lap there what a final lap I mean at some point it, it did appear that the Ethiopians were going to nudge her out but she just went for it on the final lap gave it absolutely everything what a performance and just like you said, there will be loads of celebrations, if any, in uh, Nairobi, in Mombasa, or in Kisumu, or all the big towns in Kenya. They'll be celebrating this one. What a performance from Janet to win this one. And it's not just the fact that she won, it's the fact that she beat the Ethiopians to it. All three Ethiopians, all three of them. Look at this. At this point, look at the replay. At this point, it looks like Bellew had enough in her, but just by judging by Bellew's face and looking at the determination from Chapin Gittich, you just knew she had it. And at this point, on the home straight, well, Bellew knew Chapin Gittich was not looking back. She was not to be denied. It's a wonderful, wonderful victory from the Kenyan Janet Chapin Gittich. African Games champion ah uh, my word she has deserved it she's run an excellent race has she not every step of the way she's kept up with the Ethiopians 
They changed positions, tactically ran the race, and yet she stayed with them every step of the way. And here she is with her reward. Celebrate, Chapin Get It. Pray to the Lord. You have deserved it. Your Lord has come true for you. And she would be absolutely delighted. And look at the Ethiopians as well. Two of them finished the race, guarantee themselves silver and bronze. The other one did not finish, but she will celebrate with her country women. You've got to give a lot of credit to Jenna Chapin Gatich there. I mean, she was always going to be up against it. It was always going to be a tactical race. And it was going to boil down to what the three Ethiopians were going to do. It was interesting to see one literally falling behind. But she was still up against those two in those are final three, four, five laps. But she still found a way to navigate her way through to winning that gold medal. And boy, what, what a performance she did put in on that final lap. It was a wonderfully executed race from Janet Chepingetich. And uh, for many people that think that long distance races are boring, I, I tell them all the time, maybe you just don't love the sport enough because the amount of excitement that you can get from a race like this, 33, 37, 0, 0 flat to get the win, value 33, 38 to come to with the silver and of course the bronze medal going straight to another Ethiopian as was guaranteed well that last lap has lighted the Lego and sports stadium it really has hasn't it it's lifted the energy and they loved the way this race finished. Everyone was on their feet, cheering on Bellew and Chepingetish. The Kenyan going all the way to win that gold medal in impressive, impressive, impressive fashion. So another goal for Kenya, but two crucial medals for uh, Ethiopia as well. We're getting to see the latest on the women's heptathlon as well. So the leaders, Ito Dile in first position, Francis Peterson Kemi of Nigeria. In second, this will be the Heptathlon 800 meters. And that's the final, the final of seven events. They are done with six of the seven events in a Heptathlon. And the leaders will be looking for a good time to add up to their point hole. and possibly win a medal. Yeah, at the moment it's Benin uh, Odile who is in the lead, followed by Francis Peterson Kemi of Nigeria, and Cameroon's Adele Mafugang, thank you, is in the last medal position, uh, position number three. Also, they remember there's six, in fact, uh, Shirut Nada of Tunisia has pulled out, so they're currently only five of them. Only four of them, I beg your pardon. Only four now. Three of them will get medals. Only one will not get a medal. And the difference between Thank You of Cameroon in bronze and Vesta Shannon of South Africa in the fourth place is just about 100 points. So if South Africa's Vesta Shannon were to finish ahead of Cameroon's Mofagan, Thank You, in this 800 meters, surely she'll be looking at upstaging her. Of course, uh, for a position with respect to the bronze medal. And it's really that close between silver and bronze as well. So if Thank You of Cameroon were to finish ahead of Kemi of Nigeria, she could upstage her for silver. It's all up to Odile now uh, in what she does in this race. She's currently leading with uh, 4,966 points. If she has a good race in this one, it's gold. 
for Benin. It's unbelievably tight. This is the last event of the women's heptathlon, last of seven events. There was 100 meter hurdles, high jump, steeple chase, uh, 200 meters long jump, javelin throw, and that is Cameroon's thank you out in the lead. If she were to win this race, she will overtake Peterson, Francis Peterson Kemi of Nigeria into the silver medal position. But look at Peterson, she knows as well, Kemi. She currently is in the lead with just about 100 points more. And sadly, only one of these ladies would go away without a medal. Yeah. Well, and that's looking at, and that's definitely Vesta Shannon. She's not doing herself any favors right now. She's trailing in this 800 meters by almost 30 meters already. But Cameroon's Mofagang, thank you. That's the bell. And she's going really strong, but the Nigerian Francis Peterson, Kemi, is following her right behind her because she knows that she can finish lower than second or else thank you will overtake her so this is going to be some race to the end Francis Peterson Kemi is closing in on Mafugang thank you in this last event of the women's heptathlon is really close towards the end as we approach the last 150 meters or so he's still thank you in the leader Cameroonian Mafogang thank you Adele she's running really well it doesn't look like she's gonna be caught look at that she stepped into second gear oh look at Vesta Shannon of South Africa she's overtaking Kemi and she is into the second position Oh, but it's Kelly that will win it. Thank you, wins it. The Nigerian finishes third, but Vesta Shannon of South Africa has come through to finish in second. What does that mean for the standings? Vesta Shannon of South Africa was trailing, thank you, by the way, by 100 points. But it's thank you who's won the race, and Vesta Shannon has finished second, so no chance that Vesta Shannon catches, thank you, in bronze medal position. However, if Kemi were to overtake her delay into second position, she has done it. She's gone into first now. Oh my word. Thank you. Adele of Cameroon has gone into the medal, the gold medal position by virtue of winning the 800 meters. And look at that. It is an unbelievable twist of events. And that's, and that's what happens uh, when you compete. Oh, my word. A confirmation has coming. Vesta Shannon, who went into this race. Oh, goodness me. Uh, goodness me. Oh, goodness me. Uh, let's look at, let's relax. Calm down, everybody. Odile Awanu of Benin remains in the lead. Unassailable. I beg your pardon, 56, 1, 6 points, 5,616 points. There they are, Kemi Peterson as well. And that's the gold medal, Odile and Wadi. Well, when it first popped up here, it looks like the order had been messed up. But surely now, it looks like Odile's position ha hasn't changed by virtue of where she finished. So she gets the gold medal, the Beninois, and Nigeria's Francis Peterson Kemi gets the silver. But the drama happened in the bronze medal place. Vesta Shannon, by virtue of uh, finishing second, not enough to finish ahead 
of Tenkyu. And Tenkyu knew that she had to win that 800m race to maintain her place in the medal standards. And she's done exactly that. If Shannon had beaten her, though, possibly she would have come into the bronze medal place. So that's the top three. Odile Ahwanwanu of Benin gets the gold. 5,616 points. The silver goes to Francis Peterson Kemi of Nigeria, 5,268 points. And the bronze goes to Adele Mafugang Tenku of Cameroon, 5,181. And South Africa's Vesta Shannon does not get a medal. I think it was all about the number of points that was on offer for the final event of the women's athlete. I mean, after six events, the Beninoa had a lead, and I think she did just about enough to add up to that point study and end up winning gold there. But for the South African, after all of that effort in seven very, very tough sporting events, she was only good enough for fourth position, and that must hurt for her. So we are into the uh, last two truck events of the evening and that will be the 4 by 400 meter relays heat men and women. Currently ongoing on the field as well is the men's long jump as well as the women's uh, discus throw. This is South Africa's Yolandi with her set and final attempt. She's currently in fit position, 54.44 meters. It's her longest show, which she achieved on her fourth attempt. And now she can attempt to get into the medal zones. It's a decent hill, it's not great. This is the defending champion. But the last attempt, and she's found herself back into second position, 58.03. What is this last troll? The leader is another Nigerian, Amechi Obiagiri, 58.21. So 58.21 is the leader's throw. Chioma, 56.34 is not good enough. And now she will have to settle for a silver medal at least. But uh, Ashley Fioma is in fourth position at the moment. Can she get into a medal zone? Is not a great throw from the Nigerian. 54.88 is her furthest throw. 
Now she's trying to steal her way into the medal position. It's currently occupied by Nora a team, the bronze medal place. Nora a team, 56-11. So that's what her target should be for this final show. It doesn't appear as she as if she got it. It was not even a legal throw, and that's it. And that is that. This is Cameroon's Moni Nora Atim in bronze medal place. In bronze medal place, 56 11. Can she throw more than 58 meters to upstage the defending chairman, uh, champion, Chioma Onyakiri? It's a decent throw. The defending champion, Chioma Onyakiri, is also the game's record holder as well as the African record holder. Nora, a team's last throw, might not be enough to get into that silver medal position. Here it comes. 54-62 is not going to be enough. And so the medal positions are determined. Omechi Onyajeri of Nigeria gets the gold. Shioma Onyakweri also of Nigeria gets the silver. And Nora Atim gets the bronze. The medal ceremony of the women's 10,000. Now the national anthem of Kenya. Jenna Chapin gets it with a wonderfully executed race to win the women's 10,000 meter gold. She was the only Kenyan running out the Lone Ranger, really, against three Ethiopians. And uh, in that last lap, she executed a flawless race to come to with the gold medal. It was a really, really wonderful run from Chapin Getic. The well deserved gold medal for her. And look at the conclusion of the women's discourse show. Hacks there, Hacks here. The defending champion has been overthrown. We have a new champion of the African Games in the women's discourse show, albeit also Nigerian. And the defending champion, Onyo Kerry, will have to settle for wow, silver. As a country woman takes the gold medal. Hard working volunteers who have sacrificed their time and resources to build us here to work to help that everything will go on successfully in terms of the African Games. Wherever you are, if you are a volunteer, wherever you are, wherever country you are coming from, if you are a volunteer, this evening we salute you. Good work done. God bless you. God bless you. All volunteers. So, the conclusion of the women's discourse tour, the gold medal to Amechi Obiajiri, 58-93, upstaging her countrywoman and the game's record holder, Chioma Onyekweri, who had to settle for silver, and uh, Nora, a team of Cameroon, completing the podium places. And that's our bronze medalist, Nora, a team.
in third place 56 11 and that was her bronze medal throw it's an impressive win for uh, Nora team and this is the defending champion and the African games record holder as well as the African record holder Onyakiri Chioma. It wasn't a great day for her. 58.03 was her furthest throw. A little shy. Of her the lofty highs of the lofty highs that she set for herself and this is our gold medalist Obiajiri of Nigeria 58-21 wonderful throw to become the new African Games champion is gold and silver for Nigeria on the field again Are the final results 58 93 for Obiajiri, uh, will be men's discuss your final Chioma on your query 58 03 and Nora, a team of Cameroon completing the podium places 56 11. President de l'Association Sportive de l'Afrique. Whilst we wait for the next track event. Let me take you through a little bit of history. This is the third games and it is being held here in Ghana. The very first edition was held in Congo Brazzaville in the year 1965. It used to be called the Pan African Games and it metamorphosized into all African games. Now it is African Games. This is the 16th edition. The 12th edition was held in Morocco. Before then, Brazzaville started it in This is a four year event. The next one, in 2027, will be held in Cairo, Egypt. Cairo, Egypt. It will be the 14th edition of the African. Well, up next.
have on the planet has their own unique footprint like no other. Welcome to the African Game Show with me, Philip Sitchop. I assume it's that time again where we come your way with everything that has happened today in the African Games. Meanwhile, we've got a special guest in our studio today, and it is a history lady. It is a gold winner at the African Games. It's one that brought the house, the roof of the whole house, with so much ablation, so much clap, so much noise. It is the high jumper, the gold winner in high jump for women, Rose Amwenima Yeboa. Rose, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, coming with him is that man. You get to hear the voice, now the face. Kwame Jumo Ajiman, brilliant in commentary. Kwame, good to have you. Thank you for having me. So welcome, Africa, and welcome to our gold winner. How does the gold feel when you win it, when you just know that you've clinched it? I mean, you're jumping, you're jumping, you're jumping, and when you've gone over your last jump, and now you know, like, oh, I've done. Can you put those emotions into words, Rose? Yes, I feel really good because um, being a champion is not easy. And when I was going into the competition, I wasn't afraid of any, anybody. I wasn't nervous. Like, I went to the competition just to have fun. I told myself that I'm going to have fun. Even though we are competing about, um, among each other, and I went into the competition with a sound mind. Yeah. yeah. For many athletes, though, they come into competitions with, it's, it's, they, they need to win it. So serious, n nothing else but just the competition. But even the way you were competing, the, the expressions on your face could tell you were so bubbly. So, like, is there a way you deal with pressure, or that is just your nature? Um, um, like I would say, um, in the beginning of the competition, sometimes I feel a little bit nervous. But when um, I progress, I start um, becoming of myself because um, when I, I cleared the bar for once and I am going for my second time, I told myself that I'm going to overcome that nervous. Yeah. Um, and that's what is keeping me moving. Listen, you are competing in front of a packed stadium. If you like 99% of Ghanaians, what is it like competing in front of your home crowd and they are cheering you on? Um, I, was, I was really overwhelmed and impressed because looking at the, the, the um, crowd that was cheering me up, like I was, I was so happy. Um, yeah. I'm getting all my my people to, I mean, support me. It, it's not easy because not each, each, um, not all of them will be able to um, come and cheer you up because there are a lot of people having their work on that day on um, weekdays. So it's not anybody that can come to cheer you up. So if they had that opportunity to come cheer me up, I, I have to also give them the opportunity, give them the small face for them to also see that I, I cherish whatever they are doing for me. Yeah. Listen, I have massive respect for... And Pamela, I come to you very soon. I've not forgotten about it. I'm just starstruck. <laughs> She's a star. She's a star. <laughs> Woo, Rose went for gold. Anyway, so listen, I, I won't say you people are stars because I've seen people go into sports and quit. What has kept you going so far? Is it family, some determination? What is it that keeps you going every time? Well, I'm always determined. Like I always say, I'm always determined. My coach always told me to, um, like, whatever I, I, have, I know to do, I have to put my best in it to yeah. do. I, I used to play many sports, but I chose to play high jump. Because when I was in Kumasi Girls, my coach, um, 
Madam Joyce, a Jay Boite, yeah, she's very, she, she's a very good woman. She used to, um, she used to advise me in certain ways. Like, she is the reason I am here today. Hey, she, big shout yeah, out to her. Shout out to her. <laughs> she taught me how to jump. She even teach me, um, she even teach me how to do the flossy frog in high jump. So I can say she is the one. Um, that have made me reach this point. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Kwame, when you when you when you when you hear her speak, or even for our conversation we had with her before coming onto the set, and when you see her compete, it's very much in sync with her character. She's smiling, she's laughing, she's bubbling with the crowd, and she's just the same person. Uh, th that was one of the things that I recall when she was competing because every time the cameras are focused on her, she was smiling, and I, I recall there was even a particular time during the course of the race, after she was literally in the lead to win the gold medal, and the fans were cheering her up. I remember there was a, the, the, uh, the cameras caught up with her, and she yeah. was asking the crowd to just calm, calm down. down. <laughs> because I think maybe, you know, she the, the pressure focus. was, she just wanted to focus, because I think at that time, she had done a height of 1.90, and I think she wanted to clear 1.94, and the fans were urging her on. I think she just wanted to be calm mm. and see whether she could, she could go for 1.94, because I think the Olympic qualifying mark for the high jump was 1.97. So I guess that was what she really wanted to do and to see whether she was going to be in Paris. But whatever she's done here, she's been absolutely brilliant. Yeah, well, was that the target coming into the competition? Uh, yes. Actually, the 1.94, I have cleared it before, and I wanted to do um, the same thing this time around. But looking at how um, I started, I started from 1.70, which I should have started from um, like maybe around 180. But then when I reached 194, um, I felt that I was really tired. Yeah. Yeah. I knew I was going to clear um, 194, but I felt a little bit tired and looking at how the audience were clapping, I don't normally like clapping because I usually want to be focused and um, it's, it, when I hear the clapping, sometimes it changed my approaches and I, I always miss my um, um, my Your run steps or running, yeah. yes. So I don't normally want my audience to um, um, clap for me whenever I'm going to jump. Listen, next time when I'm going to jump in Ghana, whisper to me you don't want them to clap. I'll tell the stadium announcer to announce to everybody to keep quiet for you, to focus on those steps. But yeah, it, it, it didn't clear the, the height for the Olympic, but there's an opportunity for you to do so. What is next for you, Rose? Um, yeah, my, my coach, Coach Petras, in the United States, in the um, University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. Um, we, we are, uh, um, he's trying to um, put a, a little bit technique into my, um, my uh, what I have already. So I think that's the best idea of him, and I know that's really going to help me. So we are in the process of doing that, working on that, and um, I'm now um, able to catch up with it. And I know, um, by God's grace, if I'm able to pack that, I'll be able to um, go a little bit far. And since our outdoors, we just ended our indoors, and I think that gave me the upper hand in winning um, this 2024 um, African Games. Yeah. So we just ended the, um, um, our indoors and now we are moving. We've even started our outdoors, but since I'm not there, I'll be competing next week. Yeah. 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 We wish you all the best in that promise. She is a potential Olympic gold medalist. She is a potential African superstar who can who can win those things. She's still very young and she's speaking about coaching and the coaches improving all her technique and everything. She has what it takes to get to the very, very top. She's so, she so not the science. Now, if she's doing 1.90 at this point, she's still very young. I think the most important thing is just what you said her technique. Uh, I'm not too sure uh, who is part of her coaching staff and all of that, but I'm sure that's the next thing uh, that they would want to be working on. Because I've seen so many compete at this level and sometimes the little things that define you as a star when it comes to sports like high jump is the technique. 
In, in her sport, I'm sure she'll be familiar with a name like Bianca Vlasic, yeah. the lady from Croatia. I mean, she made it look so easy at some point, and for all of you who would love high jump in the men's division as well, everybody recalls Javier Sotomayor yeah. because of how he went about, you know, his, if you like, um, his, his approach to, if you like, the height, and he made it look so easy. So I'm sure the next thing she would want to be working at is see whether she can go 193, 194, 195, and maybe 2.0, and it, if, if she put in a thing or two, who knows how far she can go with the heights that she herself intends to reach. Right. When, when you speak to a lot of athletes, they will tell you, you see them winning the medals, but the body of work or the group of people working behind them That's are many. Right. I'm going to give you the opportunity, Rose, to, to, to say thank you to whoever. I'm sure you're going to, obviously, Ghanaian fans were there for you, but some of your coaches, maybe friends, family members, people have been pivotal. In, it can be, it can be, it can also be tricky because you might miss some names. That's right. But, but pe <laughs> people who have been, let's say, she has a long list. Yes, but I'm going to give you the opportunity to say thank you to as many people as you can before you take leave of us, Rose. There you go. Okay. Um, I thank each and everyone. Um, first of all, I'll thank the Most High for um, God for bringing me this far. Um, it's not easy to come um, to be at this stage. So I thank the Almighty God for um, in giving me that strength to compete in such an event. And also, I will thank my Dom Joyce, Ajay Buayte, um, who took me through all this. I really thank her. She has really done a lot. Like, she is the reason I am here today. And I always, I also thank Mr. Wisdom. Um, he, he is the one who, who took me to the U.S. Wow. To, um, yeah, to continue my education. Really? I really thank him and appreciate every little thing that he do for me. Um, I also thank my coach, Coach Petros of University of Illinois. I really appreciate his calmness, his advice, his training techniques, his workout. Like, I really enjoy every little bit of workout he gives to me. I never complain any, yeah. any um, like, his workout. It's about any you. workout that he gives me, I make sure I do and do it well. Even though it's sometimes a little bit high. <laughs> Most especially, the weight lifting. <laughs> Since I wasn't used to the, um, lifting. Yeah, by now, through him, I have been able to even lift what I wasn't able to live before. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. thank him and I thank each and everyone here who cheered me up during um, when I was putting um, this uh, massive performance. Yeah. I really thank everyone and I thank my family, my family, my mother, my father, my siblings, everybody. I thank each of them for giving me such a privilege to um, be in sport because not every parent will allow their daughter or um, their um, son to yeah. compete in such an event. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. And we also say a very big thank you to Delivering Gold for uh, Team Ghana. Uh, finally, before you leave, you said you played many sports. If you didn't do high jump, which sports would you have done? Ah. So I was really interested in all the sports. Yeah, yeah I, I was really you interested play for the in all the sports. No, I was playing hockey. Um, way oh, back in SHS, the hockey team um, lost the star. SHS <laughs> the hockey team lost the star. University of UCC. Yeah, that's where I was. Um, yeah, that was where I was. And right. I thank University of um, Cape Coast too. Um, I thank, I really thank them. They they also gave me the go ahead to um, I mean come to their school to study yeah. without paying anything. I really thank them. Fantastic. I, I used to play many sports. I was into basketball. I even won um, MVP in um, no, 2018. The girl, the girl is supremely talented. Very talented. <laughs> very talented. <laughs> but yeah, congratulations to you. I wish you all the best in what is to come. You Thank are you. truly a star. Good luck to you. Right, so in the African Games, many stars have been born. Many of them are also going on to try and make history. We saw only yesterday in the 4 by 100 meters for Ghana, they really, the men, they clean silver. They got the preparations together. And they went on to green silver for the country. Let's take a look at this that we put about them, how they prepared, how it ended. After the 100 meters, I told them that right now we are going to get a medal in a 4 by 100 
really. So my boys and girls are ready, physically and mentally. They are all focusing for getting a medal for themselves and for the entire nation. And off they go, there's no turning back now. The final of the men's 4 by 100 meter relay. The Nigerians are going very strongly. Edwin Gadai is already being caught by on the back straight for Ghana. Is uh, Benjamin Azimati. But they were dropping the baton, but they did it. It's Shariche against uh, Joseph Paul Amor. It's a race for one and two. Ghana, Nigeria, Nigeria. He almost overwhelmed him at the line. We're very um, proud, of, proud of ourselves and um, it's an amazing feeling to, you know, see the whole crowd behind us. When our, name, our names are mentioned, they, um, you know, give us the support that we need. So we, we are grateful. We are grateful for the support. And um, we wish we got gold, but, I mean, maybe better luck next time. We got silver with, with, with the time that we run um, was kind of close to the, the game's record. So maybe we, we still need a few stuff to clean up and then maybe next time we can do it better, yeah. We're really happy to, you know, see that athletics is, is getting the recognition that it needs. We also like we train hard to, you know, get on higher, um, um, higher platforms so we could, you know, get 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 more support than even this year. The, the commitment and the unity between the Ghana people it was very nice, it was very nice. The gap between the Nigeria and Ghana was very little. I learned this was only two minutes. They did, they did well. I was excited because the way Ghana came to support their own, it's very massive. I like it. They should keep it up. The last runner took a little bit earlier, but he managed to get a stake. But when he was coming, I mean, you know, it's too much tension race. That's why, but they, they did good, they did well, they did well. The rest of the crowd behind me are absolutely buzzing because the fun continues here at the University of Ghana Stadium where the Athletic Oval is. All right, so, so we've seen the heat off. We've seen the heat of the 200 meters men. We've also seen the semi-final of the 200 meters men and what the final tomorrow could look like so Kwame that was the semi-final for the men and it gave us a glimpse of what to expect tomorrow in the final oops it's always tight when it comes to the sprints it's always tight because when you have a look at the way the the, the, the structure these days only the first two in each race get to qualify yeah. and then the two were the fastest times also get to qualify so although it may look like um, an opportunity for us, many of them, only two get to be good from every single race. And I was particularly excited with what I saw in the very first one that had two Ghanaians in there. A lot of Ghanaian fans, of course, are tipping Joe Paul to go very far. But that young man, Inu Safusini, putting a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful performance. And I'll be excited to see how he will perform in that final. Ah, what a final that will be tomorrow. Is the reason why you can't miss the African Games men's 200 meter final. It promises to be exciting and the crowd favorites. The favorite so far, Ghana's uh, Joe Paul, was very cruising in his heat and in the semi-final. But can he live up to the standard tomorrow when it is time for the final? The women also took to the tracks in the women's 200-meter uh, semi-final. Again, plenty of excitement around it. A lot of excitement in that one as well, but it was all about the winner of this particular heat, Gina Bus. Yeah. You know, she's already won the women's 100, mm. and she strolled through her race like that. I mean, she's oozing with a lot of confidence at this point. And normally when you win the sprints like that, that's the women's 100, it gives you that kind of confidence to go into the 200. She started brilliantly, finished brilliantly. This should do a lot to her confidence going into that final later tomorrow. Oops, plenty to look forward to tomorrow because, hey, you haven't seen how the semifinals have gone. I haven't seen the athletes that are going to be competing you just can't wait for that moment to come it's one sleep away from happening and that is how he stands with the qualification as you see it pop up on the screen we're looking forward to see all of these eight compete tomorrow and good luck to them all right so also in women's 10,000 um meter final champ janet uh, came home to win it it was like she was pretty comfortable in the end for her mm. or she just dominated it maybe 
I mean, the 10,000 meters uh, final for the women was a very interesting one. It was uh, three Ethiopians in there, yeah. and then there was the Kenyan in there. You always had a feeling that because there were three Ethiopians, they were going to be very tactical about this race and possibly try to gnash the Kenyan out of it. But uh, Janet uh, Kimnetic putting a brilliant performance, especially on that final lap. It was. It, it was very difficult to tell at some point. It yeah. reminded me so much of that race all of those years ago in 2000 in Sydney between Paul Tegat and Haile Gebre Selassie. They were yeah. neck and neck yeah. to the final 100 meters of that event. And this was a very similar one. But in that final 100, the Kenyan just tearing past her uh, Ethiopian opponent and making it all the way to win that gold medal. Lots of congratulations to her. And I'm sure the celebrations will be ongoing in Nairobi or Mombasa or wherever she's coming from in Kenya. All right, so there you see it there, having Clinton Janet, Shep Janet winning it in the 10,000 uh, meter race there in the women's uh, category. All right, so there was, there was, if like we saw a lot of races coming up today, there was the, the hurdles that we saw and many more to see. But now let's move away from all of that and move to what we saw in Discuss Women. Discuss mm. Women. It was also very interesting the way it came about and, and the fact that we had so many of them competing for it as well was promising to see. It was, it was extremely promising to see and for me, uh, one of the things that excited me about this, um, you know, this uh, competition so far is, is the exploit of some of these athletes from uh, some of these nations that we don't even get to see. Uh, some of them, for example, if you're a fan of athletics, you, you, don't re you don't really get to see them compete at a very high level. But when it comes to the continent, up to 53 countries in here competing at a very high level, I mean, when you have the opportunity to impress, you yeah. impress. And I see that a lot of them have made it to Accra and are putting in some great times. Right. Brilliant. All right, so then also in the 400 meters head on men, Enadi Nora came home to win gold for his country. It's always, we've always said 400 meters is difficult, but to go over hurdles in that process as well is, is even more difficult. This, this sport has uh, traditionally been one of the big sports on the continent, and there's a reason for that. All of those years ago, you have to probably go all the way back to the early 90s, where a certain Zambian called Samo Matiti was very, very dominant in the sport. He literally put that sport on, this, on you know, even like on the map here in Africa. And since then, we have had a lot of athletes going there. But he decided very very young man very young moroccan only 21 years old competing at a very high level and one of the things that you would see with this particular race is that he was up against two lads from botswana botswana over the years have produced some great athletes especially in the 400 meters uh, level yeah uh, all those years ago when amant lamonshu broke onto the scene who would have thought that that country large as it is but with a very small population will be sending out athlete after athlete after athlete like that so lots of congratulations to hinti Saad for the performance that young Moroccan putting on the afternoon. Yeah, amazing performance there to win gold for his country. There was also then the long jump. Mm. The whole crowd was roaring. They were clapping for it. They were, they were urging the, 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 the athletes on. It was, again, exciting one to see at the overall. Well, th th this is the thing. I mean, when you're performing and you get the fans rooting for you or when you get the fans shouting and screaming and edging you, on, edging you on, it puts you in a position where you want to literally go get of your best. Nigeria, again, uh, have really dominated the sport for as long as I can remember. Again, all of those years ago in 1996 in Atalanta, I saw a certain Shoma Junwa come from nowhere to win the women's long jump. So traditionally, over the last 26, 27, 20 years, Nigeria have been very dominant in it. And it was great to see the defending champion go out there Winning in Rabat yeah. and coming here to defend her title as well. Then there was pole vault. Pole vault was massive. It's not a thing. E I mean, it's not very often you yeah. get to see athletes compete in pole vault yeah. on the continent. Everybody talks about the great Sergi Bubka. Everybody talks about Mundo de Plantas. But it was great to see what this uh, young Algerian Medi was did. Uh, Medi. Yeah, Medi was I mean, massive. It was, it was, at a point it was, it was, it was just him yeah. at a point. Him against him. I mean, at and a point it was just him. him. Even, even when he had won the gold, he wanted to try other heights. And yeah. for me, that said a lot about his confidence on, on the night. The strange part for me though, was an Ethiopian winning a bronze medal in this race. Because we know the Ethiopians <laughs> on the track. The long I distance, don't know them for performances the in the field events. So to see an Ethiopian win uh, a bronze medal in the men's pole vault was quite interesting yeah, for me. Yeah, that's massive, really massive. All right, also to, in Taekwondo, we saw Morocco win against Egypt in men. Again, Egypt and Morocco in, in, in these combat sports, they've been, they've been dominating in it. 
the North Africans have dominated a lot of these indoor sporting disciplines. Whether it's Morocco, whether it's Libya, whether it's Algeria, whether it's Tunisia or it's Egypt, they've been putting in performance after performance after performance. It's a very popular sport in those parts of the world. Yeah. So I am not surprised that if you have a look at the various categories of uh, medal winners, all the way from the lowest weight that division to the highest weight division, right. it's been one of those five North African countries mm. that have swept the medals. Then also then we went into rugby and we saw the final between Kenya and Uganda. Uganda though, beating Kenya 21-14 to clinch gold. And also we saw Uganda women also clinching gold. So it's double one in there for, for Uganda. What a sight. Rapid sevens is a very, very big thing yeah. in Kenya. Yeah, it's it a is. very, very big thing it in is. Kenya. Uh, my understanding is that when there are rugby seven games go ongoing in Kenya, especially at the collegiate level, they have packed houses. Mm. So I wasn't surprised to hear that the Kenyans were very, very dominant here in Accra. Right. Okay, so then they put together some massive celebration to celebrate their winning here. Coming into it as Uganda women and Uganda men came out successful in rugby. So they say, yeah, there's a dance. Okay. Okay. This must have been rehearsed in camp. This must have been rehearsed in the game. Show sure bet. Show sure bet. Show sure bet. Show sure bet. Yeah. They would the have men, all of this. The women <laughs> coming together <laughs> to celebrate. And, and one of the I love it. It's, it's an African thing. Yeah. We like to celebrate. We love to dance. dance. Yeah. So, for me, it was it was just great to see that. Yeah. Oh, listen. If I, if I had the permission, I would, I would I would just get off my seat and try to dance. But never mind. <laughs> never try mind. that. Try that if you never home. mind. Try that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Anyway, so there you see it now. Let's talk about volleyball then now, shall we? Because Ghana beat Algeria by three sets to two, and Ghana then also got that victory to progress up over Algeria. Mm. There it was it was again fans in the space. Ghanaian women getting the better of Algeria. I've had the opportunity to see Team Ghana uh, play on the court. I remember I saw them play against uh, Gambia. I was. I think I saw them play against uh, Algeria as uh, well. I mean, this is the thing. A lot of the indoor sporting disciplines at this year's African Games have been dominated by the North African teams. It's understandable because they put in a lot of investment in there. Yeah. But for Team Ghana, the greater part of our team uh, players who have come from the various security services and they're putting loads of work and for these ladies to have come this far and put in these kind of performances I feel for happy for them I just want to see them get to the next level competing at a very high level on the continent and of course competing at a global stage as well all right so that was it then in volleyball as uh, Ghanaian women beat Algeria uh, three to two meanwhile in tennis though it's Moise Ekagri who wins against Benjamin Locke in a 7-6, 3-6, 6-2 tennis when what was a very, very entertaining game for everybody who saw the tennis uh, routine all through, through all the day. Well, the best African players may not have showed up here yeah. for this, uh, you know, this tournament, but then again, I mean, whoever has showed up here it's obviously one it's an opportunity is, for one. of course it's an opportunity you know, to make a name for yourself too. it's an opportunity for emerging stars to show what they can also do so in as much as you may not have had the top african players for the tennis tournament i think it's great for these uh guys representing their nations to show us what they can also do all right so that was it on tennis and so then what is coming up for you tomorrow in the african game because there's still plenty of spots to go around remember plenty of them are ending tomorrow so we are looking at a lot of finals to tomorrow as well. So let's take a look at what is to come tomorrow. coming up tomorrow so there's still so much fun to be had in the african games 13th edition here in accra all right tonight or earlier today a couple of hours ago only minutes ago ending the bronze medal places for football women is gone because uganda beat cameroon on penalties the game was uh, locked on on a draw so they went into 
into um, uh, into penalties, and we saw the results with Senegal. As they saw, we saw the results, they're coming through there. So that is huge, huge, huge one uh, for for them, Uganda, Senegal. It's amazing what Uganda have done in football. They've won the bronze medal in the ladies category. They are in the final of the men. Yeah. Who would have thought that Uganda would be in the final of the men's category with Nigeria and Senegal and all of those teams in there? Big one for them, having clinched a bronze medal in football and women's. But coming up later tonight is the final a place for gold. Nobody really wants to. You know, when you win the bronze in this, you celebrate better than the person who's going to win silver. Mm. Ask me why. Because the silver medalist is going to be the loser in the final. Yeah. So tonight, we see Ghana play in the final and they are going to go for try and go for gold but it's not going to be easy is it it's not going to be easy at all i don't recall the last time i saw the uh, a Ghanaian female team play in the final it's been a while we saw a Ghanaian football team play in the final of a competition so yeah. i would want to believe that the lads would go all out would get the support of the fans in cape coast yeah. and put in a performance and possibly get gold for ghana so that is the cape coast stadium as you saw it right there it's ready for the fixture in what is to come in the african games women's final what a game that would be and what a game the storylines we all are going to turn out to be Kwame thank you very much for coming today thank you for having me enjoy your commentary on the African games I'm sure thank the rest you. of Africa are enjoying it as well and for you right there that game is going to come to you at 2030 the final of the women's game football at the African games it's bye for now but enjoy the final International Maritime Hospital, IMA, situated in Tema Community 3, is a 130-bed capacity hospital and a one-stop show for all your health needs. IMA provides all medical and surgical specialities. We have a modern gastroenterology and endoscopy suite to take care of all your health needs. The International Maritime Hospital offers nephrology with renal dialysis and boasts of one-of-a-kind radiology departments with a wide world 3 Tesla MRI scanner, the only one of its kind in Sub-Sahara Africa. IMA boast of a flagship comprehensive stroke center. IMA is open to the general public. We have enough. A life of plenty for every child. We've had enough all along. There's enough choice for every child. Enough nutritious food produced responsibly and sustainably so children can thrive everywhere. Let's come together and stand with children to say we've had enough. Enough. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. With a new and improved taste. It's delicious and refreshing. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. You need to try it first. This advert is FDA approved. Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play. You like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? their own unique talents and abilities. I can cook, I can paint. You like no other. In the mirror, in the mirror. You like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mom. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved.
This game has a duration of only 10 minutes. If you score from outside the arc, you get two points. If you score from within the arc, you get one point. The first team to score 21 points gets to win the game. There's a free throw there for the Bokinabi. They convert that. It's 11 to 8 now with only five minutes to go. It looks like 10 short minutes, but trust me, you're exhausted when you're done with this. A foul called. Advantage Bokina, who will look to get back into this. It's a three point game now. No. Ghana almost getting a basket there. This should go in no. But Ghana would retain possession of the ball. Trying to two from distance. No. Again, the cannons of the rim. That's a foul call against the Bokinabi. And that's why you can hear all of those noise from the Ghanaian fans who are rooting for the team in black. Rooting for the team in black to get a result this evening. It's a four-point game. It's a free throw advantage, Ghana. Can they convert? Yes, that goes in. It's a five-point game down. The Bukinabis would look to get a basket here. Yes, they do. Brilliantly. 13-9. It's a four-point game. Is that a foul? Was that a foul? But it looks like that's going to count. That should count. That should count. So it's a four-point game with four minutes and 32 seconds to go. Ghana with possession of the of the ball, trying to get a one. Yes, they do. It's a 49, a five-point game now. The ball goes out. Possession advantage, Ghana. And the fans enjoying themselves here at the University of Ghana as a home team attempt to win this. That ball goes out of touch. Final touch, Ghana. It will be advantage of the Bokinabis. We've got just a little over four minutes to go. The Bokinabis will try to know that we're not going. Ghana with possession of the ball. What can they do? Looking for it to themselves. Yes, sir. No. It would not go in. It would not go in. It would not go in. It's a six-point game. No, it's a five-point game now. Possession to Ghana. Ghana will look to start. Oh, no. I thought that was a foul. Has that been called for Ghana? We get this. Yes. There was contact of the head of the Ghanaian player. So that should be a foul advantage, Ghana. But they take a timeout. And that's Algerian players in your shots there. They were absolutely brilliant in their game yesterday. I enjoyed watching them so much in their game against Zambia. One of those teams that has been able to hit 21 points inside the 10 minutes. They got all 21 points with just about a minute to spare. Ghana looking to grow their lead here at this point. It's a six-point game now. It's a six-point game now. What exactly has the referee called for? A bit of contact there. So it's a foul advantage, the Bokinabi. It's a foul advantage, the Bokinabi. They have possession of the ball. What can they do? The Bokinabi. Looking for an opportunity to strike. Trying to two. That should be a foul. Yes. The foul has been drawn by the Bokinabi. Will that take them to the free throw line? He was clearly going for the basket. So that should take the Bokinabe player to the free throw line. There, making contact with the Ghanaian player. Yes. With that going. Yes, that goes in. It's a five point game now. But he would get another opportunity from the free throw line to claw back the deficit. 
with the Bokinabe is converted as well and he converts again it's a four-point game now three minutes to go loads of baskets can be scored in the three by three loads of baskets and the first to hit 21 gets to win the game it's 15 11 at this point Ghana six points away from winning this some twos will do I'm sure that's what the fans will be rooting for another foul called against Ghana the Bokinabis with possession not too sure what exactly the officials have called for not too sure what exactly the ref has called for is that another free throw for the Bokinabi well it looks pretty much like that another opportunity uh, opportunity for the Bokinabi is to claw their way back into the game there's a four-point game Ghana 15 Bokina with 11 player number 13 for the Bokinabi attempting to claw their way back into the game it's a three point game now it's a three point game now 15 12 Bokina looking for two but it's been blocked by Ghana player number 12 would attempt to get a one no but he loses possession of that ball would Ghana try to you can only keep possession of the ball for only 12 seconds oh that was absolutely brilliant from the Bokinabe what a layup that was it's a two-point game now that won't count that won't count the foul had been called so that won't count it's tied it's tied it's a three-point game at this point Bokina trying to two but that was not going no the layup was not going Ghana with possession Trying to two from distance. Ghana getting a bit nervy towards the finishing line. The Bokinabe gradually getting back into this one. Would Ghana look to try to? Would they try to? No. Trying to slalom his way through that defense and get a point. But the ref calls a foul. And that should be a free throw for Ghana. Denied making the basket. So that should be a free throw for Ghana. Player number 11 for the host nation. Will attempt to win some points for Ghana from the free throw line. Ghana lead 16-13 is a three point game. That goes in. It's a four-point game now with a little over two minutes more to go. It does appear one of the teams has called for a timeout. So that was a quick one. We're back in action. It's 16-13. Is that a free throw advantage, Ghana? Yes, it is. An opportunity to extend that lead. That goes in. There's a four-point game now. 13 to Burkina Faso, 17 to Ghana. Ghana looking to reach that all-important 21 points and win the game. That would not go in. It remains a four-point game. Ghana looking to close this out. Ghana looking to close this out without going oh yes brilliant no that layup would not going but this should go in no it cannons off the rim again Ghana will try to yes sir 
Ghana now two points away from winning this. Two points from downtown. Ghana two points away from winning this. It's a four point game. Yes, sir. This is getting nervy. This is getting really nervy. It's a two point game, but it's 17-19. Remember, the first to get to 21 points wins the game. No matter how much time is still left on the clock. The first to reach 21 points gets to win it. Ghana with an opportunity from a free throw line to get close to match points. It's 19 to 17. And the fans trying to urge Ghana over the line there with a minute and 24 seconds to go. It's a two point game. Can Ghana nick it? No. It cannons off the rim. Stays a two point game. The nerves are getting to these Ghanaian lads. Surely the nerves are getting to them. Will that go in? No. And he misses two straight free throws. That could have won the game. Bokina try one from downtown. No. Ghana with possession. You can only keep possession for 12 seconds. So once you have possession of the ball, you've got to utilize it quickly. Six seconds on the clock for Team Ghana to convert. Yes, sir. No. That looked like he was going in. Ghana looking to finish this off. No, it wouldn't go in for the Bokinabe either. We've got less than a minute to go. Ghana losing possession to the Bokinabe. They'll try a two from distance. Yes, sir! It's tied. It's tied. It's tied. Oh, this will be nervy for both the teams. Those will be nervy for both the teams. Ghana has really got to take advantage of these uh, free throws. Two free throws. If they convert, they win. Yes, sir. It's match point now. It's match point now. If Ghana converts this, game is over. Yes, it's over. It's over. It's over. Ghana has won this. Only just. for every child we've had enough all along there's enough choice for every child enough nutritious food produced responsibly and sustainably so children can thrive everywhere let's come together and stand with children to say we've had enough enough coca-cola zero sugar with a new and improved taste. It's delicious and refreshing. 
Coca Cola Zero Sugar. You need to try it first. This advert is FDA approved. Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play. You like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? And abilities. I can cook. I can paint. You like no other. Indomie. Yeah. Indomie. You like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, mom. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved. Black. It's not dark. It's bright. Black is gold. Black is every color all together. <laughs> My thing, your thing, our thing mixed together. Black shines bright. West Africa that everybody is aware of. So today's game is going to be very interesting because um, Nigeria have a good team, we also have a good team. So at the end of the day we are going to exhibit what we have here on the field to make the fans happy. Yes, it's going to be um, a cracker of a game, a game that is going to bring out the wits of every player because the most coveted thing is goal and we're defending champions. So we're out here to give all we have and make sure that we do not relinquish our opposition. And welcome to the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. It's venue for the finals of the Africa Games Accra 2023 Women's Football Edition. It's Ghana versus Nigeria. One of the biggest rivalries in world football comes alive in the central regional capital of Cape Coast in Ghana as the two teams lock on. It's basically a repetition of the Wafu Zone B inaugural competition played last year in Ghana where Ghana's Black Princesses beat the Falconers. It's perfect time for the Nigerians to revenge, but the Queens are bent on repeating what they did last year. My name is Nana Dakwa Jesse. I'm your commentator alongside Rosalind Amu for this evening's big one here in Cape Coast. Yes, I mean, it wouldn't have been a more befitting very, um, final than we have this evening. When you talk about women's football on the continent, it's always Ghana versus Nigeria. And we always say that there is no child's play or there is no friendly. Even if it's a friendly game, the hostilities are as different. And this evening, look at the crowd. Nana, look at the Cape Coast Stadium filled to capacity, electrifying. And I think that it's, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't lack any of the ingredients that would serve a very good menu for the final. All is set for the big game. Women's football at the Accra 2023 Africa Games comes to an end today with the host nation Ghana hoping to make it a host and win as they come up against Nigeria who are the defending champions of this women's football category of the African Games. They won it last time 
in Morocco and they are bent on repeating it once again here in Ghana. Whether they can or not, only time will tell. Of course, the black princesses of Ghana in their white and black jerseys, the Nigerians have also showed up in their traditional green jerseys here in Cape Coast. In the history of women's football at the under 20 level, this is the first time the two sides are clashing in a final game apart from the Wafu Zombie. And this is the third time, the third time that Coach Basigi is coming up against Nigeria. Let's observe the national in terms of the two teams. It's time for Nigeria's anthem. The national anthem of Nigeria has gone by. It's time for the national anthem of Ghana. And the rapturous applause from the fans tells it all in terms of the expectations. National Anthem of Ghana. <laughs> Yesterday, Nigeria had the last laugh in the women and men. 4 by 100 relay by beating the Ghanaians to the gold medal. Ghana clinched silver in the men's category of the 4 by 100 relay and Nigeria clinched gold. And Nana is instructive. They had come here saying that they had come to right the wrong Ghana caused them in Abuja in 2003. And so yesterday when they won, I mean, you could imagine the joy among the Ghanaians and the Nigerians. And you know the painful thing? The Nigerians won by a micro two seconds. Let's go through the lineup of the Ghanaians. That's Afi Amenyeku, the number one shot stopper for Ghana in post. There's Opoku at right back, Abiba and Hana Nyami in central defense. And there's also the left back, Comfort Yaboa at left back, Asana Al Hassan, Mefia Nyami, as well as the leading striker, Mukarama Abdullah. That's the Nigerian lineup. Familiar faces, Shoma Olise. The main girl they'll be looking up to this evening is lining up. Philomena Yina is also in there as well. Shukurat Oladipo is in central defense alongside Ola Daji. So the Nigerians have not made so many changes to the team that qualified them to the finals. And it's time for the two captains to go for the toss of kind. Nigeria, captained by the ever-present Alani, who has been instrumental for them throughout the competition. Ghana, this evening is captained by Afi Amenyeku, the Ghanaian goalkeeper, who is getting to change 
where the Ghanaians have already positioned themselves. What it means is that Ghana will have to switch to the other side of the field after the toss of coin is done, Rosalind. Yes, and um, there hasn't been much changes in Basigi's final lineup either. Um, he has opted to start Abna Noma Opoku instead of Faiza Isa because Faiza had a yellow card the last time and I'm sure he doesn't want to risk it's maybe he knows that he she may get a red card and it could affect the psychic of the team it's amazing how the fans have turned up for this evening's game it's an almost full to capacity stadium here in Cape Coast I have said that Cape Coast has earned the plaudits for being the home of women's football in recent times they show up the guys from Castle Hayford and today the National Supporters Union have also come there in their red, gold and green colours to add colour to the scene. I mean, Nana, the mission is to win gold on home soil and no better way to do it than playing against your bitterest rivals on the subcontinent, um, sub-region Nigeria. I mean, they haven't met. Surprisingly, in the underworlds, the senior sides have met for umpteen times at the under 20 level they haven't met this is only the third time that they are meeting and in both occasions i think ghana prevailed all is set for the kickoff referee Geraldine conan will get us going for this evening's game anytime soon referee Geraldine conan is an ivorian assisted by sakina amidu alpha from niger as well as rwandan alice Umutesi. Kickoff time. Mukarama Abdullah. She was booed and later the fans came to love her back because she proved them wrong with her scoring ability. She's going to get us going here in Cape Coast. Ghana versus Nigeria. Now, now let's look at how they got to the finals from this competition. I mean to start with Cap decided that this was going to be preparation for the teams that have qualified for the under 20 women's world cup ghana nigeria among the four the three teams that have qualified morocco are also in there and so when they came up ghana was drawn in group a alongside ethiopia tanzania and uganda nigeria was drawn in group b alongside morocco and senegal niger didn't show up and from the group, Nigeria topped, beating Senegal 4-0 and then Morocco 2-0 in the group stages. And then they beat Uganda 2-0 in the semi-finals. Ghana, on the other hand, started on a very dicey note, winning by a slim margin 1-0 against Ethiopia. And then they beat Tanzania 2-1, coming from behind. And then they finished it up with a 1 1 draw against Uganda. And then when they met their nemesis, Senegal, they unleashed a 3 1 beating. So the stage is set for a big game. None of these teams really dropped their guard in the beginning stages of the competition. They proved to be the best, and that's why they're in the finals. It's a throw for Nigeria. Ola Deji to take the throw for Nigeria. I mean, you could Clarence away for Ghana. I'm too sure whether Hanya Nami gave a good pass to a goalkeeper on that occasion. You know? Here's Nigeria's Choma Olise. Headed away by Ghana's Hana Nyami in central defense. History beckons and awaits either side tonight. Should Nigeria win, they become the first women's football team or country to retain gold in women's football. Should Ghana win, Princesses become the first team in the history of the game to win bronze and gold at different competitions. But the man, Yusuf Basigi, this evening, 
would be celebrated as an African. Chance for Nigeria moving into Ghana territory. Cross comes in, but it's blocked. Looked like a dangerous tackle. Referee eventually spots there was an infringement, and the decision has gone against the Ghanaians. Free kick for Nigeria. It was Ghana's left back. Opoku, who went in with a tackle. It was a late challenge. Good call. Nigeria have a free kick just around the 18-yard box of Ghana. Chomaoli says, lines up alongside Victoria Alani, the captain of the side. She's left it for Choma to take. Choma scored in the 4-0 win over Senegal in the group stages. She's lined up to take the free kick from the right-hand side. It's got to be a left-footed in-swinger. I guess it's going direct to the goalkeeper. Choma bends one, but it's get into the box. It goes onto the roof of the goalpost for a goal kick. She wins the throw in for Ghana. Anoma Opoku to take. The Ivorian referee is whistling for the throw in to be retaken. Alani to take the throw in. She finds Choma. Back to Alani. Ghana eventually gets the throw in. Good effort coming from Asana Al Hassan. Both sides like to operate from midfield. And so anytime they have their midfields clicking better, you see them getting better in front of the attack this evening they have opted to also use their flanks and we wait to see who would be the first person to break the deadlock it's five minutes already in cape coast there's the african games accra 2023 women's finals ghana nil nigeria nil Two big forces in African football renewing their rivalry at the African Games. Interestingly, tomorrow the men's senior teams will be playing in a friendly in Marrakech, Morocco, as part of the FIFA Free Days for International Friendlies. There is no end in sight for Ghana Nigeria clashes. Absolutely. I mean, wherever they go, they seem to be meeting up, and it's always something else this afternoon at the volleyball court Nigeria trying to put some pressure on the Ghanaians Hananyami had to come in to stop the run from Lovett Ede it's a venue where a couple of years ago, Ghana beat Nigeria to win the Wafu Championship. It's a foul for Nigeria. Blessing Ope brought down by Ophelia and Ponsa. And Ophelia is livid. She disagrees with the call of the referee, but it stands. She caught the right leg of the Nigerian and there's no questions about 
the decision taken by referee Geraldine. But the Ghanaians should be careful the way they are causing fouls within their final third and then their goal area because you can't be doing that against a Nigerian side that is clinical and finished. They have the experience and the exposure. They better watch it so that they don't get penalized for it. Captain Alani to take the free kick for Nigeria. Victoria Alani swings one in straight to Ghana's goalkeeper, Afi Amenyeku. Ghana loses possession ball for Suchoma Olise. Nigeria looking very comfortable on the ball at this stage. Here is Choma. It's a long drive from afar and Amenyeku is right to let and grabs it for Ghana. The Ghanaians are yet to settle into this game. We haven't seen them make a single in caching in the goal area of the Nigerians. And that is worrying, but unfortunately, that has been their trend at this competition. Save the game against Senegal that we saw them starting on a high pressing note. The previous games at the group stages, they were always caught, I mean, on the fringes, and they had to always fight from behind to equalize. And so they would have to be very careful if they want to win this game within regulation time, they would have to take the game to the Nigerians. Absolutely. Here the Nigerians come. Choma. Good player from the Ghanaian. Anuma Opoku. Mukarama is interested in the chase. But ball comes to Captain Victoria Alani. Here is Nigeria's Yina. Philomena Yina. Alani. Good Passing together by the Nigerians, blessing up and down the right side for Nigeria. She's looking for options, but the idea was good, but the execution unable to find Love it, Ede. But Ghana and Nigeria will be representing Africa at the next FIFA Under 20 World Cup in Colombia. The Black Princess and the Falconets have got a responsibility to make Africa proud. Yes, and they will be joined by Morocco and Cameroon, who will be making their debut. While Nigeria will be making their 11th appearance at that World Cup in Colombia, the princesses will be making their 7th appearance at the World Cup. And Mukarama steals possession. She goes down. Free kick against Nigeria's Philomena Yina. Mukarama was relentless. She knew she was going to get the ball, but it was Mefia Nyame who stepped up to win the ball for Ghana. So this way, Mukarama decided to charge, and Nyame came in, won the ball, got fouled by the Nigerian number 10. Free kick for Ghana. Tracy Chum. She's already been on the score sheet in this tournament for Ghana. She steps up for the free kick. She scored against Tanzania in that 2-1 win for Ghana. And she's lined up for this free kick again, Tracy Chum. She also scored in the 3-1 win against Senegal. And she's among the top scorers in Africa during the under-20 qualification. She had four goals to her name. And this evening, she's still on call. Will she convert to this one? Only time will tell. The Real Sociedad ladies player lines up to take this one. She sends one in. Tricky one. And it goes out. For a goal kick. Not a bad attempt from Tracy Chum. Nearly took the Nigerian goalkeeper. Fit. Omalina by surprise. The handball against Ghana. This evening, Ghana has an attacking quartet. Tracy Chum, Ophelia Sewan Ponsa, Mefia Nyami, and Mukarama Abdullahi. Coach Basigi deploying 
Mukarama as a decoy. And so she probably will be looking as if she is leading the attack. But her role is to ensure that she attracts all the attention to herself so that the others who find themselves in a better scoring position will finish their job. That's the earlier free kick from Tracy Chum. That was close, not too far away from target. Alani is throwing. The Nigerian captain is weighing up across. She sends one that disappointingly goes out for a goal kick. Poor direction. Here's Hannah Nyame. Sends one in. Here is in Wasu, but Ghana recovers well in defense. Good play from Abiba Isa. Here is Ophelia Mponsa. Mukarama beaten in the air. Abiba once again to the rescue of the Ghanaians. Header down, not working for Ghana's Belin Yeboa. Here is Tracy Chum, goes back to Comfort Yeboa. She's lost possession, the Nigerians take over now. She's struggling and she's lost the ball to Judith Oka. Eventually bringing down Judith Oka. It's a free kick, foul committed by Ghana's Comfort Yeboa. This is a real final. A real final showdown. A final that has the trappings of a rivalry, a trappings of a grudge match, and nobody in the mood to drop their guards. Not at all. The last time they met at the Kumasi Sports Stadium, it ended 1-1 in the final of the Wafu, but the Ghanaians prevailed, winning on penalties. Nigeria's free kick is taken, and Ghana deals with it. Bukarama fights for the ball, but She's always going to struggle in that area of tussles with Oladeje and Nancy Akinwa. Here is Mukarama. Lovely play from Mukarama. Can she turn a decent cross? It is still Mukarama for Ghana. She's got contention from Oladipo. And Mukarama wins the corner for Ghana. Oladipo is protesting, but assistant referee stands by her decision. That is the real serious attack that the Ghanaians have launched against the Nigerians, the first corner they have, will they be able to make something out of it? Mukarama Abdullahi, the star girl of the Ghana team, she's been she has at the warmed, end. She has warmed her way into the hearts of the Ghanaians. When you they play, saw her in 2017 when she went for the Under-17 Women's World Cup. But against Ethiopia, they thought she wasn't good enough. Corner taken by Amponsa. There's a chance in the box of the Nigerians, but here the goal away from Ghana. Philomena Yina. Ball is cleared back by Ghana's Comfort Yeboah, only to be collected by Nigeria's Fit Omalina. Malena's delivery. Comfort Yeboah in a tussle for the ball with Judith Oka. Nigeria number nine Oka has gone down. Was looking for the foul referee and sister should be a throw in. The finals of the Africa Games 2023 women's football, Ghana and Nigeria renewing their rivalry once again. Besides the gold medal that will add to your medal hall, there is also the bragging rights Absolutely. of who is better. 
I mean, if you have no stake in this one, you can relax and enjoy a good game of football. But if you do have a stake, I'm sure you'll be sitting on ten tiles. Navy moment. If you are a fan of either of the two years, Mukarama, she's been situated nicely by the Nigerian Oladeji. Abiba is chasing for Ghana. She doesn't want to risk and go to his goal, her goalkeeper. She sends the ball away. Mefi Anyami loses control. But it's a very bad tackle from the Ghanaian attacker. Referee Gerardine is asking Nyami to calm down. It was a harsh challenge on Nigeria's blessing of Bay. Five fouls committed by Ghana, two committed by Nigeria. Ghanaians getting very, very aggressive this evening. That is a surprise because usually you would find the tables turning and the Nigerians the more aggressive side. Freaky. But that should tell you the stake. No, no, that should tell you the stake. Very high stakes here in Cape Coast. Here's Nigeria's Oladipo. Mukarama takes possession for Ghana and finds Tracy Chum. Chum sends one inside. Stopped by Oladipo once again for Nigeria. Throw in for Ghana. Yeboah's throwing, she finds Yeboah. Mukarama has been obstructed. She was waiting for the referee's whistle. Referee not interested. Abnanoma is a poor pass from Abna. Nigeria takes over now. Yina, Philomena Yina is trying to weave her way through the Ghanaian midfield. The Ghanaians are finding it difficult to string their passes they together. They need to communicate. They should just take it easy. And understandably, you can see Basigi yelling out instructions to her, his girls. They need to take it easy and calm down. I mean, there is still more time to go. You can't be playing like that. Otherwise, you get punished. Here's Mefi Anyame trying to find her strike partner, but it's a poor touch from Tracy Chum. She just couldn't sort out her feet well. 20 minutes in Cape Coast. African Games Accra 2023 Women's Football Finals. Ghana nil, Nigeria nil. Who is going to go home with the gold? Only time will tell. 70 more minutes to go. It could travel into penalty shootout. It could be anybody's game. But this man in your shorts, Basigi, stands on the threshold of history. The first coach to win gold in two different African games should it go Ghana's way tonight. In 2015, against all odds, he beat Cameroon to win that gold in Congo Brazzaville. That was at a senior level with the Black Queens. With the Black Queens. Yes. It's a poor clearance from Ghana's centre-back, Hana Nyame. She was under pressure from Nigeria's Judith Uka. So Nigeria have a throw-in inside Ghana's area. Both coaches, Danjuma and Basigi, have carved a niche for themselves as far as women's football coaching on the continent is concerned. They've done remarkably well in the last couple of years. Abiba for Ghana. Here is Mukarama, Abdullahi. Good older play for Mukarama. She still hangs on, but whistle goes in favor of Ghana because there was an earlier foul referee overlooked because Ghana had the advantage but she had to recall because Ghana had lost possession. Asanal Hassan Zerevri. Nigeria take over blessing Ope. Ball cleared away by Abiba. It's a late tackle on Nigeria's Oladeje. 
Mifia Nyame was the one who went in with a lit tackle. It tells you how anxious the Ghanaians are to stop the Nigerians. But I think that they need to be careful. A chance for Nigeria. What a mistake Silence. from Ghana's goalkeeper, Afi Amanyeku. She's basically gifted Nigeria the opening goal. What a howler. How did she do that in an epic game like this? Nigeria in the lead against Ghana in Cape Coast. It's Ghana. Nil. Nigeria won. And she's got herself to blame. Let's see how it happened. Long ball taken by Nigeria's Ola Depot. This was harmless. She handled it. She left it. And Nigeria score. The opening go through. Love it. Ede. You realize that a similar foul was committed. A similar mistake was committed in the game against Uganda. In the final group game. I mean, these are the kind of things you do and you get punished for it. And moments ago, we were just talking about the need for them to watch it. They shouldn't be playing around their goal area at all because you can't do that against a clinical side like Nigeria. So Lovett scores her first goal in the competition and it couldn't come at any time than the finals. It's Nigeria up by 1-0 against Ghana. The foul connects in the lead against the princesses of Ghana. 24 minutes in Cape Coast. Free kick for Nigeria. The Ghanaian goalkeeper will be looking back and asking herself why she gave that away. It was very easy to give away that ball. Now, let's see how the Ghanaians react after gifting Nigeria the opening goal. Judith Edis header, but this time is not beating Amenyeku. Bukarama goes down from the challenge of Nigeria's Philomena Yina. Free kick for Ghana. On two occasions in this game, Ghana has had to come from behind to win or equalize. In the first game, in the second game against Tanzania, the Tanzanians took the lead before they came to equalize and score 2-1. And then in the game against Uganda, they had to come from behind to equalize 1-1. One, one. So let's see how they do. You don't want to get lucky when you concede Nigeria. We're trying to make a move. It was delighting Wasu, but she's stopped by Ghana's defense. Referee. So far, 25 minutes, she's been able to stamp her authority in the game. Throwing for Nigeria. Alani is throwing, intercepted. Loud noise in the stands. The Ghanaian fans are not giving up. A few of the Nigerian fans have also turned up in Cape Coast to support the Falconets. Miscommunication between Lobet Ede and Judith Oka. Here is Mukaram Abdullah for Ghana. She's all alone. She wants support. Good run from Ghana's Ophelia Mponsa. She gets a throw in from the boot of Nigeria's captain Victoria Alani. Abnano Mopoku's throwing cleared away. Another throwing for Ghana's Black Princesses. <laughs> Judith Oka. Ball cleared away by Captain Alani. Abnanuma Opoku 
that's what to find Al Hassan. Nyame is trying to flick one on for Chum, but is cleared away by Ola Dipo for Nigeria. Here is Philomena Yena. Ball is cleared back by Ghana's Bellini Eboa. Mayfair Nyame not on the same page with Mukarama as Nigeria's captain won't allow the ball to roll out for a throw in. Ponsal finds Mukarama. Can Ghana get an equalizer? Here is Mukarama and Ghana nearly finding the back of the net, but Tracy. What a miss. Unable to score. What a miss from Tracy Chu. That was very close for the Ghanaians. The best chance you could ever have. It was a good run from Mukarama. Relentless movement. Ghana still chasing the equalizer. Judith Oka up against Ghana's Comfort Yeboa. Nigeria in possession, blessing Ope. She's looking for options, but it seems her outstretched arm caught the face of Ghana's Abna Anuma Opoku. That's the earlier build-up. Good run from Mukarama. She did well to control the ball. She was trying to cut back, but Tracy unable to connect it. She did all she could, only to be denied by the woodwork. Good chance. Gonna Bergen. Nigeria left off the hook. Not too sure she made the needed contact she really wanted. Ghana's Abnano Maopoku will be treated as we go for a temporary hold up. That's the incident. Judith Okpe unintentionally struck the face of the Ghanaian Opoku. Is water break here? At the football women's tournament, at the ongoing Africa Games in Accra, Ghana, Nigeria. In the lead, Ketsi love it. And then, after the Ghanaian goalkeeper Afia Manyaku made a terrible mistake that the Nigerians took advantage and scored the opening goal. You see, Basigi would take the opportunity of the water break to issue out instructions for a possible equalizer before half time. Unfortunately, that was a chance gone a begging. And the princesses would have to find another strategy or look forward to another opportunity as golden as they had to be able to equalize. You can't be missing such chances when you are already trailing against a side like Nigeria. When it comes to under 20, they are the best on the continent. They have been to the World Cup several times. They've even gone to win medals. And so you can't be doing this. Unfortunately, Tracy has been guilty. All games at this competition, we've seen them miss some glorious chances, but they always somehow redeem themselves and score. So you can't blame them too much. Let's hope that the story will be the same for them this evening. The Ghanaians will be hoping they equalize the Nigerians who open. They double their lead and go on to win the competition. Injury concern for Ghana's central defender, Abiba Issa, after this collision with Nigeria's striker Judith Oka. Judith is very strong and Abiba must have been caught by the late challenge from the Nigerian striker. Nigeria defending champions from the last edition of the African Games in Rabat, Morocco. They won gold coming into this competition as defending champions they are aiming to rewrite history
twice runners up at the FIFA Under 20 Women's World Cup in 2010 and 2014. The Nigerians have an impeccable record both on the global stage and on the continent. Mukarama for Ghana. Tracy has missed again. Comfort Yabua to take the throw in for Ghana. There's a foul for the Black Princesses. Ghana's Mefia Nyami winning the free kick for the Princesses. I can see comfort behind the ball. And she had a chance at the CAF Champions League and she made a goal out of it. Will she be able to do that again in this game? The Abimbakwa ladies player has really improved. She's one of the most improved female players on the local scene. She's behind it. I've seen Abiba Isa also showing interest. It very much looks like it's comfort you're about to take it. There's Mukarama, Tracy, and the rest in the 18-yard box. A chance Mukarama has the ball down, but nobody to the end of it for the Ghanaians. And Mukarama knows that she did all she could. There should have been somebody to connect that one after she nodded the ball down from Yabua's free kick. Referee Geraldine Conan has halted play. The Nigerian goalkeeper, Faith Omalina, goes down and Geraldine Conan is asking for some attention. That's the earlier free kick from Comfort Yabua. Onto the head of Mukarama. You're expecting that the Ghanaians to be, you know, around lurking and hoping to connect, but Tracy was missing in action. They were, all there. Was missing. they were all there, but I think they were caught ball watching. They were hoping the ball would, the header would have gone in, but. That is how come it is said that in the opponent's goal area, you are more than, you are 110% alert. 35 minutes in Cape Coast, Nigeria lead Ghana 1-0. In the women's tournament at the Africa Games 2023. Nigeria's Faith Omalina gets up on her feet. She's been encouraged by her captain, Victoria Alani, to get on her feet to push the team forward. Ola de just throwing. Mefia Nyame flicks it back. Abiba Isa clears it back for Ghana. Anuma Opoku trying to string the passes together with Amponsa Mukarama loses possession. Here is the goal scorer for Nigeria. Love it, Ede. She was trying to squeeze one through four in Warsaw, but she loses possession. No foul. Nancy Okinwa. It's getting very physical at this point. Ghana gets the foul, but Nigeria's Philomena Yina is complaining she stayed down. Referee is calling for the Nigerian medical team to attend to her. Very physical contest. So the Nigerian number 10 Philomena Yena is limping off at the moment. Nigeria will play with a numerical disadvantage, at least for now, before she returns after this free kick is taken. It's Ghana's Arsenal Hassan to take. 
Hasana sends one into the Nigerian 18 yard box. It's headed back in Wasu. Cleared away by Yena. This time, Nigeria will get the advantage and the decision goes against Ghana. Basigi has barely taken a seat in this evening's game. How do you stay calm? How do you take your seats when your side is trailing? And your mission to win gold on home soil seems to be in jeopardy. The host and win under severe threat as we approach half time is 38 minutes. Nigeria lead Ghana 1 0 in Cape Coast. Here is Ophelia and Ponsan for Ghana. Nigeria take possession. Blessing Okbe. Comfort Yeboa. Heads it down by the straight to Lobet Ede. She sends one is tricky, but this time Afi Amenyaku would not be beaten. She's alert this time. The build up from the Ghanaians at the back seem to be too casual, giving up possession to Nigeria so easily. Here is Mefia Nyame. Good play from the Ghanaian number 18, but the ball had already rolled over the line. It's a throw in against Mefia Nyame. She's got no business protesting. They had already gone outside the line. It's interesting how players would always want to take advantage of such. I mean, it was clearly over the line, but she thought she had played it back in, and so she wanted to go run with it. But the assistant referee was right there on the spot, and she called. She made a right call. Nigeria stringing passes together. Chioma Olise trying to put one through for Blessing Ope. Good defensive play from Ghana's Hana Nyame. She had to be on guard, Hana Nyame. She gets a high five from Opoku. It's offside against Nigeria's goals cry. Love it, Ede. It's 40 minutes, five more minutes before the break. Ghana nil, Nigeria won. That's the earlier pass from Nigeria's captain Alani to Ope that resulted in the offside decision. Hana Nyami sends a long one in. Mukarama is a target. She's been beaten to it by Oladipo. The last time the two teams competed for a trophy, the game had to be decided on a penalty shootout. Ghana eventually emerged winners 3 1 after. They failed to cancel each other during regulation time. Five minutes before the break, Nigeria hanging on to the lead. Here is Ope. Back to Alani. Here is Yina. Ope unable to control. Ghana gets the advantage. Abnano Maopoku winning the throw in for Ghana. Yeboah to her name say comfort Yeboah it's a foul against Nigeria referee says the ball was rolling it has to be stable before the free kick is taken comfort Yeboah to take Ghana have four minutes to get back into the game is a chance but the ball goes out for a goal kick Ophelia Mponsa was lurking but failed to make the needed contact.
Kieran Smith here on Yami. Not on the same page with Amponsa. Ball goes out for a goal kick. They seem to be in a hurry to get things done. The Ghana front three, Nyame, Mukarama, and then Amponsa. You can't blame them. You can't blame them. Even though Ghana is ahead in terms of possession, they seem not to have been able to unlock the Nigerian defense. And so they trail. But you can't blame them when they are in a hurry to score because they are trailing 1-0. Hana Nyame, clever defensive player. Here comes Anumar Poku. She gives the ball away. Here is Nigeria's goal scorer. Love it, Ede. She goes down from the challenge of Abna Anumar Poku. She made a clean clearance. She threw herself in the way. She threw herself in the way. No questions about that. Opoku made a clear, clean clearance. It was a Nigerian lady, Lobet Ede, who rather got into her way, and she's yellow carded. She gets a yellow card, the Nigerian goal scorer. Lobet Ede. One minute away from the break, Nigeria hanging on to Lobet Ede's opening goal from that howler from the Ghana goalkeeper Afia Menyaku one that she want to hurriedly forget as Ghana chase the equalizer is Nigeria who are attacking now Alan is throwing but allowed to travel outside by Hassan Al Hassan for a goal kick to Ghana Four pass from Anumao Poku. Nigeria had possession. Here is Lovett Ede, the goal scorer. She sends one, but it's disappointing and it's a goal kick. We're doing three additional minutes, 45 minutes up already in Cape Coast. It's Ghana nil. Nigeria won. Maybe they have seen that Afi has not been able to make first grabs of her ball, and so now they would want to try from all angles. And so that is how come you see her there trying to try the long shots. Ola Deji to take the throw in for Nigeria. Here is Iwasu. They are aiming at Judith Oka. But ball rolls outside under the guidance of Comfort Yeboa. Your boy is struggling to get her passes right. She's beaten to the ball by Iwasu. The Nigerians racing for it. Love it. Ede, the goal scorer. She was trying to put one through for Blessing Ope, but ball goes outside. She's on a yellow card, and she's the score of the Nigerian goal. What's her record this evening? Poor control from Ghana's Ophelia and Ponsa gives to Nigeria possession. Here is Enwasu Ede. <laughs> Ola Depo to Ola Deji. Back to Ola Depo. Goes back to Nancy Okinwa. Nancy Okinwa's ball found Yena, who is able to find the captain Alani. Nigeria's Ope is in control now. They look comfortable at the stage, Nigeria. And it seems the Ghanaians are allowing them to play all the balls. Love it, Ede. That's brilliant defending from Habiba. But Nigeria can score a second and onto the side post. Delighting Wosu. Missing from close range. Nigeria still putting pressure on Ghana. This time, Yabua gets the ball away. Throwing for Ghana. I was just about saying that I mean the Ghanaians are playing as if they are rather leading, and the Nigerians are chasing them for the equalizer. At this moment, they should be the ones harassing the Nigerians and not the other way around. What is the point in having better possession when you don't make good use of it? Nigeria leading Ghana with a few seconds into stoppage time to wrap up the first half here. 
in Cape Coast. 13th African Games, Accra 2023. Nigeria leading Ghana 1. Comfort Yebo was free kick. Nigeria desperately trying to prevent the throwing, but Ghana gets the throwing. Abna Numa Opoku in a hurry to take. Kicks one in. The Nigerians will always use their height to advantage. Here is Ghana's Abiba Isa. Abiba sends one in looking for Mafia Nyame. It's too much for Mafia. It's a goal kick. And that's the whistle to wrap up the first half here in Cape Coast. Africa Games Accra 2023 Women's Football Edition. Finals between two West African rivals who have brought their rivalry alive in Cape Coast once again. Nigeria taking the lead through Lovett Ede after the Guardian goalkeeper Afi Amenyeku made a mess of a very harmless ball as the Nigerians heading to the break leading Ghana 1-0. An entertaining, very competitive and a very, very physically intensive first half between the two West African rivals. I mean, is there a dull moment in any competition involving Ghana and Nigeria? And I think that this evening, the crowd, the atmosphere, the competition, the intensity of the game sums it up all. Lively atmosphere, packed to capacity crowd in Cape Coast. Ghana lead possession at 52, Nigeria on 48. The Nigerians have had six total attempts with four attempts on target. Ghana have the only corner kick of the evening, but at half time, it's Ghana nil nigeria one So two countries, all of them rated very high globally and continentally in women's football, have an opportunity to stake a claim again in Ghana, hoping to make it host and win. But Nigeria had other ideas coming into the first half. Both teams successfully and smoothly negotiating their way through from the group stages. It was Nigeria who won the toss, Ghana kicked off. Initially, the game began with some very physical battles, and like you said, you just can't take that away. Initial free kick that fell to Nigeria, and that was the first attempt at goal, interestingly, by the goal scorer, Lovett Ede. She has been a tormentor in the defense of Ghana. All the dangerous balls that have come the way of Nigeria has been orchestrated by her. Either she has a hand in it, or she would be the chief orchestrator. And that's the free kick earlier from Tracy Chum. She struggled to really find her feet in this evening's game. Nigeria and Ghana, very physical contest. I mean, time passed. Time that's passed, Nana. Time, that's the goal. That's the incident that's that the, resulted in the I goal. Mean, that was it poor decision from the goalkeeper. If she was not sure, she could just have parried it too. I think it was an easy catch for her. It was something how that... Did she, how did it slip? She was in a haste to take it and grab it and, you know, love it. And it was right there to punish her. You don't make mistakes like this No. at the top level like no. this. No. And when the Nigerians got the first goal, the Ghanaians tried to equalize. Mukarama did all she could with a brilliant cutback Tracy Chum should be scoring, but she was denied by the woodwork. I mean, uh, she was in a haste to tap the ball in because all she needed was that simple tap and direction. And here was one of those physical battles. Abiba Isa was caught by the Nigerian blessing Ope and here Mukarama connecting to Comfort. It was free kick, but there was nobody to, you know, 
had the final touch. Nyame was there. There was also Ophelia and Ponsa, but none of them could make it count. Ede was gifted with another chance, but this time, Amenyaku was there to save the situation for Ghana. Ede has been the, a thorn in the flesh of the Ghanaians. I mean, this evening, they would have to find a way of dealing with her if they need to stop the Nigerians. It could have been two, but Nigeria's delight in Wasu was denied by the side post. This was also poor defending from the Ghanaians. They nearly handed the Nigerians a goal on the silver platter. But Ameneko did well to, to get it off the line. Just before it, got, it went off the line, she did well. At least give her the credit for this one. Half time in Cape Coast. Nigeria leading Ghana 1 0. Not the score line the home fans would have wanted. every child we've had enough all along there's enough choice for every child enough nutritious food produced responsibly and sustainably so children can thrive everywhere let's come together and stand with children to say we've had enough enough coca-cola zero sugar with a new and improved taste it's delicious and refreshing. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. You need to try it first. This advert is FDA approved. Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play. You like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own print like no other as well as their own unique talents no and abilities I can cook I can so every day in whatever you do Remember, you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mom. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved. Black. It's not dark. It's white. Black is bold. Black is every color all together. <laughs> My thing, your thing, our thing mixed together. Black shines bright. Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play, you like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? As well 
as their own unique talents and abilities. I can cook. I can paint. You like no other. In the mirror. In the mirror. You like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mom. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved. Takes effort. Ebony condoms make it worth it. So unique, you like no other. Outstanding in every way, it's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play, you like no other. You are special like Indomie, it's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? As their own unique talents and abilities. I can cook, I can paint. You like no other. In the mirror, in the mirror, you like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mom. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved.
Welcome back for second half of this Africa Games 2023 finals between Ghana and Nigeria. First half ended with the Nigerians leading Ghana by 1 0 goals scored by Lovett. Edet back from recess. Both Nigeria and Ghana yet to make any changes to the teams that began the first half. Ghana kicked off in the first half. Nigeria will get us going in the second half, which promises to be more exciting and competitive than it was in the first half. Your expectations, Roslyn? Well, I'm expecting that, I mean, in these early minutes of the second half, the princesses would want to pull back the goal and ensure that they bring the game back to parity so that they push for probably the winner. It's going to be more intense now because there is no way that Ni the Nigerians would not be playing defensive. They will still open up and be playing an attacking game. It will be for the Ghanaians to decide what they want to do with that. Here is Ghana's Yaboa. Anumor Poku, lovely turn. She unfortunately runs the ball out. She was troubled by Lovett Ede in the first half. Abnanumor Poku. But she's come good. Bremen with confidence in this second half. Hananyari. Lovely turn from Ophelia and Ponsa, but she's given it away to Philomena Yina. The Nigerians on the offensive. Here is Nigeria's Judith Oka. She fouls Shoma Olise. It's a brilliant tackle from Ghana's Abiba Isa, but it's still Nigeria in possession. Lovely player from Oka. She's trying to get away, but it is still Abiba Isa. She's been resolute for Ghana in defense. One of the best players that you have at the back, I mean, she, she is calm, very calm, very unassuming, but I think she knows her stuff. She's played in the first game, but was red carded for a second bookable offense, and so had to sit out in the second game. But she came back strongly for the third and fourth games, and he, she is on duty again this evening. Corner taken, eventual connection out from Delight in Wasu Isaac. That's the incident. Big forward delight in Wasu Isaac. She seemed to have collided with the Ghanaian defender. Looks like it is Comfort Yeboa or Hana Nyame. One of them. It should be Hana Nyame. It is Hana Nyame. Hana Nyame is the one down receiving treatment. An opportunity for Basigi to have some pep talk with Comfort Yaboa. And just look at the crowd, the National Supporters Union. Play has resumed, and Ghana will try to relaunch an attack. But then the ball floats out of play for a throw in for Nigeria. Nigeria hanging on to the 1 0 lead from half time. And was to Isaac goes past Abiba Isa. A chance for the Nigerian second goal. She's trying to set up a teammate. She was trying to be unselfish. Ball falls to blessing. Ope. Ope swings in across. Away by Ghana's come for Yaboa. And the eventual delivery coming from Nigeria's Choma Olise goes out for a goal kick. The Nigerians are not going to relent in their pursuit of claiming the gold and so they will do anything and everything and throw everything at the Ghanaians. It is for the Ghanaians to ensure that 
they do not only absorb, but they match them boot for boot with their counter-attacks. The few chances that they have had, they haven't shown such intensity and desire to equalize. It's not a friendly game. This is the final with the gold and the dragon rights at stake. And so they would have to do more than they have done so far. They would have to play above themselves, do more than they have done so far, focus and play with all the full concentration the entire 90 minutes. Ghana appealing for a foul after Ophelia and Ponsa had combined with Nyami and Nyami had gone down. It is Abiba Isa. Very diminutive, but very combative as well. Fifty minutes. It's five minutes already in the second half. Here Time is flies. Love it, Ede, the goal scorer, moving forward confidently. She sends one, but it's feeble. It's not beating the Ghanaian goalkeeper. The long balls are not working for Ghana. They would have to play the ball on the turf and make sure that they, they, they communicate better so that they don't lose the 50-50 balls. They seem to be losing the balls too quickly to the Nigerians. And you can't be doing that if you want to equalize and possibly take the lead. This is not an ordinary side. This is an experienced side. They are world beaters. I mean, if for nothing at all. And so you would have to, you have to play with all the focus and have a better game plan than what you are executing. Ida is being stretched off. Ida is being stretched off. Nigeria have a casualty. One of their most lively players being stretched off. That's going to give Coach Christopher Danjuma something to worry about. The Ghanaian fans are not giving up yet. Still more time to play for 52 minutes only. But the Nigerians have advantage from this free kick. A long one is floated in. Ball is cleared away by Abiba Isa. And Ghana is tearing away in confidence. Here is Berlin Yeboah. Can't get to Mukarama. Ball falls to Faith Omalina. Hassan Mukarama, this Hazakis ladies forward finds Yeboa. The Ampim Dakwa right back has given the ball away straight to Ovalina. The long balls are not working for them, so they better watch it because, unfortunately, for them, any time that has happened, the Nigerians are able to regroup and on the counter they find them, I mean, lagging behind. And so, if they want to equalize they should not be resorting to the long balls because obviously the nigerians are taller and so they are able to intercept those long balls here is comfort yaboa for ghana Al Hassan, referee plays the advantage, but she was fouled initially. That's good refereeing by Geraldine Conan, the Ivorian centre woman. Obstruction from Nigeria's delight. That was in a Wasu. double foul. An initial obstruction, and the second one was a clear push. Can Ghana make anything out of this? Free kick for Ghana. Comfort Yaboa to take. Substitution 
for Nigeria. Actually, two substitutions, a double switch for the Nigerians. So, delight Isaac Inwosu will go out for Chiamaka Okuchuku. So, Chiamaka in for delight Inwosu. The night is over. was unable to return to the pitch so her place is taken by Nana, there is something going on a fan has jumped into the stands almost approaching the turf but thankfully the security have been able to so what was he going to do Maybe an overexcited fan trying to extend the fun onto the pitch, but here we're dealing with the football on the pitch. It's Nigeria in possession. A chance for a second ball goes straight to Ghana's Amenyaku. has been substituted with Ezekiel. Yes, Victoria Ezekiel takes the place and Chiamaka also took the place of Inwosu. Ghana yet to respond. Down by one goal. No changes to the team that began the game. Hananyami's delivery. Great desire by Mefia Nyame. She did well to chase, but she's ended up getting the decision her way. Good fight from Mefia Nyame. She was relentless. She knew exactly what she was about against the Nigerian captain, Victoria Alani. Ghana have a free kick. Chance to redeem themselves. It is Mafia Nyame behind it. Mafia swings one to the near post, it's into the side net. Not the best of free kicks taken by Mefia Nyame on that occasion. She's one of the brightest spots in this Black Princesses team. She was very instrumental in their qualification to the World Cup to be staged in Colombia later in the year. She seemed to be struggling to find a feat in this evening's game, Mefia Nyame. The Nigerian goalkeeper, She's been Omilana, has, yes. So that will be the second yellow card to the Nigerians this evening. The first one was shown in the um, Ede, Loveth Ede, moments after she had scored the goal. Good interception from Nigeria's 
Nancy Okinwa Mephia Nyame was showing great desire but the Nigerian center back had to react in the best way possible and she scored full marks from that one Hana Nyami is giving away possession. Here is Blessing Okbe. Comfort your boy. Guides the ball out. Ophelia Mponsa to Al Hassan. Your boy is trying to hard to keep the ball in. He's been headed out by Shukurat Oladipo. Another clearance from Oladipo. Ezekiel. The second time in the Nigerian is having an outstretched arm in the face of a Ghanaian. It happened in the first half and it's happened to Abiba Isa in the second half. Your boss delivery deep into Nigeria's area. Able to defend well. Hana Nyami under pressure. That's lovely play from Abna Anuma Opoku. Mafia was trying to put one through for Mukarama. Ball is cleared by Nancy Okinwa. Good play for Mukarama. She wins the free kick for Ghana. The Azakis ladies forward. Wants to take matters up in her own arms. It's becoming difficult for Ghana. To find an opening. There's another chance, it's a free kick. Ghana has committed 10 fouls, Nigeria 16. That is some statistics. It really is. But with this goal, with this free kick, will the Ghanaians be able to make something out of it? In a very dangerous, dangerous area. But would they be able to make something out of it? Who takes it? Tracy Chum. Tracy kills one in. It's cleared away by Oladipo. It falls back to Tracy. He wins, she wins the throw in. Head away by Okinwa. Cleared away by Alani. Anywhere will do. Mefia Nyame with a cross in. It took a deflection and the Nigerians desperately trying to prevent a corner but Ghana have the advantage. The Ghanaians need to sustain the pressure. By all means, somebody will commit a foul and they will get a goal. Another corner for Ghana. They need to keep up the pressure. Because they've gone past the 60th minute mark. If there is any time for them to get the equalizer, this should be the time. Corner taken. Ophelia and Ponsa unable to connect. It will be a throw in for the Nigerians in their own half. Nigeria have to deal with the fitness concerns of their dependable centre back Shukurat Oladipo. She's down and already the stretcher is on the field to take her away. She's been very strong in the Nigerian defense. She's been the tower there. 
the woman to beat. She goes off through injury. Yusuf Basigi yet to ring any changes to his starting lineup. Nigeria have already come up with two substitutions at the leader Ghanaians 1-0 at 65 minutes in Cape Coast. Ezekiel. Yeboah wins the throw in for Ghana. It's a goal kick, nothing productive from Ghana's attempt to get into the Nigerian area. Poor delivery from Nigeria's Oladeji. Ghana failed to take advantage. Chiamaka finds Blessing Okpe, but the good defending from Ghana's Hana Nyame. Nigeria's captain, Victoria Alani, she's been quiet in the second half. She was very active and lively in the first half. She was very offensive, joining the attack in most of occasions, but she's been laid back in the second half. She is Mukarama. Ball is cleared away by Nancy Okinwa. Abiba Isa gets it away. Philomena Yina loses possession. Here is Anoma Opoku. Chance for Nigeria, Ezekiel, but that's good defensive play from Comfort Yeboa. Good clearance to save the sticky situation. It looks like the Ghanaians have slowed down again. The tempo of the game has slowed from the Ghanaian perspective. The fans have kept quiet. Nothing seems to be driving the Ghanaians forward anymore. Nigeria keeping it very tight at the back as well and they'll get a free kick. It's a good call. Foul committed by Ghana's Asana Al Hassan on Nigeria's Okbe. The tackle from behind on Blessing Okbe by Al Hassan. Alani is doing the chasing, but ball is cleared away by Abnanu Mopoku. She's been excellent in the second half, Abnanu Mopoku. The time is ticking away, and already 68 minutes gone in the second half. Clock is fast ticking against the wishes of the Ghanaians, but the Nigerians will be hoping it goes faster and faster so they are able to make history by defending the title they won in Rabat in 2019. Nigeria with a throw. Here comes Captain Victoria Alani. It's a corner. And Ghana have a player down. Looks like it's Mafia Nyame. Referee calls for attention for the Ghanaian attacker. That's Hana Nyame. 
the other Nyame on the Ghana side. Issuing out instructions as how the defensive line must defend this corner kick. Referee Conan not giving any chance for time wasting, so she instructs the medical team to get Mafia off the pitch to the sideline to give her the medical attention she needs. And it's a perfect decision she could take. Corner taken. Blessing up her again. Shot blocked by Ghana's Yaboa. And here's Philomena Yina. Allows the ball to roll over, throwing Nigeria. It's 70 minutes. Are the Accra 2023 Africa Games, the 13th edition? Nigeria leading Ghana 1 0 in the women's football finals. Blessing Okbe. Probing for the second year is Okbe for Nigeria. Ball for Suchioma Olise with a drive, but it goes up and high for a goal kick advantage Ghana such unproductive play in your own area, I mean, such things could end up being costly. They consider throwing. Throwing to be taken by Semilori Ola Deji. She wants to go for the short one. She does. Okas ball controlled wall again, but the efforts coming from Nigeria's. Oladeji goes out for a goal kick. Oladeji. Philomena Yena. Oladeji. I haven't seen much of Ophelia Amponsa in this game. She's been quiet. I haven't seen much of her at all. Yina, the Nigerians, I delight to watch at this point, stringing their passes together in confidence and drawing rings around the Ghanaians, letting them chase in shadows. Ball is cleared away eventually by Nyame. Lovely touch from Yina. At this point, they are in the lead, and so they can afford to do anything. The Ghanaians have not really threatened them in the second half, especially after the first 15 minutes. And... Coach Yusuf Basigi is unamused. He's unamused and just yelling out instructions to her, to his charges. I mean, you can't blame him. You you can't play such a game when you are trailing. You are not in the lead. You you are you have the agency to equalize, and you can't be wasting the opportunities that come your way like that. They are just losing out all the 50-50 balls. Nigeria taking the game to the Ghanaians, even in the lead. Tough night for Yusuf Basigi and his girls. Ola Deje to take the throw in for Nigeria. Flicked back by Yaboa to her goalkeeper, Afi Amenyeku. Ball is cleared away by Nancy Okinwa. She saw the threat from Mefia Nyame. Mefia is trying to find Mukarama Abdullahi. Mukarama turns around her marker, but it's the Nigerian captain, Victoria Alani, who retrieves possession and clears the danger. Opoku has the ball down straight to an opponent. Here is Philomena Yina. Here is Chiamaka. 
but Ghana take possession through Bellini Boa. Here is Al Hassan. Now Mefia Nyami, lovely dribble from Mefia Nyami, operating on the left hand side. She's looking for options. She seems to be left all alone, and Ghana gets a throw in. She had support, but she failed to release the ball on time. You can't be dribbling everybody, including yourself. When you get a chance, just release the ball so that you run into pace, into space to get another, probably another pass or reconnect. You can't do everything by yourself. Another water break in the final one before the game comes to an end. 15 minutes more for Ghana to redeem themselves. It's the Africa Games Accra 2023, the 13th edition, women's football finals. The Black Princesses of Ghana, nil. The Falconers of Nigeria, one. Goal scored by Nigeria's Lobet Ede in the first half after Ghana's goalkeeper Afia Menyaku made a horrible mistake. I hope she's able to forgive herself. So far, she hasn't shown that she's been affected by what's happened. As the captain of the team, she needs to stay strong. She needs to show resilience and encourage her teammates to get the job done. Because after all, it's already happened. You can't undo what has already happened. But we haven't seen the desire from the Ghanaians to equalize and possibly take the lead. They need a great deal of mental fortitude and a can-do spirit to get back into this game because the Nigerians are no mood, are no mood to drop their guard. They have 15 minutes away from now to be champions once again. They'll be hoping that time will take away faster than it is right now. The Ghanaians, on the other hand, will be hoping that their efforts their efforts will yield the results they desire, possibly pushing this game into extra time. But you are thinking why Basigi up until this point hasn't made any substitutions to the Ghanaian team as the Nigerians have already come up with a couple of substitutions. Here is Mukarama Abdullahi for Ghana. There she finds Comfort Yaboa. Yaboa wants to shoot her foot is blocked, but she stays down. A chance for Ghana. Can Ghana equalize? And that's the equalizer. Ghana have equalized. And who Tracy Chum? The black princesses are back in it. It is Tracy Chum who puts the Ghanaians on level pegging. It's Ghana one. Nigeria one. A perfect time to get equalizer and push the game. Push the game possibly into extra time. If you do not get a second goal within the regulation 90 minutes. But it is a sweet, sweet performance from the Ghanaians. They huffed them pot. They searched for it. They never gave up. I told you about the mental fortitude they needed and the can-do spirit. And when they needed it most, Tracy Chum steps up and she makes it count. Ghana won. Nigeria won. Look at the build-up to the goal. She took it one time without a touch. Brilliant. Brilliant finish. This is a quality finish from a player who really didn't live up to it in the second half but when it matters most she's made it count tracy puts ghana up on level peg again i think give the credit to berlin berlin did well in ensuring that she got the ball to tracy at the right time the whole focus was on the left and then she decided that it was a good time to switch play and she did ghana when I was about to talk about substitutions, Ghana comes up with a substitution. Success, Amiya, is coming in for Ophelia Amponsa. You spoke about the fact that Ophelia really has not lighted up the game like she should, and she's making way for Amiya. I think the Nigerians know the threat Ophelia posed, so she, they played her out. But she didn't also do herself good, because she wasn't fighting for the 50-50 balls. Perhaps a good time to get her out to take some rest and Amiya to strengthen the midfield because the midfield hasn't been that strong and that is where the Nigerians have operated from. Amiya, another product of the famous Azakis ladies. 79 minutes and the fans 
have found their voices once again. The stadium is buzzing with excitement and expectations as well. I mean, if this, if this, that was, that was, it was against Abunanuma, Abunanuma Opoku. Was Opuchuku. And it, it's happened on the blind side of the referee. If the, the noise and the edging on at the stadium right now played a role in getting a goal, this probably would be the winning point for Ghana. But unfortunately, it can only encourage and motivate you. It really plays no role so far as getting the ball into the net is concerned. 80 minutes. Ghana, Nigeria scoring it off. In the finals of the 13th African Games Women Football Competition is 1-1. And we're in the last 10 minutes. It could be anybody's game. Anybody's good. And just when you think that the game is going one way, it's ending in somebody's favor. Trust the other person or the other side to make that difference. The stadium is really, really alive. Game on now. Final 10 minutes. Can Ghana make it count from this stage? Here is captain for Nigeria, Alani. The fans have amplified the noise in the stadium. But Nigeria will go on the offensive. Judith Oka. She goes down no foul. Oh, brilliant defensive work from Anuma Opoku. Headed down by Ola Dipo. Here is Okuchuku with a cutback. Abiba Isa cleverly allows goalkeeper Afia Menyeku to grab. Game on, Nana. Game on. Now Mukarama is doing the chasing, but goalkeeper Omalina is out for the ball. Here is Nigeria's blessing, Okpe. She finds Akinwa. Captain Victoria Alani surges forward. She finds Okuchuku. She sends a cross in and Comfort Yeboa knew exactly what was around her. Great presence of mind from the Ghanaian right back. The bravery with which they are now facing the nigerians time passed probably they would have there is another change there is another change ghana coming up with another substitution Pfizer rashid is coming in for abna anuma opoku anuma has received too many knocks Perhaps time to take a rest. Nigeria seem to be under the pressure now, but they are getting themselves away. Here is Ola DJ. She finds Yena Okuchuku and her captain, Victoria Alani, not on the same page. The Nigerians giving the Ghanaians no inch at all. The Ni Ni um, Nigerians trying to regroup in their defense. A throw in for Ghana, affected by Comfort Yaboa. Here is Yaboa for Ghana. The Ghanaians are beginning to believe it's possible from this point.
Pfizer Rashid's throwing. Mafia Nyame for Ghana. Pfizer Rashid swings in across. Away by Nigeria's Oladeje. Here is Yaboa for Ghana. Left foot to drive. Not beating Nigeria's Omalina. Not punchy and powerful enough. Hot enough to beat the goalkeeper. One one, five minutes to go. Ghana one, Nigeria one. This is a real fight for gold. It is a real fight for gold. Gold doesn't come cheap. <laughs> and so you need to go through it, the hustle to be able to get it. No problem for Ghana's goalie. Afia Menyeku should be delighted at least. Her mistake didn't send Ghana to the losing end. There is an equalizer and a chance to win it. Amia Mefia Nyami Mukurama is doing the chasing. Ola Dipo is there and the Nigerian centre back. A huge and giving Mukurama very tough time. But she wins the corner kick. Mukurama wins the corner. Is this going to be the winning goal? Corner taken. Goalkeeper Omalina gets it away. Here is Comfort Yaboa for Ghana. Throw in for Ghana. Coach Christopher Denjuma trying to organize his girls to be defensively alert as Ghana keep piling the pressure. That's foot up. It should be a foul against Nigeria. It's Ezekiel. It's a good call from referee Jeradine Conan. Amiya's cross. Mukarama arrives with a header. There's an appeal for a handball. Referee is not showing any interest. It is still Mukarama. Goalkeeper finally grabs it. Ghana appealed for a handball, but referee didn't show any interest. Nigeria's goalkeeper. Close shave and a breather for the Nigerians. Okurama was trying to weave her way through, but Nigeria keeping it tight at the back, eventually relying on their goalkeeper to rescue the situation, but she's ended up going down. It's a temporary hold up. We're into the final two minutes. Tense moments in Cape Coast. Will this final two minutes yield any productive results for either side? Or we are going to get an extra time. The first time this game, I mean, this African Games will be thrown into extra time should it go beyond the 90 minutes. The Ghanaian fans in chanting mood. Very, very positive about the outcome of this game. Nigeria's goalkeeper is still not fine fit. 
Omalina. Still at the receiving end of the Nigerian medical team. And she's asking to be substituted. Not looking good for the Nigerian shot stopper. Referee Gerardine Conan will take the opportunity to gulp down some water. And she's weeping, she's crying, and it's pathetic. Six additional minutes. Crucial moment for the two teams. Cape Coast have come alive. And the fans expect the home side to clinch the ultimate but the nigerians i know mood to relent does the change of a goalkeeper at such a crucial point in a game have any impact it does sometimes especially if the incoming goalkeeper is good on penalties and the goal game travels into the shootout it could be to the advantage but you're also thinking at this point everybody has reached a certain level and if she comes in and she's not warmed up properly that could be her undoing but it could be anybody's game i mean that's that's that happens when that change is a tactical change from the bench but as you can see it is an injury force so Milana who is asking that she be changed And the Mexican wave is on display at the Cape Coast Stadium. The fans are obviously enjoying themselves. Does it add to the pressure on Ghana to win? Or is it going to motivate them to go all out and make use of the added time to secure the gold? Well, we wait to see. We're already into one minute of additional time, but it's not going to count because all that one minute was used in treating the Nigerian goalkeeper who has eventually been asked to go out. So Nigeria makes the change and Daleen Ingbechi comes in for Faith Omalina Ingbechi is in Omalina is out what has triggered she this looks excitement a bit what has triggered this excitement among the Ghanaian fans? They don't seem to stop at their chant. Here is Nigeria. Blessing Ope. Lovely dribble. She goes down. Referee says, get up, no foul. Amea. Tracy Chum. Looking for Mukarama. Shukurat Oladipo. Mukarama stays strong and beats Shukurat to it. But the Nigerian center back is so strong, she gets the ball back from Mukarama. Throwing for the princesses. Yaboa. Mukarama. She wanted a foul. Assistant referee was right there. Turn the blind eye. Another throwing for the princesses. When we were growing up, they said some number of throw-ins resulted in a corner kick, a number of corner kick resulted Just in a Just for Ghana, can they get the opening goal onto the roof of the net? That should have been the goal to wrap up the game. Looked like an open net for Ghana. That was a big chance. From Berlin. Berlin Yako. 
Ghana having a big opportunity. Chinere is yet to settle in, having come on from Malina. There's a foul and a yellow card for Nigeria's centre-back, Nancy Okinwa. Nancy Chidera Okinwa gets into the books of referee, Geraldine Conan. Lovely little flick from Ghana's midfielder. Berlin. That was a double. Was the one who was fouled. Ideally, the six minutes of additional time should be up now, but because the Nigerian goalkeeper Omalina wasted some time before she was substituted. That's all going to be factored in as Ghana gets a free kick. Yeah, was balling. Headed away by Nigeria's Okinwa. It's over. No winner. After 90 minutes and stoppage time, it's 1 1 at the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. The finals of the women's football competition at the 13th Africa Games. Ghana scoring in the second half after Nigeria taking the lead through. Love it, Ede. He had to take Tracy Chum's brilliant finish to get the Ghanaians back into the game. We have a game on our hands. It's extra time. Full time here in Cape Coast. Ghana won. Nigeria won. What a game we've had. an interesting game it has been and so for the first time in the history of the women's football at african games there is going to be an extra time yeah in 2015 when ghana won gold Ketsi the black queens a last minute penalty converted by portia Buache ended the contest Unfortunately, there is no such last-minute goal for Ghana this evening, and so they would have to prepare to go into extra time. Extra time will be starting in the next five minutes. Nigeria and Ghana on level before extra time. The Ghanaians have been cited as one team that plays under a lot of jitters and pressure and make a lot of mistakes when they play in front of massive crowds like this. It's happened a couple of times to their female national teams from the Black Queens to this point with the Black Princesses. They've got to find a solution to that. So the two captains will go for the toss again. Alani and Amenyeku.
So we are good to go for the second phase of the game. That's the extra time. When Ghana and Nigeria met at the Wafu B finals, the game had to be decided on penalties. It's it going to be the same here once again. That was the maiden under 20 Wafu B tournament. It was held in June last year. Ghana beat the Nigerians. And here the goal. Probably they want to finish it before full time of extra time here is Judith Oka chance for Ghana Mefia Nyami flag goes up it's offside against Mefia Nyami Good play from Nigeria's Okuchuku. She sends the cross in. Ghana nearly conceding the second goal. Miscommunication between Ghana's Abiba Isa and her goalkeeper Afia Menyaku. They collided and it's the goalkeeper who has come off worse. Okuchuku's ball looked harmless. Goalkeeper not communicating with her defender. They came together. Goalkeeper stays down. Would need some attention from the Ghanaian medical team who are already on the pitch to take her over. Abiba Isa have also gone down but she quickly gets up on her feet. That's the Ghana supporters union leaving nothing to chance optimistic about the chances of the Ghanaians The Ghanaian goalkeeper Afi Amenyaku is still being treated on the pitch. Extra time of the Africa Games Women's Football Finals. Ghana began the competition drawing 1-1 with Uganda beating Tanzania 2-1 and beating Ethiopia 1-0 that's the road to the semis 
1 1 against Uganda, 2 1 against Tanzania, 1 0 against Ethiopia, and then they beat Senegal by 3 1. A game that Tracy Chum scored and also scored in today's game. Nigeria's captain, Victoria Alani's delivery. Away by Ghana's Amiya. Alani takes one back in. Away by Abiba. Ball eventually cleared away by Tracy Chum, Ghana's goal scorer. Here is Amea. Ola Dipo doesn't want to take the chances with Mukaram. Bani's delivery. No problem. Now Mukarama. Lovely play from Mukarama. Can Ghana get a second? How did she miss from that angle? It is to the Ghanaians. Amia sends one in. Goalkeeper. Fit Omalina grabs it. Faiza Rashid. Big chance. Good defending from Comfort Yaboa. And she was heckled and she she's come off injured in the end. Ezekiel The Lone Ranger against three Ghanaians but would not give up and so she had to do what she had to do to ensure that she at least got to the ball. So referee cons Conan Geraldine is asking Come for your boy, be taken off the pitch. She's not in the mood to entertain any time wasting anything. I mean, whether legal or illegal, that is going to waste time. The game is already in extra time, and so she would want, if she can, to finish it within the stipulated time. Sure. Amenyek who's balling, headed out by Judith Oka. Abiba Isa has been asked to relax as the Nigerians come up with another substitution. This time it is Nancy Okinwa, who the Nigerians will be taking off is a like for like substitution. Brought in another centre back. Okinwa had a decent first half, but she struggled in the second half. She's already on a yellow. Chance for Ghana. Here is Mukarama. That is a brilliant turn. Ghana in the lead in extra time. It is Mukarama Abdullahi. She's shot Ghana in the lead from a go down. The Black Princesses 
are within the touching distance of the gold medal. It's 98 minutes extra time football. The Black Princesses are on course for a host and win of the Africa Games 2023 Women's Football Edition. It's Ghana 2, Nigeria 1. How they always want to come back. I think their incredible story at this competition has been one of great comebacks. We saw them against... I mean, you can't, you can't beat Mukarama when she has the ball on her, on her best right foot. She turned lovingly, lovingly. You know what? You want to give some credit to Mefia Nyame, the presence of mind, the composure to flick the ball into the path of Mukarama. But Mukarama is always going to be Ghana's star, girl. The precision, the calmness, and the connection. Top class. Ghana 2, Nigeria 1. No wonder she was the celebration, the toast of Ghana when they went to the World Cup in the 2017 World Cup in 2017. I think that she's rediscovered herself and gradually she's proven why she's among the top scorers in the world when it comes to youth football. Ghana leading Nigeria 2-1 is 100 minutes of football in Cape Coast. But the Ghanaians better be wary and not play any dangerous games in their goal area because it's not over yet. It's not over yet. And the Nigerians also have great comeback stories. They would want to penalize you and punish you. And so they'll come harassing you. So this will be no time for you at all to play any games within your goal area. Nigeria pushing for the equalizer, but the Ghanaians desperately defending. Mukarama, the goal scorer. She's up against Philomena Yina. Ola Dipos Clarence. The Nigerians are believing they can come back. Here is Okuchuku down the right side. Sends a cross. And Nigeria coming close. Abiba, great header away. Good defending from the Ghanaian centre back. Abiba is out. She's been incredible in central defence for the Ghanaians. And to think that she's fasting. The cutback from Okuchuku nearly met with the connection of Nigeria's striker Judith Oka only for Ghana's Abiba Isa to step up. This time they blend to their lesson. So when they saw Aminyeku beating, they made sure that they, they fell back to recover. And I think she did a great job ensuring that the ball did not enter the net. The Black Princesses on the verge of making history after going down by a goal in the first half they rediscovered their fighting spirits and the lead their rivals Nigeria by two goals to one they don't even want the game to travel into penalty shooter like it did in the inaugural Wafu B championship last year in Ghana the referee cannot ask them to take the goalkeeper off the turf because she's the only person who has the privilege of being attended to medically when she goes down. Oh, yes. Alani, the captain, has been given the yellow card for descent towards the referee. She was challenging the referee as to why she was not asking the medical team to take Amenuku off the pitch because they were wasting time. I think she knows the rules. She knows the rules that it's only the goalkeeper who has the privilege of being attended to. If after a reasonable time the referee sees that she cannot, I mean, nothing can be done about it, then maybe she would suggest. But until then, no player, nobody has the right to tell the referee to ask the goalkeeper to be treated off the pitch. Because once the goalkeeper leaves the pitch, it means that she's not coming back. Nigeria will be looking back and asking how the Ghanaians came back from a go down to take the lead. They must have taken things for granted, but Ghana knew exactly what they wanted. You see Basegi up against Christopher Danjuma. Danjuma is complaining, not too sure what he's asking the assistant referee. They are complaining about the time. 
It's got to do with the discretion of the referee on what he wants to do with the remaining time. If he's going to add up for the goalkeeper being treated on the field, is another one altogether. But he's got the fire. She's got the final say. But like we said, the Ghanaians would have to be very, very careful entertaining the Nigerians and any ball within their goal area. Because if Abiba had not been there to intercept, Afi was clearly beating and it could have been another story with the Nigerian probably finding the net. Mukarama made the difference against Tanzania. She could be Ghana's heroine if the game ends this way. Alani. Ghana have another player down. We're doing two minutes of additional time for first half, but extra time. Amia, her introduction seems to have brought some stability in the Ghanaian midfield. She is the campaign of, midf of the midfield. Done, she's done incredibly well. She's and coming. Her absence saw how unstable the midfield was. But she came in, and I think that Masigi knew exactly what she, he wanted from her, and she's executing the plan. Nigeria in possession now. Here is Ezekiel up against Abiba. She's pushed the Ghanaian defender down. Free kick against Nigeria's Ezekiel for pushing down Ghana's she Abiba. She better Isa. watch it. She better watch it, otherwise, she probably would also end up going into the books of the referee. Already, they have three players booked. Yeah, and there, the goal scorer, the goalkeeper, before she went off, Alina, yes, she got yellow carded for time wasting. Yes. One, two. The first minute of additional time, Nigeria on the move. Here comes Blessing. Okpe. Okpe wants to shoot. It takes a deflection, but it's not beating Ghana's goalkeeper, Amenyaku, because she's a let this time. She's not going to be caught ball watching. Abiba Isa with another clearance. Mefia Nyame. Here comes Mukarama. She's finding it difficult to go past the Nigerian centre back. That's the end of the first half of extra time here at the Cape Coast Sports Stadium, African Games 13th edition 2023. Women's football finals. We're going for the extra time break, but before the extra time break, it is the Ghanaians who are some 15 minutes away from becoming champions of the African Games. If you are a fan and you're a neutral person, you would want this game not to end. But if you are a Ghanaian, you would want the 15 minutes to fly away so fast. On the other hand, if you are a supporter of the green shirted ladies, you would want the 15 minutes to be extended so you can get some more time to see if you can get the equalizer. Yusuf Basegi, one of the best coaches in women's football on the continent, is giving reason why he's been ever present at the top level of women's coaching in Africa.
Dan Juma is also a man of his own when it comes to women's football. He is. And so, two great minds on the continent. And interestingly, the two coaches of all Hastings with the senior teams, Basigi with the Queens and then Danjuma with the Falcons. Super Falcons as well. Second half, extra time underway in Cape Coast. Oh, lovely play from Mefianyame with the outside of Obuchi. He's trying to find Mukarama, but Obuchi clears for Nigeria. And if the Ghanaians are to win this game at the end of the extra time, the fans must stop taking a lot of the credit, must be giving a lot of the credit for the relentless support they've handed this team even when they went down by a goal. The 12 men have obviously done the trick for the Ghanaians, but it's early days though, some more minutes to play for, some 14 more minutes. That's a lot of time in football. Within that 14 minutes, anything can happen. Ghana could possibly get more goals. The Nigerians could possibly equalize and overtake the Ghanaians. It all depends on the strategy and the tactics and the awareness. And yet the goal, Guchuku, straight to Afi Amenyeku. And Nigeria have a player down. Okuchuku was trying her best to get the ball into an advancing player of the Falconets. But the one who was advancing into the Ghanaian territory, Judith Oka, has ended up going down injured. She was the one that initiated the move. She got the ball to Okuchuku. She was waiting for the return. A missed kick. And she went down. She went down her own. I think she, she misstepped. She's pulled a muscle. She's pulled a muscle. I think she overstretched. Nigeria trailing Ghana, having a player down in the Ghanaian. 18 yard box she's refusing to go on the stretcher but she eventually she gets on it i mean after the last time i saw a patch to capacity stadium supporting women's football was at the Accra Sports stadium on 14th february 2004 an olympic qualifier final game between ghana and nigeria on that day, it was a drawn game that had to be decided on penalties. I haven't seen such an euphoria in women's football in Ghana for a while. But this evening, the fans at Cape Coast have come out and they are being rewarded. I think the organizers have done an amazing job. They put in some exciting events in the build-up to this game they actually brought some musicians to entertain the crowd during half time something the fans knew about so they wanted to be part of it it is mukarama what is the garden state mukarama that's selfish play for mukarama she should have passed the ball to tracy, tracy chum she was in a better position to score good free kick taken by abiba isa flicked on and Mukarama did well to get the ball past Obuchi. Relentless play for Mukarama, but one thing on her mind to get up at the back of the net when Tracy was a better option. Mafia goes down right in the center of the field. Free kick for Ghana. I think having taken the lead, the Ghanaians have now gotten a new step in their a spring in their step. 
stronger? Is it empowered or emboldened to dare to attack the Nigerians the way they are harassing them now? That is how it should have been from the start. No problem for Nigeria's goalkeeper. Comfort Yabua intelligently wins the goal kick for Ghana. Coming off the boot of Nigeria's number nine, Judith Oka. Time is ticking away. Okuchuku. It's a foul against Ghana. Hananyame. It is Faiza Abdul Rashid. Going in with a tackle. Free kick for Nigeria. Nine more minutes to go. Ghana two, Nigeria one. The medics have been on call almost the entire duration of the game. Because of the intensity and the physical nature of this game, they keep coming on the pitch any time a player goes down. Free kick for Nigeria. The reigning champions, eight minutes away from being dethroned. Free kick for Nigeria. Captain Alani to take. Ope. Oka all in the Ghanaian box. Alani swings one inside. Ghana defends well. And Tracy Chum gets the ball away for Ghana, but there's no Mukarama to the end of it. I think at this moment, the intention was to clear the ball as, so, as far as you could. Don't bother about the outcome of it. Just clear it from the Ghana area and ensure that at least they could catch some breath. Seven more minutes away from a Ghana victory. Seven more minutes away from Nigeria to come level. It's 2-1 for the host nation. Mission win gold on home soil. Becoming a reality. Our operation retain gold. Here is Okuchuku for Nigeria. Goes past Abiba. Here is Okuchuku. But that's some clever defending from Hannah Nyame. She was, she was hoping to get a penalty. But she won't get it because it was a clean tackle from Hannah Nyame. Alani. Abiba will allow it to roll over. It doesn't go. Can see tired legs in the Ghanaian side. Mukarama has been heckled by Nigeria's number 10. Philomena Yina. Ghana coming up. 
with a substitution. So, Faiza Abdul Rashid, she came off the bench and she's been so taken off again. Sara Kulible comes in for Ghana. Sara Kulible in for Faiza Rashid. Ezekiel Amenyeku not in a hurry to even grab the ball. Chance for Ghana, Mephi and Yami trying to set up Mukarama, but Ola Dipo with some real good defending, the Nigerian centre-back showing great strength to stop Mukarama from causing any major problems for the Nigerians as they chill Ghana 2-1 with four more minutes to go. Mefianya miss balling. Nigeria in possession now. Ope to Okuchuku. Okuchuku. Hana Nyami once again steps up for Ghana. Calm, composed. But very, very hard working defender. Alani's ball flicked down by Okpa. Chance for Nigeria. Effort is blocked by Kubri. Here is Mukarama. It's a 1v1 against Nigeria's Ola Dipo. And Mukarama is stopped. Philomena Yena's efforts. Only as far as they throw in for Ghana. This extra time has been a really entertaining and interesting one. No dull moments. Each side trying to undo the other. But it is the Ghanaians who can't smile because they are in the lead. The Nigerians are under pressure because... The rain is almost over. It's under threat, serious threat. And unless they can produce something within the last few minutes left of this game, it will be over. Yosef Basigis, Black Princess, is on the verge of making history as Abibes throw in. Ezekiel Class for Nigeria. Comfort your boys, head up back. Kabile, Kubile. Yaboa Amiya to Abiba Al Hassan Tracy Chum is a lovely pass. He's looking for Mafia Nyame and Mafia is up against the Nigerian captain Alani. Push she up to Mafia. She sends the ball in. Not good enough with a goal kick. She's lifted up by the Nigerian captain. That's a delight to watch. 1 more minute. 220 minutes of grilling, entertaining, competitive football. It's Okuchuku for Nigeria. Last woman to equalize. Sends the shot across and it's not causing any problems for the Ghanaians. It's a goal kick. Okuchuku is left dejected and disappointed. Indication of additional time about to be indicated. So 
So Ghana two Nigeria one. Not sure we we'll go more than five minutes, but there's a player down. Two minutes of additional time. Christopher Denjuma. I'm sure he's taking a look at the additional time and he'll be asking, how do we get back? <sighs> Basigi would also be thinking, how do I get my girls to protect this lead? Basigi should be home and dry at this point, but another Ghanaian player goes down. And Danjuma is, is, is angry because she thinks the Ghanaians are deploying the time-wasting tactics. That is Nyako. Looks like it is Hana Nyami. Hana Nyami. Basigi is not happy. Hana Nyami is wasting time. But it could be a genuine injury. I don't think she's faking. So the referee is calling for the stretcher. No time to waste in no, this final moment. Basigi doesn't want to take chances. You win, grab your medals, and start focusing on the World Cup. But the fitness levels of these girls should be a matter of concern to the coach because how fit they stay here will determine how far they go and that's the World Cup that in Colombia. That is how come Calf decided that the under-20 teams should rather represent at this African Games instead of the senior teams. Because this is a good, good training for them. And so you realize that Cameroon were the missing ones out. But Ghana, Nigeria, Morocco were all here. Unfortunately, Morocco didn't make their cards. Al Alani, Mefia Nyame, ball is controlled by Nigeria. Chioma Olise, she's been quiet in this evening's game. She's been one of their best players, but not against Ghana. Abiba Isa, she's been amazing for the Ghanaians in defense. She's refusing to take the ball right behind her. Oka has got to pick it up for the Ghanaians. <laughs> it's interesting. That kind of Psychological tactics. Philomena Yina. Okuchuku. Blessing Okbe goes down and that's the final whistle. It's all over. Ghana have won gold. Adi. 13th Africa Games, Accra 2023, a feat masterminded by Yusif Basigi, the same coach who won gold for Ghana in 2015. He's been able to do the same with the Black Princesses of Ghana. He's guided Ghana to beat Nigeria again after guiding Ghana to beat Nigeria in the inaugural Wafu B Under 20 Championship last year in Kumase. The Ghanaians have repeated what they did to the Nigerians back last year here in Cape Coast. Ghana, gold medalist, the 2023 13th edition of the Africa Games. 2-1 in favor of the Ghanaians. And what a way to win your gold medal. They consider the first goal when Nigeria's Lovett Ede scored. Back from recess, the Ghanaians equalized through Tracy Chum. And when it mattered most, Mukarama Abdullah stood up to be counted and scored the winning goal for the Ghanaians. It's over and Ghana are champions. Roslyn, an amazing feat achieved by the Ghanaians. Mission accomplished. They set out to, on a mission to win gold on home soil because this is the land of gold, formerly called Gold Coast. So there was no way they were going to make the gold elude them once it was brought home. And rightly so, Basigi has led the princesses to make this dream come true. I mean, great comeback story. Great, great comeback story. These are the things that make football what it is. But the Nigerians have not disgraced themselves. The only thing they'll be looking back at is how the scored first and allow the Guardians to come back and win. 
the Ghanaians have repeated what they did to the Nigerians back in 2023 in Kumasi. Now, the male team of Ghana have a responsibility to replicate the feat achieved by the female team when they come up against Uganda in the men's final later on tomorrow. But for now, it's party time in Cape Coast and the whole of Ghana as the princesses clinch gold at the Africa Games. So it brings Ghana's gold haul to seven this evening. Your star player Mukarama made the difference. Your patience paid off. How do you react to that? Yeah, um, just like I said earlier on, Mukarama is one player. She's a household name. And um, with time, I know with time she was going to make it. So that's why I had patience for her throughout and was using her, guiding her. And I would say that she's the most experienced striker among all the teams here. So I'm not surprised that she had this uh, wonderful goal. Congratulations, coach. Thank you very much. Yeah. Celebration time for the Ghanaians. Time to wave the red, gold, black, green, and the black star. Ghana emerges champions. Nigeria left disappointed, but not disgraced. At this moment, you can understand their disappointment. For you to have taken a 24th minute lead. And then you succumb to the lead, and then you are beaten. I mean, it's painful, but of course, this is Ghana. You are not playing. So Ghana and Nigeria scoring it off in the finals of the women's football competition of the 13th Africa Games 2023. The Cape Coast Sports Stadium, the venue of attraction as the two West African powerhouses lock on once again in a battle for supremacy and bragging rights. Nigeria had an earlier chance when this free kick was nodded in by the goal scorer Lovett Ede only to get onto the roof of the net. Tracy Chum's free kick very close but unable to beat Nigeria's Omalina The moment the Nigerians had their opening goal, poor goalkeeping from Ghana's Amenyaku, gifting Nigeria's Lovett Ede. 
with a cool finish. It was handed to her on the plate and she took it really well. Yes, and I mean, at those games, the Ghanaians, except the game against Ethiopia, conceded in each of the games they played in. Mukarama had the chance to connect the ball to Tracy Chum, but she was unlucky. Her effort just hit upright. It could have been Ghana's equalizer even before the break, but unlucky Tracy hitting the upright. Yabua's free kick headed down by Mukarama, but there's nobody to the end of it to connect for Ghana. Those were one of the tense moments the Nigerians had to go through as the Ghanaians went in search of the equalizer. That's the incident that resulted in a near second goal. Again, it was Yaboa who gifted the ball to Eda. And that's some classic defending from Ghana's Abiba, nearly finding the back of the net. Nigeria striker delights in Sir Isaac. I mean, you could have to prevent the one with the leg. That's an inter I mean, an alert goalkeeper because it could have beaten him. At this point, if the Nigerians had scored, it would have been disastrous because Ghana were a goal down. But back from recess, the Ghanaians had renewed energy trying to go at the Nigerians. But they kept on coming and looking for a second. The goal scorer was trying to double her tally, but Ghana stayed tight at the back. This free kick into the side net, not troubling the Nigerians. And here, Tracy with a quality finish to draw level for the Ghanaians. Lovely goal. I mean, perfect strike. She seems to have made up for all the messes she had earlier. And you can understand the raw from the stands. Celebrating the goal. And Mukarama will join her to celebrate right in front of the Ghanaian fans. And there she goes, Tracy Chum. Magnificent finish. This evening there was no chair for her to do the kudu style of celebration. The king cometh. Ghana kept on believing and pound. You know, putting pressure on the Nigerians. Eventually it paid off. Here, Berlin Nyaku could have made it too. She tried to lob the ball over the goalkeeper. Full time ended 1 1 with both teams gasping for breath after 90 minutes of football. Here, Abiba collided with a goalkeeper. It nearly resulted in an own goal, but Mukarama's finish. Exquisite quality, top That's class. It. Awesome. The winning goal is the kind of goal that deserves to win you a gold medal quality finish from a quality player she brought her experience to bear not only on the game but in the kind of goals she scored Mukarama Abdullahi virtually wins the gold medal for Ghana with that right foot to drive it got to a point in time the fans were against her and now they are loving her from villain to heroine. Absolutely. And Ghana had to deny Nigeria this last opportunity. It had to be Abiba Isa. And when the final whistle went, the stadium just went alive.